It's beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm pretty sure nobody left. I've been walking the strip since about 6.45 this morning, and it is still a madhouse of fans from all over the country, all over the world here to see day two of the NFL draft. We'll be here for every single pick. You see the fans in action. They have been chanting. They have been handling the heat. They have been making sure that they have all the hydration. I don't know. Some people just can't handle Vegas. Oh, already got one in. We are going to be with you for every single pick throughout the course of the day. It's the 2022 ESPN Draft live stream style. We do this for you every single year, and we will be here for every single pick. Harry Douglas, I'm Jason Fitz, Spencer Hall, Field Gates, Dominique Foxworth is going to come in in just a few minutes. We will be with you for all of the – how are we feeling, guys? Everybody good? Feeling good. Um, I stole your marker, so there you go. Why are you stealing my marker, Harry? Because you're my brother. What's oh. yours is mine. Wait, 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 wait. He says – we're just going to go off the rails before we even get started. He <laughs> says I'm his brother. I find out today he was out at all the clubs last night, hanging out, <laughs> doing all the club things. Did I get a club <laughs> invite, Harry? Harry? Huh? Did I get a club? I wasn't even supposed to go. If you did you get it a club? It was a great show. I mean, it, like, I thought it was great. Oh, my yeah, God. We, great. Yeah. Me and oh Spencer God. had a great time. Yeah. You know, I really appreciate you guys buying my drinks last night. <laughs> yeah, no, it was cool. Yeah, it was cool. Was really yeah. cool. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go get bottle service by myself tonight. And by that, I mean one bottle of water. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Can I ask a question? Yeah. I think about this. So you said you've been walking the streets since 6.45 a.m. this morning. Which yeah. I presume means you went to bed at 6.45 a.m., first of all. <laughs> no, no, no. Second of all, I was thinking about, like, of the most – of the things that I was not expecting to be as enjoyable as they have been so far during this draft weekend in the lovely city of Las Vegas – is the number of random jerseys that you see at the NFL draft is almost always like a theme. I feel like this year it's been even more, uh, I would say, like noticeable than ever. I have a nomination for the most random jersey I have seen so far this Ooh, weekend. Okay. And I'd be curious if you guys have seen the other ones. But do you guys know the Broncos yellow and brown throwback uniform that they, <laughs> they bust out like every like seven yeah. years? Uh -huh. Eddie Royal. Broncos uh, yellow jersey uh, busted out walking through Caesars Palace earlier today. So that was my look at that. Day. That's well done. <laughs> Fields my coming in hot tonight. Uh, that was the most random jersey I've seen so far this and week. And that's funny because I, I want to go back to something. You say you were walking the streets at 6:45 a.m. because mm -hmm. um, I didn't get invited. Why, to why didn't night? me and Spencer get a text to uh, walk the streets with you at 6:45? I figured you were working out. You're Harry Douglas. That's all you do is work out. But no, <laughs> no, like, no we wow. waking up. Yeah, 45. No. I figured you guys were asleep. I was letting everybody get their beauty rest mm -hmm. while we tried to get. Mm -hmm. What has anybody else seen a random wild jersey, Spencer? Yes, yes, I saw an a man who's at least 65 years old in a Darius Hayward Bay Raiders jersey. Why is that guy? Oh, like he didn't got, know. Oh, he didn't know. Is this a know, theme of the show? Like, we start the show by you know what and all over my, my beloved Raiders. We have a pick today. I just had a double chocolate donut. All I got is facts. That may be all one of the worst picks in Raiders history. Harry, we're going to fight before the end of the show. You're going to win. Am I lying? You're going to win. No, well, no. I mean, if we were going to make a laundry list of bad picks by the Raiders, they'd have to build a whole graphic of that. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about it yesterday. Devontae Adams at number 22. Speaking of yesterday, let's get some of everybody's thoughts as we recap a little bit of what happened in day one of the draft. Harry, let's start with you. What's what, 24 hours later, what's still hitting you from yesterday? The Baltimore Ravens. Um, this organization never seems to let anyone down, not even themselves. Uh, going to get Kyle Hamilton, the best guy at his position. Going to get Tyler Linderbaum, the best guy at his position at the center. Uh, at center, um, but understanding who they are and what they do, um, and not missing. I don't. I don't know when the last time you can say the Ravens actually missed in a draft. Can y'all even think of a time when the Ravens missed in the draft? Probably Hollywood Brown. That's where that well, trade last the, night. The, the, you know, uh, but it doesn't happen often. They, well, I'm, they well, tend I'm to nail it. Like overall. Oh, they don't, like, they don't miss like, the full that's what I'm saying. They don't ever miss. Well, never. and that but that's one of the interesting things we're gonna talk a lot about today because I think when you look at the first round of the draft, sometimes when you're picking high, there's so much pressure to have this massive home run. When you're picking lower in the draft, a lot of times, like, I know it's tougher to find that generational talent, it's what everybody says, but I don't know. Sometimes I think you can look at it and say, hey, better to hit singles. You just take hey, what's in front of you. Well, yeah, we got to work on this. We got to establish a builder's mentality here. Go get your groceries. <laughs> Go get your groceries. Get some solid foundational picks. Don't stretch. That leads me to what I'm still thinking about 24 hours later okay, as that? we go into day two of the draft, which is I'm really proud of NFL teams this year for resisting the temptation to take a quarterback just because you need a quarterback. There are a lot of teams that need quarterbacks, and I said all the, the, the run-up to this draft that none of these quarterbacks in my mind were worth it. The fact that we saw teams resist the temptation of simply taking a quarterback because you need a quarterback is something that I think we'll look back on this draft and say tip of the cap 
to all of these GMs that didn't, they resisted that pressure. That's why, you know, you look at the list of Mel Kuyper Jr.'s best available quarterbacks. It's all of them not named Kenny Pickett, right? Like yeah. Kenny Pickett goes to the Steelers. Maybe that turns out to be great. But we will start today with a lot of quarterbacks on the board. And frankly, I think that means a lot of people did smart things with their organization. I do want to, I want to divert for a second, just ask Field. Once we start grabbing this candy, it comes off the board fast, right? It does. I would think that for as slow as the quarterback market moved last night, mm -hmm. it could move much faster tonight. And not only because of the fact that you know, this is probably where these players belong in general. Teams have had all day to not just think about the possibility of drafting one of these quarterbacks, but also plan to try to move up in the order if they feel inclined to do so. And I will continue to belabor this point. Drew Locke for the Broncos obviously did not work out. But Drew Locke not working out was really no harm, no foul for Denver from a roster construction standpoint. Like, yeah. it cost him like $6 million over four years, 1.5 a year. Like, that's like a fifth-string quarterback on a veteran deal now. If you're drafting Matt Corral at pick 40 and he's got a four-year, $5.5 million contract, if after a year you're like, this guy stinks – that's okay. Like, he can just be buried on your bench. There are a lot of quarterbacks that once we get past round one, like Jacob Beeson's an example of one. Like, fourth-round pick that we thought maybe he could, like, really hit for the Colts. He didn't. And who, does anybody care? Like, it doesn't matter, right? Like, it's yeah. worth the, the swing at, for the fence. So, this could be a night where we see quarterbacks go early. You know what? And you can get a great quarterback at the top of the second round, Derek Carr. Uh, so, while Field, while you're talking <laughs> about uh, things in general with the draft, what's still on your mind 24 hours later? All right, so let's peel back the curtain here for a second. Um, everybody knows the most plugged-in man in sports, certainly in football, is Adam Schefter. Adam Schefter has been covering the uh, NFL draft for, I think, 32 years. This is his first time in 32 years. He is not at slash covering the NFL draft. That's because his great son, Devin, is graduating from Michigan this weekend. So Schefter last night basically was locked out of football and football Twitter and the draft. But it – and time zones are kind of messing me up here. Midway through the first round, so call it maybe like 9.30 Eastern time, Schefter drops a Woj bomb, which I don't know if that's appropriate usage of a Woj bomb or not. We'll allow it. <laughs> no. A.J. Brown gets traded to the Eagles. Like, I'm still thinking about this deal. And clearly it's not a deal that came together during the draft. Like, this was a deal that was premeditated. They knew it was going to take place. They knew that this deal was going to get done. It was just a matter of probably dotting I's and crossing T's. But A.J. Brown's now a Philadelphia Eagle. This is a team who has been like a hawk circling over wide receivers, not just in the trade market, but also in the draft. We all thought they might become the first team since the Lions, 2003 to 2005, to go back-to-back to, back to years with the first-round wide receiver. Instead, they land a guy in A.J. Brown who uh, I understand that you know, durability has been an issue for the past couple of seasons, but it is best. Like Philadelphia just solved what is arguably the biggest hole in their roster, and Jalen Hurts is equipped with – he went to obviously – Alabama and Oklahoma, two schools where you have, like, five-star recruits at every spot around you. He's got five-star recruits at every spot around him in the NFL now. That is rare. This team is going to be really fun on offense. And, by the way, reports have been just flooding out. A.J.'s been speaking at this point that he thought he was going to get an offer in the low 20s, was prepared to sign for $22 million, and according to multiple reports, they only offered him $20 million. I say only because I will remind everybody this isn't about 22 It's about two. The $2 million difference they were willing to let him walk for. I don't understand yeah. it at all. Spencer, what's still on your mind? Well, it, I was talking about candy. You want to talk about, like, making your team better in an exciting way? There's tons of cool skill players on the board that yeah. nobody's touched yet. Guys like Brees Hall. Like, I, I love Brees Hall. There you yeah, go, right Correct. There. Thank you, I'm not getting you, you one of my peanut butter cups. You don't get one of them. On the spot. Yeah, look what we've got. We, look, we've got Malik Willis left, okay, because once we pick these QBs, Everybody's going to rush to him because that's when the I can't miss on a QB thing happens, right? Second or third round now. Um, you still have uh, a guy like David Ojabo on defense, but you still have your Sky Moore waiting at wide receiver. Harry, you, you ready for that? Oh, yes. Yeah, and, and we still got guys like Brees Hall, who I, I like. I watched him carry Iowa State like three years running, right? A guy who breaks tackles, a guy who is blazing fast, just a fantastic back. Somebody's going to get a good one there. So I like that. I like that. I know the running back position has been devalued. This is the round where we start to see them bubble up. This is where we get to watch the cool video. My heart is full for Kenneth Walker the third too. Yes, like sir. Talk about somebody that I love watching play at college. So uh, obviously we got a lot that we're going to be getting caught up on. We're live in Las Vegas, by the way. If you've never watched Daily Wager or Bet, you should. We're on their set. They do great work here. This set is beautiful. We appreciate them letting us hang out. We will be here throughout the course 
of the night. Harry Douglas, Spencer Hall, Field Yates, I'm Jason Fitz. And uh, we had the opportunity, I had the opportunity uh, to sit down. And look, we're in my town. My favorite team's here. One of my favorite players in the league is Max Crosby because mm. I'm a Raiders fan and obviously – I don't hide it. So I pitched everybody and I said, I got a wild idea. Let me do something with Max that nobody's ever done in an interview. And wildly, Max Crosby said yes. Check a little of this out. Jason Fitz here hanging out with Raiders superstar Max Crosby. Look, we're both inked up, dude, right? Like oh, yeah. when you're in Vegas, you get tattoos with your besties. You got to. Look you know that. what I mean? This is my guy. So he told me I want to interview. I want to do it a little bit different. Look where we're at. Tattoos, Vegas. Can't beat it. I'm yeah, getting that's cool. an artistic okay. NFL draft piece. Max is getting kill or get killed on his leg. Like, what's the equivalent for me? Kill like, or be killed. A kill or be, be kill killed. Kill or get killed is a little dark. <laughs> what advice would you give somebody that may not hear their name called? early, but it's going to hear their name called. It doesn't matter where you get drafted, it's about what you do with it. I was a day three guy, first two days went by, I went to bed without getting drafted, I was so pissed. I had my whole family there, everyone, I was sick to my stomach to be honest. But it motivated me, like I knew deep down what I could do. When you walk into that building as a rookie, none of, that, none of the things you did in college matter. Do you remember the first time you saw a kid wearing a Max Crosby jersey? Just being in the like on the field or something and like just looking in the crowd and seeing a bunch of 98s. Like that's crazy to me. Like, and you're too humble to know this, but I'll tell you, I've been all over this town looking for a 98 jersey. Yeah. Right? I was gonna get a jersey. Have you signed a jersey for me? I said, put it up in my office. Yeah. Can't find one in this damn town. Like you are a popular I'll, man. I'll send one to you. I oh, got I got that. some. That speaks to what makes the draft so powerful, man. Like a fourth round kid out of Eastern Michigan that most people had never heard of is a household name and you can't find his jersey because he put in the work, got the opportunity, grinded, busted his ass, and now he's a superstar. Right. That is why people flock to the draft every year. Like you are the ultimate success story of what everybody's trying to accomplish. Well, I appreciate that. It's bizarre, you know, in just three years, how much I've done, but how much more I can bring. Shout out to Hart and Huntington, Lacey, Carlos, everybody that made those tattoos happen, and Max for giving me three hours, over three hours of his time. Great conversations. More of that will be played throughout the course of the NFL draft. We are in Las Vegas, and everybody is filling in. If you haven't seen the scenes from last night, it was epic. It will be epic again today as the strip is wild. Look at this. Ten teams did not make a pick yesterday. Ten teams. That's why this feels different. The second round, in some ways, almost, gentlemen, feels like the first round because what we're seeing are teams that haven't had the opportunity, including my beloved Raiders, and now they get to get on the clock. It feels like the city is going to be even more engaged today because of what's happening. Field Yates, Spencer Hall, uh, uh, Harry Douglas, I'm Jason Fitz, and, and this really is an interesting draft because what we're going to see are teams now coming out making statements. <laughs> to Spencer's point, too, real quick, I would say that there are a lot of dynamic playmakers out there. There are people that can still make a difference, but a lot of conversation about what's missing in this draft, but uh, th this draft is about the opportunity for a lot of kids to come in and make statements now. Yeah, we get a lot of, this is my favorite round, by the way. It's not the first round. The first round is when you make all the sensible decisions that everybody knows are good. This is my that guy round. This is when you're like, ooh, that guy. It's when you, this is when you pick up, you know, your guys who, there are, they're college legends, and they might really be good in the NFL, but it's a risk. Sorry, with that being said, we mentioned the prospects, and day two prospects makes me think Field Yates. So, Field, we've got to some of your best prospects from day two. What do you got? Uh, let me see. Are we, we going to run the video here? Oh, good. Okay. okay. You want me to start going through just randomly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Some of the names people know, and I know I'm going to leave the Kobe Dean to Spencer. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm just, just put that one, file it away. Kobe Dean, we'll talk about him more in just a little bit. Uh, quarterbacks are going to be certainly a topic of conversation. I'm not sure that the best prospects, but they will be ones that move the needle. Malik Willis, and also Desmond Ritter, and also Matt Corral, and also Sam Howe. But other guys that move the needle at different, more impact positions. Arnold Epikete, who finished up his college career at Penn State, went to uh, Temple to begin his college career. He's like a late bloomer. He's already playing football at the age of like 16, had nine and a half sacks this past year. Good athlete, not the athlete of Odafe Owe, who was his teammate, excuse me, who was uh, at Penn State and got drafted in the first round by the Ravens last year. But a really impact player who I think has a chance to be the kind of guy that could – 
Not surprise me if he had six or eight sacks next season. Yeah. Uh, Brees Hall, Iowa State, best running back in this year's class. Uh, the NFL did not draft a running back in the first round last night, uh, which I think is probably reflective as much uh, as the like what the value of the position is as opposed to Brees Hall as a player. Uh, and, again, Spencer is like the source for all things college football. Iowa State underachieved this past year uh, in a lot of ways, including offensively. They have a couple other guys, a couple guys drafted on offense. Brees Hall was by far their best player on offense this past year. Like, he does some stuff in the open field that's just ridiculous. Uh, he's really good in the passing game, really good after the catch, and obviously a great runner as well. Trey McBride, Colorado State, won the Mackey Award this past year, which is given away to the nation's top college tight end. Uh, had a breakout season from Colorado State, a, an offense that is a little more old school. Uh, Steve Adazio, the head coach there. We, we, head yeah, coach. We, yeah, we're going to talk about that. He decided to leave in the middle of a game when he was ejected. But yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, as somebody who uh, I'm married to a Boston College graduate, so we watched lots of Steve Adazio games, and it was a lot of ground and pound. It was not always the most enjoyable experience. I digress. Uh, Trey McBride, really good player as well. The kind of guy that I think has a chance to be uh, another, like, I think he, and I, I always say this, I hate player comps, and then I always do them. He has some Cole Komet in his game in the sense that, like, not superb athlete, but solid athlete. This is not Kyle Pitts by any stretch, but it's also not – like big lumbering, only can block and occasionally catch like a one-yard screen pass type tight end as well. So those are some of the names come to mind. And by the way, I'll always throw myself under the bus. He did a great little video, and I screwed up everything there. So, it's you know, okay. good, nice, nicely done by you. Oh, no, good. Listen, uh, you I know. wanted to keep – we want to keep talking about all kinds of players. But Keeps there, it moving. Tons of them. There are tons of them we could discuss. Now, the Buccaneers are on the clock. We on have clock. officially started day two seven minutes, of the right? NFL drive. Yeah. So, seven minutes uh, for pink. we are at this spot where the Buccaneers – remember, this has been a, a weird – I mean, the easiest way to say it is a weird – offseason for the Buccaneers, who yeah. at one point <laughs> thought they had no Tom Brady, but then they did have Tom Brady, and then they thought they had a coach, and then they didn't have a coach. Like, this has been a wild offseason for them. So, I have no idea what to expect. No, absolutely none. Are you going, like, best player available, right? I mean, if you go best player available, I have suggestions, i.e., the guy that we just fawned over, Brees Hall. Like, yeah. I, it, may be, it may be a little high to take a running back. I don't know. If he's what you need, if you just want another weapon – Take him. He's great. He's he's a wagon because he'll carry everybody. You know, I actually think it's a fit because you have Leonard Fournette that you just signed. Um, did he sign a long-term deal? Or was it a one-year? Three year? years. Oh, it's a three-year. Okay, months. so never yeah. mind. Forget, forget but that. It, but but, but, but D-tackle. D-tackle for them because oh, yeah. the Dominican Sue, they did not sign him back. You need another guy to pair up with Vita Vea. Um, I like this team. Shaq Mason, uh, J JPP, those guys coming off of the edge. Two of the best linebackers in the game right now, young ones, and Levante David. And we know about that guy down there at LSU who loves to ride horses uh, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I think D tackle would be a good spot here. Yep, agree uh, on that. Yeah, uh, if it wasn't for, the... for Leonard Fournette, though, I would have said Brees Hall would have been a great spot right here. But if they want Brees Hall, a couple of things. We know they can move back. Right? Like, there's a, well, Brees to me Hall's the, not going to last too yeah. long. Right. No, no, no. Well, but the top pick in the second round of the draft gives you some fluidity. If mm. they want a, a D tackle, like uh, Travis Jones, a kid out of Connecticut, is somebody that a lot of mocks had going late in the first, first round, yeah. and he's still sitting there. According to ESPN.com, we've got him as the best available of our defensive tackles field. I mean, there's a lot to look for. Here. You know what's interesting for the Bucks is – and none of us on the outside know specifically what's going to happen. But here's what we do know. Tom Brady, scheduled to be a free agent after this year. Do you draft for need? Value? Do you draft for now? Do you draft for next year? Do you draft a quarterback? I'm, I'm assuming that you draft a quarterback. You have Kyle Trask last year in the second round. Oh, that's fair. Like, I'm I keep forgetting about Kyle Trask being there. Yeah. Yeah, no, he is there. Go Gators. Dude, put, put, put some respect on Kyle Trask's name, okay? I gave, I gave Kyle Trask about as much respect as Dominique Foxworth gave Derek Carr's hair for a reason. It, on the roster, okay? On the <laughs> roster. Respect it, okay? Put some respect with a put K. Some, with a K. At the end of it. Yeah, because T-R-A-S-K. Respect. Same thing. Mm. Would, you, would you feel confident if Kyle Trask – like, this is the moment where they got, like, a come-to-Jesus conversation they mm -hmm. didn't expect. Like, there was this mini moment where you looked around and you're like, holy, you know what? Kyle Trask might be our starter going into this season. So they had, like, two weeks puckered up to feel like if, if they decided if they, if they were comfortable with that. If you were a Bucks fan, would you have been comfortable going into this year with Kyle Trask as your starting quarterback? I would not be a Bucks fan, first of all. Second, okay. um, <laughs> you, you people had shifted the just, questions just making, around here. Uh, I, you I, people? I'm Whatever talking, do you mean there? I mean people Bucks with fans. beards. Yeah, yeah. I'm just messing with you. People. <laughs> It's a culture thing. People with questionable <laughs> taste in shirts. Uh, uh, if, if Kyle Trask were my starter, 
I would uh, hope that we had drafted Brees Hall so that we could run the ball 50 to 60 times a game. That's what I would be hoping because <laughs> I would feel really uncertain about my team's yeah. fortunes. And, and by the way, like I was making the point earlier about how these second round quarterbacks, like if you take them and they don't work out a year later, like really no harm, no foul. Like, mm -hmm. How trash is the example? Like if Tampa Bay like doubled down and took another young quarterback tonight, we wouldn't be like, well, they, they really screwed you know th things up last year by taking Kyle Trask. It's, it's a dart throw, right? Yep. Quarterbacks are often a dart throw after round one. Take some dart throws. Like, it's the one position that we know if you hit them, no matter what spot it's at, pick one or pick undrafted, it's the most valuable resource you can have on an NFL roster. So keep swinging away. Uh, also, I mean, to that point, think about who the Bucs are right now. Like, the expectation for the Bucs in an NFC that we sort of all had a, a ha, moment last night remembering that the NFC <laughs> kind of sucks. I mean, compared to the AFC, let's just say it that way. The NFC, not as good as the AFC right now. So if you're the Bucs, you're looking around and thinking, well, we got Brady back. We're going to run it back. And we presume that even with a coaching change, we're still going to be a Super Bowl contender. This feels like they, right now, they could either they could do one or two things they could go say well we have an immediate need or they could say look we're 13 and 4 last year first in the NFC South a team that was right in the thick of the Super Bowl uh, we're just going to draft somebody and if it works out great if it doesn't work out like this draft means nothing to the legacy of the Buccaneers because the legacy of the Buccaneers is going to be about winning a Super Bowl right now they had all day to think about this by the way and they still haven't made the pick yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Field, you know why, though. Like, there are certain media partners that yeah, probably sat down. Yeah, but last night, down. we got going. Last yes. night, like, the Lions were like, oh, yeah. Trayvon Walker, sweet. We'll take Aiden Hutchinson. Give him a minute later. This is the hang. This is not to continue a theme, but the hangover from day. Why would we continue yeah. the theme? Um, because we want to keep people watching the show. I found a baby yeah. before. No, we're going to see. We're going to try to run this into, we're tired of it, into running gag. That's yeah. it, right? Yeah. We're going to get over the hump. <laughs> We're going to get into a game. You know what? I so got very positive response from both of my friends about the hangover what references yesterday. Once yeah. again, I am Black Doug. I don't want to be who you want me to be. I'm Black Doug. I, I we, really we, think are we, you are have we on you seen today? the movie? Yes, I have. Okay, and you don't want to be Bradley Cooper? Like, Bradley Cooper is by far, like, he's the sex symbol. He looks good. He walks with a little swagger. He's the smart ass. Like, he feels like there's a lot going on there that Harry Douglas relates to. Black Doug. So. Give the man what he wants. He was in the club last night, so I'm going to let him be Black Doug. I, I don't know what it we're was doing. Wild. Oh, my you, you God. Should, you should have been there. It was awesome. Yeah, me and Spencer had a was, hell of a time. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know what to say. All right, so as we start to look at the, the second round of the draft, and, again, the Buccaneers are on the clock. Yep. Uh, the, the, the countdown has started. Do you uh, I believe there's some entertainment taking place right now. Okay. That okay. Is, like, for the people that are here in Las Vegas, that is perhaps um, – Holding this up. Okay, well, that that's that would make a lot of sense. And look, everything's a show here. I did talk to some people, by the way, totally unrelated to anything, but I'm in this chair, so I can do that. Uh, mm -hmm. The Bellagio stage was really confusing. Like, I love this city. I'm from this city, and I love the fact that the draft is here. If I have a critique to Las Vegas and to the NFL, the draft, the way it's laid out, a lot of people didn't realize that the Bellagio was just about fountains and a green room. So apparently, I was talking to some Raiders fans before the game, and there were a bunch of people that were standing by the Bellagio, and they're like, I can't wait for the picks! And then they realized that the picks are nowhere near the Bellagio. Like, they're on the other end. And so now, like, tonight, we got an Ice Cube concert going on at the Bellagio. That sounds like a lot of fun. But the actual draft itself is going to be over the river. Ice Cube? The yeah. Today was a good day. You're going to get me backstage at that one? And don't, don't tell me you I don't, can't. I don't because know, he, I don't he knows know, Luda. I don't, I don't know Ice Cube. Yeah, but you. you like, I don't know Luda personally. I know his people Chris, personally. Chris, 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 the clock has begun, by the way. Oh, the clock has begun now. So oh, now we have an sorry. official countdown. Field's keeping us back. All right, so the, the Bucks, I retract my previous <laughs> statement. Like, what are you guys waiting so long for? You were waiting for Chris Angel to escape from a uh, straitjacket. And frankly, that's electrified. So how could you not? Want to give that man did, the did we seriously, did it did we ser Were we seriously waiting for Chris Angel to get out of a straight jacket? As far as I can tell, that's the truth. Yeah. The truth. I now officially like this event. <laughs> I now officially like. What yeah, you I didn't mean, like that? You didn't like it before? I was unseen. I was I was undetermined. I wasn't sure. Had to come. Had to see it in person. I'm sold. If you've got Chris, is like, this your first draft in person? It is not my first draft in person. I did attend one in New York, aka uh, a Jets tailgate. That's what every draft in New York is. But this in Vegas. Uh, it's ridiculous enough for me to love. Well, one thing that I don't love is a draft drought, and our own Field Yates had a little something to say about that. We're at the Neon Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada. The Sahara sign behind me makes me think desert. Yo, Field, give me a couple teams that have uh, had a bit of a dry spell in the draft the last few years. The Dolphins have plans for the first night of the NFL draft, and the second. 
we're going to watch highlights of their newest wide receiver, Tyreek Hill. The Rams don't pick until outside the top 100. But who needs picks when you've got a Lombardi trophy instead? I'm up here putting on lip balm. Wow, that, that's, a, that's real. And by the way, shout out to the Neon Museum in Vegas. Uh, Dude, how long were you here for before the rest of us got here? You about a week, you, about a week, like did, doing weeks. work, okay, doing some work, nice. hanging out, getting a little bit of love, uh, you know, in, in, in the city of Las Vegas, uh, uh, my, my, my place, hanging out with some Raiders people and then doing a lot of work. Like the Neon Museum, by the way, if no one's ever been, is one of my favorite things to tell people to go to. It's off the strip. you got to get out there. It's okay. like 10 minutes away. But they basically take all of, well, they don't basically, they do take the old signs from Vegas and they put them all throughout this area that you can go tour and then at night it lights up and you can see some of the, the great landmarks of Las Vegas history. So it's a, it's a really cool way. And the throughout the course of the broadcast, you'll see a lot of tie-ins that we did for that. that if you leave one and only. Look at Harry Douglas with, with the country <laughs> music. I, I'm, I'm a, no, Neon, Moon, Neon Moon's transcended. It crosses yes. all barriers, right? Yes. All lines. Uh, Whose version is, do you think of when you think of Neon Moon first? Oh, only Brooks, Brooks and Dunn. And Dunn. Okay. Brooks and Dunn. Brooks and Dunn. Not uh, okay. Casey Musker. Didn't she like uh, cover it with them? Uh, like a, she, or did yeah, she like a duet with yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just making a, sure. It's a lovely version. It's yeah. still, it's not I feel the like she became the TikTok. No, I agree. I believe Brooks and Dunn as well. But I feel like Casey really like became the popular one on TikTok, and people are like, "Oh, this is her song." Which like there are a lot of songs that is a. I'm like no Jason Fitz when it comes to music. So like there are songs that I don't even realize who the original artist was sometimes. And I'm oh, like, that happens to me all the time. Okay, I, that, like, like look. But by the way, if you ever want to go back and look like Brooks and Dunn did a Christmas special years ago on CMT. If you look at the string quartet right behind it right there. Yep. Long hair, shaggy hair version of me sitting back there hanging out with Brooks and Dunn. Long you had hair? The shaggy? Oh, I had you long, had long the shag? Yeah, this is a true story nobody cares about. <laughs> but when I, uh, when I got I my, my first right. Nashville record deal, I, I'll never forget. I walked in with, with my buddies, and we had moved to Nashville after we got dropped from New York, from RCA. We moved to Nashville, didn't know anybody. We walked into the president of Capitol Records, and we sang a bunch of Beach Boys tunes a cappella for him. And he looked at us, and he said, I don't know what we're going to do with this, but you guys are phenomenal. We're going to sign you. And then the next statement out of his mouth, is he looks at me, he's like, and you, you are not cool. So we're going to grow your hair out. We're going to do something with this, but this is not cool. So that uh, that started my long hair stage in my life. It was uh, <laughs> uh, like uh, it's a good story, right? You are not cool. That was said at the time, or is that that was said then? Okay. Was now said I'm then. very. No, cool. I got a leather jacket on in studios. I mean, I, uh, Biker boy. Coming. That's true. All right. So <laughs> Harry <laughs> Douglas, <laughs> Spencer Hall, Field Yates, uh, Dominique Foxworth going to join us in a little bit. I'm Jason Fitz. Any predictions? We got two minutes forty seconds. They are running for the this Bucks thing down or for the Bucks. Going defensive tackle. Any chance you think they trade this? I mean, the, the fact that it is. Oh, I'm sure they're spot. waiting it out to see if they get a Godfather offer. But yeah, we'll, we'll, Logan Hall. It, I was gonna say, what do we think about Logan Hall? I like Logan Hall a lot. And it's funny is like his draft, his pre-draft process actually had shades of Peyton Turner, his teammate in college, who also went to Houston. Um, got drafted in the first round last year by the uh, by the Saints, 29th. But people are like late in the draft process. Like, Here's a guy that's like generating a lot of buzz. It's like, oh, it's happening like literally 365 days ago. Um, Logan Hall, though, like long, levered, disruptive. Um, the problem is that like only like the only like six, eight defensive tackles in the NFL happen to all be like really sweet, like Calais Campbell and like mm-hmm. DeForest Buckner. So Eric Armstead, I don't want to compare him to one of those guys because those guys are all like really, 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 really good and have been for a long time. But there are some, some traits, some, some shades of. The pick is say. in, by the way, so okay. we know that it has not been traded at this, t- at okay. this point. It so the pick been... is in, and I, I think we're going to see a lot of these early picks in the second round with long clocks on it for the, the godfather author, offer syndrome. Are you good on Logan? Is that? Oh, right? yeah, I'm good on Logan. Like, one of the funniest things in doing any research for the draft whatsoever was looking at highlights of the, the tackle from Tulsa that was taken last night, um, and some of those are from the Houston game. And in every snap in that Houston game, Logan Hall is forklifting his dude into the like into space. Like he is. Destroyed. That's what I love about him. He defeats yeah. double teams. Um, the only only knock I had on him being that tall, he got to work on his pad level. Mm-hmm. But I actually think he is going to be a gem, a guy in about two or three years that 
a lot of people are going to be talking about is being a steal of this draft at that position. But that's the ultimate place that you want to be then. You go somewhere where you can be a gem. You don't have to be expected to lead a team to greatness this year. Yeah. You can be a, a cog in the wheel while you develop, Guys, and you've got a defensive head coach that, in theory, is going to be able to put those things around you to help you. I mean, it feels like, in that sense, that's exactly what the Bucks are looking for. Like, I'm what? told we've had our first trade of the night, by the way. Oh. Vikings have already traded. i got to figure out who it is. Okay. Uh, we're um, going to dig up. Uh, well, there's some dancing going on on stage. I'm still waiting for the Raiders. Packers are on the clock. To ask me to announce a pick someday. With the first pick in the second round of the NFL draft. Simeon Rice announcing right now who the Buccaneers are going to be picking. That was a bad boy when he was out there playing. Right. Simeon Rice was a bad He man. looks happy to be up there, too. And it is. Look at Logan that. Hall. Logan Hall. Defensive end out of Houston. So, uh, we've already heard a little bit about him. Uh, so, obviously... They'll run some highlights for you, show you some of what he's talking about. Why is he still available, Harry, in the second round? Um, I think just because he played at Houston and you don't see, like, the dominant, dominant, dominance, but you see the flashes and the traits to be great. Now, being around the rest of those guys on that defensive line, being around Todd Bowles, there's a lot of things that they can teach him and you can groom him uh, because – one thing we do know about their defense is they have dogs, which we talked about last night. When you have a dog or you have dogs, you surround them by other people, and things change. I also like that he can disrupt the pass game two different ways. That's 6'8". That's a big wingspan. There could be some tip balls. By the way, field on quick update looks like Minnesota. I'll give it to you. Yep. The Vikings have traded pick 34 to the Packers in exchange for picks 53 and 59. Packers now on the clock at pick 34, I would wonder if perhaps a wide receiver would make some sense here after not using a first-round pick on a wide receiver last night. Um, really interesting that the Vikings have now made two draft trades so far, the first with the Lions, the second with the Packers. How do you feel about teams from the same division making trades with each other? It's kind of like doing each other's laundry and calling it business. Like, that just... <laughs> Seems weird. Seems well, weird that went me. my idea for the rest of the night. I was going to bring you my laundry. Oh, yeah, man, well, I can I do your it. laundry, and you charge me five dollars, and I okay. charge you five dollars, <laughs> and that way we both make money. That kind of what it feels baby. like. Yeah, recycling. Is there something weird about the value on this? Like Minnesota trading thirty-four to Green Bay for fifty-three and fifty-nine. Minnesota's dropping back nineteen picks to pick up one extra pick. I mean, yes, but you're getting you know two like. Last night, remember what they did? Like they've been, they've been sort of going for volume. Um, I don't know. Listen, we're sort of projecting when we make this instant analysis. But their um, GM, Quasi Adolfo Mensa, is an analytical mind, and I think he might be able, he might be sitting there saying, you know what? Like, I'd rather have 13 swings at the bat as opposed to 11 swings at the bat, and it sure feels like perhaps that's what. Minnesota is motivated by right now. 19 picks just feels like a, a big drop. Maybe it speaks to what Spencer was talking about earlier and how much absolute talent there is in the second round of this draft so people feel like it's particular, particularly deep. It just feels like that's a fairly significant, hey, bow out, we'll see in a couple hours. Yeah, also, this is the analytics version of drafting a tackle or a corner, right? Analytics dudes will be like, well, I can get more swings of the bat, and that is what a smart person would do. And it's their way of punting, right? It's It's... If they're not quite sure what to do, fall back, see what you got. You got, you got to think here that the Packers moved up to take Christian Watson, right? Or Scott Moore, uh, a guy that people had slotted to go in the first round to the to the Packers, Christian uh, Watson, that is. So hopefully they get a wide receiver. They could literally take Spencer Hall and claim that he was a wide receiver. Where'd you go to college? Uh, University of Florida. So, oh. my, you know, by, by pedigree. You played there, right? Uh, yes. A little bit. Yes. Freshman, sophomore year. Not football. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> uh, but they can just say Spencer Hall, Florida wide receiver, and I'd buy it. Yeah, it like, I'd be cool with it. Yeah, it was mostly Magic the Gathering. That was, you know. That was my game. <laughs> oh, there is a large sombrero on the the uh, stage it. right now. Yeah, and some people just can't handle Vegas. Maybe. That is that, that is the emergence, by the way, of the headgear here. I've seen more team themed sombreros in Las Vegas than oh. I've ever seen in my life. I saw I saw some strange hard hats today that looked like they were. Like, made by people, like, they stayed at home and made themselves a hard hat. That seems like a lot of crafting decisions that Homemade I'm not capable of like, making. Christian Watson, wide go. receiver, go. North Dakota go. State. So, I will go yes. to wide receiver one here, Harry yes. Douglas. What makes Christian Watson great? Uh, a guy that's 6'5", about 210 pounds, but runs a 4'3'6". And when you watch his tape, you watch his film, it shows up, and it shows up uh, as soon as you turn it on. 
Uh, you, you look at this guy, he's a guy they gave reverses to, sent them on C speed sweeps. You don't really hear about 6'5", six, 6'4", six, guys getting speed sweeps and running those type of plays. Uh, I will say this about him, though. I think he's a guy uh, with the right coaching. He will be polished, and he can go down as being one of the great receivers that Aaron Rodgers had. If I, if I say this, I don't mean it as an insult. He doesn't know how big he is. No. No, like he doesn't play like he's – like. It, I think he doesn't if know If he understands it, if he understands it, it can be very scary because that's one of the notes I had is that he doesn't always play up to his size. Yeah. Um, and I think some of that is because he's so fast. And when you're so fast and you get down the field because he's a home run hitter, you might have a little finesse to your game. But once he understands that he can be a bully, slap DBs around, especially the little piss ants, the little small ones, and, 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 and teach them <laughs> teach them lessons and teach them discipline on, on, on numerous other occasions, it's the sky's the limit for this young man. So let me ask the question I'm going to ask a lot today then. Why was he still on the board? What separates him from the other receivers taken above him? I think the North Dakota State in a small school, and I think he, he kind of got shadowed by that because they, were, they are a run-first team. Mm -hmm. So his numbers may have got misconstrued. Um, the route running does need to be tightened up a little bit, but like I said, I think he does have the potential to be one of the best ones from this draft. Looks like the Jets are now on the clock, and we oh, have they another have, trade. They, uh, so They are traded to pick 36. We are getting trades galore, which – uh, again, that's not going to surprise the Giants a lot of people. and the Jets. This is crazy. So the Jets, uh, yeah, and we'll see here what what it looks like. The Jets are on the clock, and that is the Titans that trade out trade out of that pick, right? If I'm looking, I'm at this the, I, I, it's the Giants move back from 36 to 38. From 36 to 38. Yeah. Okay, we're all over the place on where these picks are. So uh, the Titans pick is in. Actually, that's where we are. The Titans pick is in. I'm happy with it. Uh, interesting to me because Titans fans still angry about yesterday. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Titans fans split about yesterday. Let me say that. There are some that are already in their, their fields of justification. But as I said earlier on the show, if he was, according to A.J. Brown, willing to sign for $22 million and it. they gave him an offer lower than he expected and it only came out at $20 million, $2 million is the reason that they downgraded. Billy White Shoes Johnson. Yeah, king of the one, one of the greats um, in, in Houston Oilers history, now the Tennessee Titans and with the Atlanta Falcons as well. Took a long time for the up. Oh. And the pick is in it is corner Roger McCreary Ooh. out of Auburn. So, uh, Titans fans, a lot of Titans fans have been screaming about wanting a quarterback in the second round. That did not happen there. So, Roger McCreary, what do we got here, Spencer? What do you like? Um, he has, I, I think, the potential to be really good, but not exactly the guy who I was like a standout. I think this is a, this is a semi-developmental pick, all right? Again, that's not an insult. I just think... He's got to do work, especially because in terms of cornerbacks you were going to watch in the SEC, um, I think he was overshadowed by guys like Derek Stingley, right? Like, and that's hard not to do. Yeah. Um, he's a good player. I think he has the potential to be great. How's that? Yeah, uh, I agree. I feel like this past year was not a banner year for Roger McCreary, despite the fact that he was named an All-American, first-team All-American. Yeah. Um, a guy who, if it, you know, we do these way too many, way too early mock drafts. I think was much higher in the way too early mock draft edition. That being said, fills a significant need for Tennessee. Uh, this is a team that uh, last year used a first-round pick on Caleb Farley, who came into the league with uh, major back concerns. Uh, he ended up getting back on the field, but this to me feels like an opportunity for a guy to come in and be a plug-and-play starter. Tennessee's had a fascinating, fascinating start to the draft. You guys have both got deep Tennessee roots. Terry, I hear you obviously played for them, and – Fitz obviously did radio for many years in Tennessee. Like, what a fascinating, fascinating start to the draft what, for them. Well, what are the Titans doing? Well, I'll say one of the trends here, um, Janoris Jack Rabbit Jenkins, they, they no longer they put, uh, parted ways with him. But you can see the last two drafts, they're really trying to hone up this secondary, uh, especially corners. They have Elijah Molden as well that they drafted from the University of Washington. I believe that was la one of last year's pick. You have a guy like Kevin Byer, who is a hybrid uh, safety and can play the game at a very, very high level. Now you have to surround him because one thing we do know is, right, they do have the front seven. They do have the defensive line. You've seen that game against the Cincinnati Bengals where uh, I think they tied the record for more sacks in a playoff game against the Cincinnati Bengals and still lost, uh, surprisingly. But when it comes to Roger McCrary, I think it shows up on film. Usually you want your corners to have long arms. His arms are about a 28, usually corners there in the 30, 30 mm -hmm. range. And it shows up on tape sometimes when he's trying to knock the football out of the uh, wide receiver's pocket from them from 
keeping them from catching the ball. So mm-hmm. I, 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 uh, I don't think I like him right here. I would have preferred Andrew Booth Jr. Can I, can I say here. something? Yeah, yeah, you love him. Um, can I say something, though, complimentary about him, though? Yeah. And I think this is something he developed as a compliment or as compensation for uh, the sort of the, the arm length. He's very slappy, very, very disruptive, right? Yeah. Had a ton of pass breakups. He gets there. I also think the Titans coaching staff does deserve some benefit of the doubt on the defensive side of the ball. They develop players fairly well. They right? do. And you mentioned Byard. I think uh, Byard's not just good. He's great. Uh, he's a superstar player. Simmons is a superstar player. Yep. Like, the Titans have absolute foundational superstar players. Carol on the Landry the third. I mean, they've, they've got yep. they've dogs. Like, they've got that all over that defense. And that defense really speaks to the identity of Mike Vrabel, right? Like, I, I look at all of that side of the ball. It makes a ton of sense to me. I just think Titans fans right now are going to continue to remember what you just talked about. The Titans defense – kicked the, the Bengals' offense ass in that playoff game, and mm. it did not matter because the, they, they found a way offensively to lose it. There are questions for the Titans on the offensive line. That there are now questions about the offensive explosiveness. We'll see how it looks. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I have no problem going, uh, going corner with it because they develop well. But if I'm a Titans fan, I don't feel like today my team is any better than it was 72 hours ago. And, Spencer, I, I will say this. I did notice that about Roger McCrary, about being a little pest and handsy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, That's my a good only, word for My it. only yeah. concern at the next level is that you're dealing with strong receivers with that hand fight and that stuff. It may bother a college receiver, but mm-hmm. these NFL guys that are big, you, a guy like a Mike Evans, or if you're backside, you got to guard a guy like Kyle Pitts who has that wingspan. Mm-hmm. It won't matter then. Um, but I, I, I wish they would have went with Andrew Booth Jr. I, By the way. I, and it's no knock on him because this is their day. This is the, you know what well, I mean? That's but, your, no, that's your, that's your dude. That's your dude. These are preferences. Yeah. The, Jet, the Jets pick is in and uh, should take a second to say J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. My buddy Darren, big Jets fan yesterday, last night was texting me and was like, this was the biggest home run draft I've ever seen in my entire life. They're fired up right now, aren't they? They are fired up. And they obviously, (laughs) not only do they get Sauce Gardner, they get Garrett Wilson, then they trade up and they get Jermaine Johnson the second. Like, they, Jets fans right now feel like it was, it's not good. This was an effing spectacular draft. That's how Jets fans feel right now. So... There's nothing that's going to happen today that's going to change the way Jets fans feel. It's only going to be like this. This is the cherry on top of the already we rule draft. We got to say Revis that. is out there. Yeah, he's out on Revis Island. We got to say this straight <laughs> up. The, the Jets are doing well. Say it. Yeah. Let it. Let it flow. Say top it. cornerback it last good. night. Top wide receiver last night. Yeah. You can make the case. You know, J- Jermaine Johnson's one of the top. Obviously, one of the top. Uh, pass rushers. And, then, and they got Brees. Brees Hall. Oh, what? They just, they just went up and got, I this mean, is or they went down. I mean, they, they were able to trade down because the Giants trade 36 to the Jets for 38 and 146, a fifth round pick. So now you have the Jets trading down and getting somebody you love. Yeah, you don't have to do anything with this. Put him on the field. That is how complete Brees Hall is. If you can see, great vision, good jump cut, strong legs. This is a dude who obviously spent his entire childhood like walking through swamps and taking high steps because <laughs> never lost a shoe, never lost a shoe because that man's hip flexors are insanely strong. He's got great leg pull. He is, he's unreal. I love him. He carried Iowa State. I will say it once. I will say it again. This is a flawless draft for the Jets so far. I didn't get struck by lightning when I said that, which means it's real. It's happening. This is why this pick is important. When you have a young quarterback in Zach Wilson, who you've seen struggle in his first year, you want to take pressure off of him. What's one of the best ways to do that? You draft a running back that you can lean on. You look at the offensive system. It's Mike LaFleur who came from that Mike Shanahan, Cal Shanahan tree. Mm-hmm. Those guys want to run the football, but if you don't have a running back, you can't do that. Now you pair him up with a Michael Carter. Yeah. Now you have a two-headed monster that you, that you can work with. But I think it's very, very imperative. And then you have uh, Vera Tucker and then you have Makai Becton uh, mm-hmm. who came from Louisville. And I know he wants to run block because he came out of that zone oh. scheme at Louisville. So uh, I think this is a great pick. And right now, the Jets uh, throw the baseball up. They're knocking it out of the park, man. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of something, though. Field said yesterday, he said, you know, for Mekhi Becton, a little bit of a wake-up call, right, when you hear all these rumors about the possibility. Like, they were able to give Mekhi Becton maybe a little kick in the butt warning call, warning shot. They were able to get their young quarterback, and I don't know if they've got the right guy. But they, got, they gave their young quarterback in this draft a great option at running back and the best wide receiver in this draft, and they've improved their defense. Like, this is this is stellar work by the Jets so far. The Texans pick, by the way, is in. We'll see how this one goes. 
and it is Jalen Petrie, the safety out of Baylor. How do we feel about that one, Field? I like it a lot. I actually really, really like it. He had an unbelievable senior bowl week. Jalen Petrie is a really good player during his time at Baylor. Uh, I mean, the, the safety class was sort of defined by Kyle Hamilton, but this guy, well, hey, maker, not that far off. This guy, legit, really good in coverage. You'll see it right here. Handles his own. I mean, I think this is uh, – and the Texans are just making smart this is, moves left it, and right. It's, Not stuff that's going to push them to the top of the draft, to the top of the league, obviously anytime soon. But, whew, I'm impressed. Sa two, like the defense he plays in, Dave Aranda's system, does a lot of super creative stuff that's like taken right out of the NFL playbook. Like putting players in different positions, switching up coverages all the time, taking players like Jalen Petrie and asking them to do two or three different things, but do them really, really well, all while being fundamentally sound and doing that. And doing that That's absolutely cool. puts someone on their back. There's one question, though, I got to ask smarter people than me. How is it possible that his arm length at the combine was 30 and 5 eighths and his arm length at his pro day was 31 and an eighth? How'd your arms grow in a few days? Well, you learn from that first stunt, you know how to cheat the system. That mm -hmm. first time around, you might mm -hmm. not have known how to cheat the system. The second time, I tried to do it on my vertical jump. I was like, there was like, put your arm all the way up. And I was trying to slouch down a little bit so yeah. it wouldn't, they wouldn't put the thing as, as high as it was supposed to be. We have another trade, by the way. The Giants have traded 38 to Atlanta for 43 and 114. So Ooh. the Giants move back, essentially, five picks and pick up a fourth rounder to do that. Uh, I didn't want to cut you off, though. Did you have any Petrie thoughts that you wanted to get? Yeah, I did. And here, here's some of my notes I had on him. Could play in the box. He could tackle well. He reads and reacts. Uh, his closing speed is remarkable. A very instinctive player. Uh, he can guard slot receivers. You see him moving around all over the place, so I think this is a home run, a home run hit. Yeah, this is just another one of what looks like several. It just feels like teams that are bad are doing good things this year, and yeah. that's yeah. like let's just start admitting. Like as a as a fan of a team that that has had a lot of questionable drafts, the worst part about it is when you're watching your team draft and you know that they're just going to get dumped all over every time they make a pick. I want to make sure that we're doing the opposite here in a very loud way because we've seen. Bad teams make smart – I feel like team, bad teams have gotten better over the course of this draft, and that's pretty impressive. Listen, all those dudes who got the week off from working at Con Ed out in Queens who came out here in their Jets helmets, okay? Mm -hmm. Totally worth it. Zero regrets, right? They could all be down a grand at the tables. They would not care right that now. That was a big need for Houston, too, because they lost Justin Reed mm -hmm. to the Kansas City Chiefs. They needed to fill that role. Pick and Petrie here is, 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 is remarkable. The Falcons pick is in. They traded up to do this. Again, the, the Giants trade down. The Falcons give up a fourth rounder. What are the Falcons moving up for, Harry? Uh, actually, a, no? across this ro roster, I think it's a lot of things. Quarterback, uh, the corner position. You can go O-line, D-line. There's so many holes that they need Kinda to fill across right? the yeah, roster. Fair. Yeah. Uh, they got yeah, the what, receiver what in the first there? round, so you can go ahead and take that out. Not saying that they can't get yeah. more receivers in this draft, but – they had a lot that they needed in this, uh, not just this draft, but I think over the next two drafts in free agency as well. ESPN.com best available still sitting there is N'Kobe Dean. I would just like to remind everybody that N'Kobe Dean is still not drafted. So I'm, I'm going to wait for N'Kobe to get drafted. I, I want Spencer to have his his moment. Yes. Uh, this is your first year doing this show, but like I mm -hmm. feel like each person who's done it in the past, or a lot of people have had like their moment. Like Mina's had her Daniel yeah. Jones and her DK Metcalf moments. Like these are opportunities for greatness, which are pretty frequent in your life. I'm ready for the N'Kobe moment for you. Yeah, not to yeah. build it up or anything. There's no pressure. <laughs> he, no pressure I'm just going to yeah. give you a preview. He may have that dog in him. Okay. <laughs> he may have. There, there may or may not have been a whole discussion after the show last night about a dog bone that was at one point on set. It was a massive dog bone. It has since disappeared. So one of us had the dog in him uh, to take the dog bone. I don't know, <laughs> but I think that's probably a good thing because I'm not sure that Spencer can handle that level of response. Oh, now the dog bone's here. Carlos yeah. has got a dog yeah, bone. You Carlos, can just come man on, on up, Carlos. Man on the like, spot. Carlos doing great work, by the way. I I'll take a quick second to reset this for anybody that's watching. We are live in Las Vegas at the studio for Bet and Daily Wager. A lot of What's shows it? come out of here. The, uh, the entire Yard staff of this building has we'll been so out. nice to let us come in and take over. They've been incredibly gracious and kind. We are uh, on the corner of uh, go get a map and go. Never mind. I won't do that. I want to keep working for ESPN. Harry Douglas, Field Yates, Spencer Hall. I'm Jason Fitz. Dominique Foxworth going to join us in just a little bit. We are live in Las Vegas. The pick is in for the Atlanta Falcons. We will get the reaction from Harry Douglas, who knows the Falcons better than most as this goes down. We'll see what it is. But you're right. The Falcons, they're not good. They're right now, right now, it's not a good football. Well, you don't have to say it like that. <laughs> But I think the Kobe I Dean would wouldn't nice. be a bad pick here because they lost a guy named Foyer Lewican who played uh, great for them the last few years. You know what's really interesting about Atlanta? They're in, like, this weird cross-section. We were talking about this last night when, like, their point differential 
was worse than the Lions last year. So there's like this, you can talk yourself into what you want to be. And if I'm the Falcons, like I'm, I'm hoping that like they're being honest with themselves. Like they're taking the long view. It all comes down to the quarterback though. Mm -hmm. And if they, like we've talked a lot about this and continue to hear this going forward is that like next year's, <clears throat> next year, year's quarterback class right now looks decidedly better than this year's. And if some of these teams bypass a quarterback now, it might be in part because they're like, you know what? Why bother? Like, let's ride out with Marcus for a year, Marcus Mariota, and then we might be in position for a Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud or any of the other quarterbacks that this is more your wheelhouse than mine mm -hmm. that might be available. Um, you know. Yeah, all, we, we were all waiting, yeah, like we're all waiting for Bryce. Richardson is a guy that could yeah. probably come out next year. Yep. It's, I, think, I think next year's quarterback class – um, oh, and I like yeah. this pick. Mel Kuyper mm -hmm. is celebrating. Uh, Arnold Evan is the is the pick. Somebody that Mel and Todd spent I don't know roughly two and a half months yelling about, screaming about. Field. Well, I'll part let you, of that, you have moderated the two of them arguing like children over this one. So yep. go for it. So I uh, mentioned him a little bit earlier. Uh, is excuse me. Uh, he is uh, a Temple Temple transfer. You see at the bottom of the uh, screen. Nine and a half sacks this past year during his time at Penn State. He's actually from the state of Maryland. I think that's part of the reason why Mel loves him so much. Really good player. Instant impact right away this past year uh, for Penn State. Gets home with a pass rusher. He's got some really interesting traits. I like him a lot. And Atlanta, I think schematically, like they've got some players. You know, Grady Jarrett's their best defensive player. Obviously. That being said, like. I'm not entirely sure who their other like defensive line cornerstones are for the long term right now. So to yeah, me, this is the first one. Do they have, do there they have, isn't any field. Yeah, right I was gonna now. say, do they have? Yeah. A, <laughs> what, what's like? What's he going into? Like, what kind of a setup is he going into? Um, I, I think Dean Pease is a great guy to be his defensive coordinator. Okay. Because when I look at him, he's a guy with long arms, a guy you can drop in coverage. Uh, do you want him dropping in coverage much? Because you have that need uh, of a guy that can be able to sack the quarterback. But I love his bend to be able to get around the edge. And I'm glad they put up that Wisconsin game because you can just turn that tape on alone. And we all know Wisconsin, they breed offensive linemen. They breed physicality. And you see Ibikide, um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name the correct way, wrecked that game for them. But it wasn't just that game. It was different times and when they needed him throughout the season where he showed up big. And Trevor Maddox loves this guy. We talked about him a lot on College Game Day radio throughout the season. But I just think he's going into a situation with a coach that is going to use him towards his strengths and try his best not to exploit his weaknesses. Now, I do believe that he has to get stronger lower body-wise because you do have those moments on film where once guys get on him, you see him driving them. But if you can put him in the best situation possible to be successful, which I do believe Dean Pease will do, he can have a hell of a career. I trust Dean Pease a lot as yes. a defensive coordinator. And when you start talking about – putting on lower body strength, one thing I always think about is, like, frame. Like, you've talked about it. Mm. Uh, Spence has talked about it. Like, frame matters. When you think about the difference in coming – it's one thing I talked to Max Crosby about last week. When you talk about the difference in the training and the food and the nutritionist and the, the facilities and everything, you get nothing against everything that he had at Penn State. It's just different at the NFL it level. Is. And so, like, there's a real opportunity when you don't have to worry about going to class and you can just sit there and focus on what guys are telling you to eat and how to, how to lift. Like, putting on lower body strength, if you have the frame for it, uh, does not concern me at all for any prospect. This is America. We can make you bigger. <laughs> it's one thing we're real good at. By the way, I'm going to throw myself under the bus. I missed an opportunity when we got the dog bone delivered earlier by stage manager Carlos, who's been incredibly kind. That was my chance to, for the one time to say, not at the table, Carlos. <laughs> I wow. missed it. Not wow. at the table, Carlos. Can I take a minute to brag on someone for yeah, a second? Yeah, please do. <clears throat> so my pre-ESPN world was working in, in scouting. And I was hired in – I graduated college in 2009. Yeah, so I got hired to go out and work in Kansas City with the Chiefs. I got hired as a scouting assistant. It's basically – it's like, you know, the gruntiest of grunt jobs in scouting. But it's, it's great. You learn so much and you do so much dirty work and your boots on the ground. And such, you know, you're the guy that picks up players for workouts. You're the guy that takes them to medical visits. All that. You learn a lot because you're getting sort of the, the Raw's version. You're not – these guys aren't sucking up to you because I'm a 22-year-old making $22,000 a year. I got hired that year uh, along with a guy named Ryan Poles, who is now the general manager of the Chicago Bears. Got hired earlier this offseason. And it's just so cool to see someone shine who, you know, you always say these things like when someone becomes something at a later stage of your life than when you first became associated with them, like I knew when. It's really hard to become a general manager in the NFL. There are a lot of really smart people. But he was somebody that 
the minute I met Ryan, I remember just being like, I wish I had the demeanor of someone like him. And he just made or was about to make his first pick as a Chicago Bears general manager. That's got to be a surreal moment for him. Like him and I become friends, uh, or have stayed friends, I should say, know each other's family. Like that's cool stuff right there. Like that's got to be like, – what we do is amazing. We love what we do. And, uh, but I appreciate people who get the opportunity to shine on something they care so deeply about. So you know him incredibly well. The Bears obviously – have some foundational piece. Like, anytime you have Justin Fields, you feel like you got a foundational piece. We all sat on the broadcast last year and reacted it was so ecstatically when yeah. that came together, right? Mm-hmm. Like, seeing Justin Fields go to the Bears felt like there was this synergy and it was going to work out really well. What's he do with this pick now? Um, so, the major needs remain along the offensive line, oh, yes, wide receiver, and cornerback. Those are the three spots that have been talked about a bunch for the Bears in the pre draft process. I think the thing... That- Bears fans have to just like buckle up for and remember is that like everybody wants to win as fast as you possibly can, especially with teams like the Bengals rising from the ashes so quickly these past couple of years. It's going to take some freaking time now. Like it just is because the previous regime did draft Justin Fields, who I think we all believe has immense potential, but they did not draft and surround Justin Fields with a bunch of great pieces besides that. They've got some big contracts on the books for guys that maybe or maybe aren't part of the future going forward. And so, like, it's going to take some time now for Ryan. I, I, I believe that. But I know we always say everybody's a, oh, there we go, Kyler Gordon, uh, a quarterback out of Washington who love him as well. Uh, Trent McDuffie, the other Washington quarterback, goes in the first round of the Chiefs. Kyler Gordon never allowed a college touchdown pass, so really, really solid player. Uh, it's like a good size here as well, uh, nearly 200 pounds. I like the player a lot, and we talk about filling a need. This right here would be a player that fills a need for the Chicago Bears. See that highlights. I uh, see the clips of him right now. So um, checks a box right away. And I think we'd have, have a chance to start opposite of Juwan Johnson almost right away. I like his size. Um, he's a guy that it shows up on film that he's very comfortable playing man coverage. And I just like how physical he is and what he opposing. Uh, what he opposes, but Johnson being the opposite of him, I think that was a home run hit for the Chicago Bears mm. because he came in and he did a great job his rookie year. Had a decent year last year, but see, I want to touch on this offensive line situation for the Bears because this is a team who gave up 58 sacks last year. That was the most mm. in the NFL. And when you do have a franchise guy, we have seen in years past, because they don't have that protection, it can derail um, and 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 put their progression at a halt. Yeah. So I do feel like at some point the Chicago Bears, they're going to have to address this offensive line. And I think one of the problems that they had in the past is that no one was in unison with one another. Like you had a group over here saying we're going to do this, another guy, too many voices, mm-hmm. and, and, and not just one strong voice saying this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to defeat the Blitz. And some of that, too, is on the quarterback. Not saying everything is Justin Fields' fault. You have to be able to get the ball out on time and not sit there and hold it because this league is so different and these defense alignment are running. We've seen Trayvon Walker run a 4-5-1. Jordan Davis ran, what, a 4-7-8. <laughs> you have defense still, alignment I like that I still don't running. think that's real. That's a different ball game now, so you're going to have to get that ball out on time, and, and you, these guys are going to have to work together in doing it, though. You know, it's, it's going it's to take some time now. Again, like, I think the, the dilemma that the Bears are facing right now, this is, my, this is not Ryan Tumman, this is my own like, interpretation, is that people want them to fill those three needs we just talked about, wide receiver, cornerback and offensive line the only way that you can like potentially fill all those with premium players this year is by like using significant draft capital in future years to get higher up in the draft order like do you think Bears fans like do you really want them to like would you prefer they traded a 2023 first to move up to like pick 35 in this year's draft no. like I can you give you I that. can give you the fan voice yes because yeah. I'm irrational right correct <laughs> so <laughs> now. Um, what's the last part again yeah, because candy, what? candy now to continue <laughs> with the irrational and, candy yeah. and also I'm, irrational. I'm a fan to right. that point remember this isn't Chicago's only pick in the second round they have another pick they have another one part of the Khalil Mack trade yeah so right so, they, they well you had to throw like Khalil Mack's name in it. I'm oh, sorry I mean, that still hurts uh he's not with the Raiders anymore I'm just joking. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. Uh, no, but I think if you're the Bears, you're looking at it like there, there's going to be more opportunity. And I said this a million times yesterday. I feel like it's a shock game now. Like every time I say, hey, there's still wide receiver depth, there's still wide receiver depth, right? So it is. like if they want a wide receiver, I have no problem like waiting the board out a little bit on, on that to Field's point of, of the needs that they have. And 
sometimes you also got to look at it, like I said earlier, you know, don't reach for a quarterback just because you need a quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure how they've evaluated these offensive linemen that are left on the board. So if you think yeah. the best value for you and somebody can contribute is better at corner, you go corner. Now, what is interesting to me is the next two picks. One is already in, but Seahawks go back to yeah. back. And you got – like, that's just rare to see a team go back-to-back. -back. Don't you think we learn something about the quarterbacks if, if we don't see one come off the board in the next few picks? We do. So here's yeah. my question yep. is that, like, if the Seahawks don't take a quarterback right now, how long until one of those guys goes off the board? Like Malik Willis or, or Desmond Ritter or Matt Corral? How long? Because I mean, if you're I'm looking old, at – yeah, the Seahawks, then the Colts, the Giants. I mean, I mean the Colts, Colts could Colts take, take one. Yeah. But, like, if you're in the, you're saying to yourself, all right, so, like, all three of these guys are still here. Maybe one of them could slide through the cracks to our next pick as well. Is it worth just waiting this out? Like, like even oh, if you don't we really need stuff, right? Like we need other things on this roster. You do. You need. Well, from, we don't think about the Lions, though. The Lions. I guess my question with the Lions would be that, like, if they weren't, uh, at some point you have to decide. Like, if you're not convicted earlier on a quarterback, and I've always said this about quarterbacks in the draft, is that if you are. Like, quarterbacks are, like, are like real. I don't want to commoditize them. But it's like when you go out and buy a house. Like, when, if you're not sold on it at X amount of money, like, you might be sold on it at, like, two-thirds of that cost. And that's where it's going to be with these quarterbacks. But that's where I think the, the, the dynamic is going to be in play here soon enough. Um, yeah, like, Because it, Detroit doesn't want to pick these guys at 34 or whatever it was, that they, or 32, their last pick. Like, then, all right, you know, like, maybe we feel comfortable with that at 55. But... Man. I, I thought you were going to say that they were like a quarterback. If this is the pick that I think it is, yard, I wish yard, we had a camera on me. Oh, Boye no. Mafe. Oh, Boye Mafe, really good player right here. Yes. Liked him a lot. Yeah. Spencer, I got really good player, and I got uh, – You don't like it? I'm, I'm on Spencer's side, too, because I – Well, the, the film kind of it, – it, it's weird. I think this is more of a potential in what he can be okay. yeah. pick because I thought he got – Threw around a lot when I watched his tape. Okay. Yeah. And I was wondering, because when a lot of people had him as a first round guy, I, when I turned the film on, the first thing I, I asked myself is why? But then when you see his measurables, you know why. Yeah. But it, mm -hmm. for me, it wasn't just clearly on his film. Consistency. Like sometimes you would show up and you'd want to see Godzilla mm. and, and you'd get Barney the dinosaur, right? Yeah. Like you would just get, <laughs> there were just inconsistencies in his games. And sometimes you got Godzilla. Yeah. And that's what they're trying. <laughs> that's so he only for. has the dog in him sometimes? That's boop, the boop. thing. Yeah, no, it's, it's, he doesn't get, he doesn't get. <laughs> Who let the there, dogs out? There were some the things on treasure. film that, that I seen like old linemen do to him, and, and I'm like, yo, at some point you have to get up and slap him in the face or something. Right. Like, I can't believe you just allowed that to happen. And, and I think that's consistency. That's yeah. all consistent, because the potential is there. It's just you didn't always get what you were showing up for. Yep. So, Field, counter this, because you you started I like this. him. I thought he had a really good pre-draft process. I think he's a really good athlete. I thought he had, I mean, obviously he had his best season in college his last year. So, I think there's a, uh, a chance that uh, Boye Mafe has been pretty good. And Seattle's always been, like, a toolsy, uh, you know, like, we're going to go for the upside type of player. I'm in on Boye Mafe. I really am. And Seattle, last offseason, went big in trying to reshape their pass rush. They added Kerry Hyder. They added Carlos Dunlap, amongst others. They cut both of those guys. They're, I'm not – excuse me, not Kerry Hyder. Um, yes, Kerry Hyder. Sorry, I'm tucking myself into circles here. Both of those guys were eventually cut, so they kind of are doing that again. And they've got much younger. Certainly, Boye and Mafia helped that. So, the Seahawks have made another Has pick. Has to be a quarterback here, right? You guys ready to let the dogs out? Let's let them out. Come on. Oh, okay. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a satchel. Uh, and it is. Ooh. Hey! Man, I just love, like, Kenneth Walker <laughs> the third. Where is Mina? I want to see Mina's oh, face oh expression. I, 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 I disagree with Todd McShay. And I will say that because Todd's not in the room and I'm not scared to say that. <laughs> Todd said, essentially, when I talked to him about him last time, that the next time Kenneth Walker the third pass blocks will be the first time that he pass protects. Like, there are some questions about his pass protection. I don't give a damn. I'm just telling you, I watched a lot of Michigan State football this year with the college football work I do for ESPN. You were talking about somebody that ran his butt off and was overused and never stopped. And, yeah, he went left and right a lot, but he did that because he had nothing in front of him. I, I think Kenneth Walker is one of the most underappreciated people in this year's draft. I think he is a star, and he is going to be a megastar in the NFL. I was at the Michigan and Michigan State game, and we were on the sidelines watching that game, and he single-handedly beat the Michigan Wolverines by himself. I love the way he makes guys miss in space, and not just in space, but in the hole. 
whether you barely have space, we call it the foxhole. If you're a running back and you can't win your one-on-one -on -one matchup with a, with a defenseman or, or, or a guy trying to tackle you, the NFL is definitely not for you because you can't, it's humanly impossible to get everybody blocked. But in the foxhole, he's able to make people miss. He's strong, but then when he got on the open field, he finished the runs with touchdowns. And then sometimes you see him lowering in the boom. So I love this young man at, at, at the running back position. I was hoping he was still there for another team, but hey, the Seahawks got him. I, and there were a couple of games where he was limping off to the sidelines, and three plays later, mm -hmm. he was one leg dragging himself into the end zone. I, My first reaction here is... I think Chris Carson's time may have run its course in Seattle. Mm. They re-signed Rashad Penny to a one-year deal, so that's a one-year deal. Like, I'm not going to go, like, if a guy's in a one-year deal, it, that does not mean that that, that, that position is, is filled. Like, that's a, like, that can still be a need. Chris Carson going into the final year of his contract as well. Maybe there is something there. I'd keep my eyes on that one in, in Seattle. His, his health has been a concern, obviously. Um, this is a reminder, though, that, like, the draft is not just about today's needs. It's about tomorrow's needs as well. And that's what this pick reminds me of. Yeah, it's also, by the way, about personality fit. Guess what you just gave Pete Carroll? You gave him a running back that he can use like it's 1992 all yeah. over again. Hey, oh, now, that's good all point. day. Now, I will say it, it this is. about pass protection. He, he's going to have to pass protect now. Mm -hmm. You can't be one-dimensional because now you're giving offensive tips to the defense. Okay, he's in the game. Pretty sure it's not going to be a pass play. How do we so think Mina's feeling, though? Like, is Mina get, like, oh, I, like, Mina's, every time, the they, like, they, every time to... they draft a running back, I feel like Mina sort of collapses and says, another yeah. running back yeah, in the it draft. Was time. Like, mm -hmm. it was time. I mean, because I don't think Drew Locke's a guy. Like, I, I've watched a ton of Drew Locke film, and <laughs> it, is, it, it, is, it bothers me. It, it really does. Uh, a lot of the frustration from their receivers, Jerry Judy, a young guy, KJ Hamler, um, Noah Fant. This feels you, you, personal. You see a lot of you see <laughs> like you see a lot of frustration in body language on the field because of the lack of uh, Drew Locke's play and not reading things the correct way. And based on coverages, you you will watch that film knowing the ball should go to the right hand right side of the field, but he's looking left and trying to throw left. So I, I'm I'm interested to see. I, they can't be sold on Drew Locke, or do they have plans to get Baker Mayfield? once he becomes available. But again, this speaks to this quarterback class. Like, they're not going to pick again until the eighth pick in the third round as it currently sits. And they they look to the quarterbacks available, and all of them on not named Kenny Pickett are available. And they were like, nah, we're good. Like, I got to stop throwing. I'm throwing a lot of shade on here today. Well, no, but you, gotta, say, you, you say that like it's a problem. I think you already got an offensive game plan. It's Kenneth Walker. Yeah. Guess what it was at Michigan State? It was Kenneth, Kenneth Walker, Walker, right? Yep. We're going to make things easy. We're going to solve problems for Drew Locke. Yeah. We yeah. do have a trade. Indianapolis has traded the yep. 42nd Vikings pick. Vikings are now up 42. You kind of wonder, like, what, at what point what's are you like, in? what do they need? What do they need? What's, what's happening here? What do they? Do you know what they gave up yet, Field? I don't know yet. I'll find okay. out in about 30 seconds here for you, Fitz. But uh, you wonder what Minnesota has targeted. Uh, 42 and 122. Yeah. I do know that picks 42 and 122 are going. Um, Can we just acknowledge what in the hell is happening over here? He's got to keep his energy up. Right. No, but here's the weird thing. Like, Harry, Harry chugs honey like honey. half my friends take down Jack honey. Daniels, honey, and honey. he still has, like, abs on abs on well, abs. He's got, he's got a very high metabolism and very <laughs> low body fat. It's cold. He's got to keep the fires burning. I mean, this is. This okay. Is, Mm -hmm. my, my guy drinks like 87 sprites a day, and, and, yeah. and then yeah, like they do it. Take that look, yeah, it. like he's got that. All, like, uh, athletes, just, athletes. Have, here's a secret: athletes have terrible diets. They just eat all kinds of garbage. You know what? I would drink a sprite before the game. Mm -hmm. We would go in at halftime. I would drink a sprite at halftime, and then immediately after the game, po before post-game interviews and stuff, I would drink like two more sprites. Uh, by the way, were you drinking Sprite last night at the club that you didn't invite me to? No, you were. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. You know, I don't drink. Yeah. I, I don't. I didn't drink any alcohol. Yeah, no. they're just Sprite. You were drinking Sprite. At the oh, that's all, that's all. Okay. Bottle like the service. waitress, by the way, she <laughs> thought it was kind of weird. She was like, "Do you want something to drink?" And I told yeah. her on numerous cool. occasions. I wouldn't yeah. know. No, I do not want anything to drink. I just want Sprite or water. <sighs> I don't even. I got nothing. Minnesota's on the clock. Here's the picks. We should Minnesota been. trades 53, 77, and 192. The Colts have traded 42 and 122. So the Colts uh, add a pick. Uh, the Vikings subtract one pick, but they have moved up to 42. Um, so looking back on last night, the Vikings got a safety in Lewis Seen from Georgia. They stayed at 12. I really think a lot of people pick. suspected they could be in the market for a corner. That remains in need in my estimation. Uh, beyond that, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Mina, Mina Kimes, by the way, tweeting out pictures 
of what looks like tears? Are we, are we, are we crying? <laughs> it's close. It looks like agony. That okay. looks like agony. Looks like agony. I, I, I feel that, Mina. I, I, uh, I feel that. Friend of the show. Uh, we, Mina was with us last night. Go check it out on uh, YouTube and uh, check out some of her great analysis there. I'm, I'm happy she's not on air to have to live this moment in person. Like, I, I get that. Like, I get that. It's quarterbacks, man. I just don't get it. Like, they're not good. No, but right. I, no, do, I right. do have a question. Right. For, I do have a question for you, Field, though. Because you said earlier, like, you know, sometimes you got to look at it and say, well, is it possible you're sitting in the room now and you're like, look, I never thought Malik Willis would be here, but we're stupid not to take him even if we didn't love him? Like, yeah. I mean, do you reach a point in the room where you're like, ah, screw it, let's take Malik? There is an upside to this, and it's a player-centric upside, which is, yeah, I'm not going to get the money that I might have gotten higher up, but my expectations are going to be lower, the timetable's going to be slower, and I'm going to be able to develop at my own pace and get taken by an organization that doesn't feel pressure to validate that investment or over-investment and reach that you gave me. This could be really good for one of them. And you can be picked in the second round and still be one of the best quarterbacks in the entire league, Derek Carr. Oh, uh, there we go. I just got that in. <laughs> just got that in for you. The pick is in for the Vikings. We're waiting to see who it is. We will tell you as soon as we know. It is coming across the board as we speak. Harry Douglas, Spencer Hall, Field Yates. I'm Jason Fitz. Dominique Foxworth also with us. We are live in Las Vegas for the 2022 NFL Draft. You can also watch it, of course, on ESPN and the NFL Network. We'll be with you through every pick today in this glorious studio hanging out. So don't go anywhere. Just uh, put your feet up, have a Sprite like I mean, Harry you is. You can go somewhere. You're just going to regret it. Yeah, well, or, <laughs> or take us with you on your phone. Like, I mean, that's the easy uh-huh. thing. Like, that's part. Like, you know, we're here for the kids. You yeah. know, the kids like watch the phones these no days. Regrets. Yeah, yeah. No regrets. No regrets. My daughter is only three, but she's already speaking, can also change the channel on TV. It's, she's prodigious. <laughs> um, you know what her first words were? Well, hmm. We were on the air. We actually took her on a, on a flight. And at the, end, at the end of the flight, everybody got up. And she was like, Dad, why is everybody standing up as if we can all get off the airplane right now when we literally can't go anywhere? <laughs> I was like, you just said that. that. That was, wow. That is impressive. That was, I mean, I was caught off guard, but I agree with her. What a great point she made, did, right? Did her voice sound anything similar to yours in is that she, uh, She's slightly higher pitched. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah. Just baby I'm talk. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to, you know, just ask the tough questions. <laughs> Journalistic integrity, I think, is how Field described me yesterday. By the yeah. way, we're still waiting on these picks. Yeah. Like, sometimes the pick will be in, and then whoever is announcing it, well, and they deserve this moment, right? But sometimes the moment they're taking is like a moment. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 I mean, well, I have your attention, please. In about 45 seconds, I'm going to name who this team is selecting. In the meantime, <laughs> I am up here right now, and it is wonderful to be in Las Vegas. Have you guys been over to, I don't know, wherever Fitz hangs out? I'll be the Jets fans. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and here we go. Oh, uh, they're coming out and talking to him now. They're just telling him to move. Like, on, oh, didn't know where. Oh, <laughs> he, didn't know. he did not know where. They're telling him to wrap it up. Enough of the nonsense, sir. <laughs> we need, the, uh, we need to like think the, the Oscars. That's like a <laughs> big, like, like hook pulling Isn't the Oscars. Like, uh, at the Oscars, like the prompter just says things like. I'm uh, pretty sure he just said. Send him back to the nursing home. How about home. that right in? I guess that's why they call it Sin City. Send uh, him back to the uh, home. Uh, oh my God! <laughs> they almost sent the Sandman after Ed Marinero. Oh that's my amazing. God. Oh, Andrew Booth Jr. is finally the pick corner out of Clemson. Wide receiver one, why do you like this guy so much? Well, I like this guy because he can play zone coverage. He can play press coverage. Not only that, he played in a dynamic system um, under his defensive coordinator there at Clemson, who's now the head coach at Oklahoma. When you look at this guy, you talk about one-on-one tackling in space. I think he may be one of the best defensive players in tackling in in one-on-one space. When you see guys try to block him, whether it's an offensive lineman, whether it's a receiver, whether it's a tight end, he does not get blocked. You talk about attitude and effort, that's something that I am not going to coach as a coach. I'm not going to coach your attitude and your effort. This young man has it. But I I also love um, the people he went against while he was at Clemson, right? Then he played with other guys that's that's doing great things in the National Football League right now, A.J. Terrell. Uh, He... he, I just like him. He, he's long. I like to, like the way he gets in and out of breaks. It, this is one of my favorite corners uh, in this draft, Andrew Booth Jr. And I'm surprisingly, he's going in the second round. I thought he would have went in the first. But Minnesota, who Patrick Peterson, I think, is on a one-year deal. They still have Dantzler. Um, they draft Xene. You have Harrison Smith. So I think this is a good fit for him, too. Yeah, Booth really good at attacking, point of catch. That's been a strength of his. Yep. Long, uh, played in, obviously, high pedigree. Defense, I think the big question on some of these ACC defensive backs. All right, we're going to give Field a little breather. He gets a little time. They got Marrow? The Giants are on the clock. (laughs) 
Dominique Foxworth going to come in and join us. The, the, the Wolf Pack is changing a little bit. Feel going to get a breather, what and we are with you for every single there? pick. And the, the, uh, the, the Giants on the clock. And the pick is already in for the yes! They wasted no time taking Wendell Robinson, the wide Ooh, receiver, Wanda. out of Kentucky. This tells me Wanda, that sorry. Kadarius Tony is out. should be <laughs> traded because out, they are the be. same type of players. Oh, Small, fit. shifty, um, give them screens, hand the ball off to them. So Kadarius Tony not being at OTAs, uh, off-season trainer right now, uh, is big for the Giants. And his name came up in trades. Not necessarily 100%, but you heard the chatter. This pick confirms to me that they might be getting rid of Kadarius Tony. Uh, look, if Dominique just sits down, we barely let you get settled in. I don't know if I, hanging if, out with I, us. if I'm sitting down or I'm sitting up. Yeah, like, I mean, Phil, Phil was out here fooling y'all. I mean, I'm sitting in this chair. <laughs> he got this thing at the top level. Oh, that's amazing. I feel like I'm 6'7 in this thing. <laughs> How high can you go? Oh, Tom? yeah, I, I know how to fix it. I just wanted to make fun of Phil. No, 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 no. How high can you go, Tom? That is fact. Uh, there we go. Now that feels right. Get my legs under this thing. What you talking thing. about? Jitterbug. Uh, this is about Jitterbug yeah, right Yeah, so here. those are the type of receivers that I hated to cover the most. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I swear to you, I'd rather go up against a 6'5", 210-pound guy because you can you can make a play on that because they can never get away from you. This guy, you can never be close to him. And that's the type of play. And you, you mentioned Tony. It seems if you're going to get this type of player to go into that system, you're trying to place a similar type of player and I think they're going to move on from him. Yeah, and the Giants and draft continues to look great. Intangible coming out of Kentucky where he did have to carry the, the role of game breaker and had the timing to do it by the way. Go back and look at his tape. Every single one of those plays, not only long plays, plays when Kentucky needed them and plays which broke the game open, right? Yeah. He's the kind of dude who I know that the tangibles are nice and we have good stats on him, right? He is tiny. He is 5'8 coming down the stairs, right? Like yeah. he is not a tall dude. But the thing that he can do, he is a backbreaker. Uh, real quick, we got a trade coming in. Cleveland now on the on the clock. They have traded uh, pick 44, I should say, to Houston, it looks like. So uh, Cleveland, uh, it looks like, is on the clock here. So uh, we'll get to details on that trade as we get more information. Uh, but I, I love the way your face lit up because I think one of the things sometimes when we think Kentucky, sometimes there's a brand bias for a lot of people yeah. that, that realize that Kentucky might not be a great, steady college football program in the mind of some. They had a very explosive offense this year that really moved the ball well. So I think this is sort of a sign of where Kentucky football has come. And uh, there's a moment of tip of the cap to what he's been able to accomplish in that offense. Well, additionally, you know, credit to Will Levis. He's a fine college quarterback, but he's going to have a better delivery system, so to speak, in the NFL. All right. Mm -hmm. The idea you would hope one would hope. <laughs> yeah. All right. But um, not necessarily guaranteed. Uh, but Wandale's going to get great framing. If he's playing against a big receiver, oh, that's going to be real fun. If you have somebody who can draw a double team, if you have somebody who can push coverage off, because then he'll wreak havoc underneath. Yeah. So the, the Texans system, have already put Brian their – Brian Dable, though. Brian Dable, uh, what did he do at Buffalo? Got that ball out quick, out. let those receivers out. run on those screens, man, and make plays and use that yak, yards at the catch, that yak ability. So I think – his head coach and the guy who's going to be calling the plays are going to play towards his strengths, too. Yeah, he's also part of a team at Buffalo that built around the strengths of a quarterback in a very smart way. Yep. And if you're Daniel Jones, you're looking at it saying, just get me help. Texans move up. They trade with Cleveland. Their pick is already in. The Texans have had a solid, steady draft so far through this process. We've talked a little bit about that. Uh, they took Petrie earlier. So where do the Texans look like they need to go right now? I mean, N'Kobe Dean, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I, I'm shocked he's still available. I understand the size concerns. But you so know fast. one thing that you can always <laughs> – I'm just, so I'm just waiting for the fast. people to come back and appreciate. Look at Not that at the thing. table, Carlos. Look at it. Yes, it Look yes. at and it. who says size matters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, N'Kobe is – that. Uh, apparently the NFL says size matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because N'Kobe Dean, that's the only reason why you could say that he's sliding. He is uh, maybe one of the smartest players I've ever seen. And I always you, – you see how play action has become more and more part of everyone's offense. And, frankly, it's the – like the foundation of so many offenses in the NFL as we all move towards Shanahan-style offenses. If you have a linebacker that is not going to get fooled, it will save you a lot of time. And you notice that Kyle Shanahan system, they have a linebacker out there in Fred Warner who is incredibly athletic and doesn't get fooled. I believe Kyle Shanahan looks for those guys because he knows how easy it is to pick on them. Linebackers are not accustomed to reading uh, or having that much pressure put on them in the passing game. And a guy like N'Kobe Dean, who will never be wrong, rarely misses tackles, and uh, is just explosive. Like his short arms, his height, 
I'll deal with all that if, you, if you're not out there getting spun like a top every time the quarterback puts the ball out. And that's, that's a, a valuable thing. And, so I think the, he's a guy. the ability of being able to guard a running back out of the backfield, right? That's mm-hmm. one of the things when we're in Atlanta and Reggie Bush was at the running back positions coming out running those choice Whew. routes or Darren Sproles. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you, you, that's what, another reason why linebackers are smaller so they can guard those guys. Uh, coming out of that backfield that can hit you. Also, to your point, Dominique, like the more multiple offenses get, the more multiple defenses have to get to react to them. Intelligent players have to matter. The Texans' pick is in. I do have to wonder, they don't have a set answer at quarterback. I know that they did draft one but last year, but, you know, they don't have a set answer. Do they just take a flyer? No, they do not. They get a weapon. John Mechie, the third wide receiver out of Alabama, a wide receiver who, gentlemen, his narrative changed large during the season, right? We came into the year, and it was all about Mechie. And by the end of the year, it was all about everybody but Mechie. So, Harry, what have you seen in him? So, when you look at John Mechie the third, and, and then you look at Alabama receivers, you're used to seeing explosive, explosive, explosive. Not saying that he's slow. You just don't see the top-end speed like you see with all the other guys. But what you do get is a guy that's consistent. Right? He's going to go into that slot, make those tough catches. He can play outside. Uh, one of the things I do love about the Alabama system is that their offensive coordinator, uh, O'Brien, came from an NFL background, so they run those type of plays. So when he gets to the next level, it's not going to be foreign to him. But he was a guy that I like in between the numbers and hashes, but if you need him to go outside, he can go outside and make plays too. Struggled a little bit this year uh, with, uh, I'll say, bad drops. Not looking the football in, but I thought it was more so due to over volume uh, because he had to play a lot more this year and not focusing as much. But I like this pick and I like this receiver. I mean, real quick, a, real ahead. quick. Cleveland received 68, 108, and 124 in exchange oh. for 44. 68, 108, 124. Go ahead, Spence. I mean, it says compliment. That's an old man receiver. Yes. And, yeah. And I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I need, change, I need to change more. Yeah. Correct. That's who I'm going to. Correct. This is this is Renfro level game in terms of mm-hmm. you may not think I'm going to get open, mm-hmm. but all of a sudden I've used two or three pieces of technique to get wide open to move the chain. Right, can we take a second to appreciate not only how wonderful your shirt is, but oh, how you. incredible. Yours is nice. Man. Oh, thank you. How incredible <laughs> that comp is. We so often get, I think, stuck on comps based on like physical appearance. These guys don't look like each other, obviously. Mm-hmm. But you're very right. I would have never made that comp, but that's exactly right. And the old man route running is, it reminds me of like you play basketball with old guys. They don't have the explosive um, or the athleticism to get things done. So they find crafty ways. And I think that speaks to his intelligence as a player because I imagine in high school he was the best athlete out there. So he was doing what he wanted to do. But now he had to realize if he's going to find a way to produce without, like, game-breaking athleticism, he has to. And that's the type of thing that lasts for a long time. And that's something that you can – you feel – you feel like will translate when you get to the NFL. Which is – Part of, I think, a patient process for the Texans because we have to look at what they have versus where they think they're going to be. And this comes back to that quarterback thing I keep saying. If you don't love the quarterbacks and you don't even love your quarterback, at least to next year's quarterback class the gift right. of making everything around whoever you're going to get next. Like, I fully expect the Texans to be in the quarterback market next year. Right. So at least make the rest of the weapons around him better. So, you know, I don't know that I can look at the quarterback and expect an explosive rookie season from Mechie, but if he gives him a better building block for next year, right. that feels like a win for everybody. Uh, and I, I do think they, they owe Davis Mills. I mean, a no shot. one owes you anything in this league, but Davis Mills showed enough considering the circumstances and considering the draft is out there to not bring somebody in and to give him – a fairer shake, but next year, you're right. If they're at the top of the draft again and one of these guys that we're talking about is out there, sorry, Davis, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got to go. And, yeah. and we're, for, lasted. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody just joining us, the reason we're having that conversation about quarterbacks is that they're all still available. Other yeah. than Kenny Pickett, everybody is still on the board. It's the ESPN NFL Draft live stream. Harry Douglas, Jason Fitz, Spencer Hall, Dominique Foxworth. You can check every single pick out. Field Yates is also with us today. We'll be here all the way to the end, and you can watch us, hang out with us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, the ESPN app, all those places. Uh, At the same time, you can watch the draft on ESPN, of course, and on the NFL Network. So 
We're live in Vegas. Shout out and thanks to everybody at the Bet and da Daily Wager Studio for letting us take over their room as the uh, the Real Caesars Palace is directly behind us. No, the hangover references have not stopped today, Dominic. I mean, I, I feel like we've crossed the point. So originally the hangover ref references were annoying, and then they got a little funny. Then they got annoying again. We're back in funny zone. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're back yeah, in funny no. zone. I, I got we're Spencer's back in funny device. zone. I asked Spencer, I said, is it too much? And he said, no, no, no. Now you've run it into the ground to the point <laughs> yes. that it's a thing. I'm, I'm going full letter. Uh, Oh, the man. Ravens pick is in, by the way. Uh, also, you can watch the draft. I agree ABC. with the Ravens picks already. Whatever already? it is. I mean, yeah, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Awesome. Uh, you know it's right. Yeah. They, they they're, never... just, they're just here to rock. Oh, Good job. We go. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. Ravens. David yeah, you did it. Here we go. Uh, out of Michigan, the, the linebacker, David Ajabo, is the pick here. And this is somebody, guys, that, I mean, I think <laughs> there's been a little bit of overshadowing to his work because of the hype on Aiden Hutchins. Yeah, in fact, actually, like, when I was watching Michigan this year, this is the dude who popped for me. Yep. Right? Because Aiden Hutchinson, he's so big, you could notice the flaws in his game pretty easily. And it kind of took the spotlight off somebody who was, in my mind, uh, as disruptive for much of the season as Aiden Hutchinson in his own way. I... I love this dude, like a handful, a mess. If you pair him with anybody of any talent on the other side, it's going to be an issue. He had a sack fumble against Michigan State mm -hmm. that I think they call the quarterback's knee down. That if they don't call that play a knee down, that game Michigan State never comes back for because that was right before halftime. But it's funny because you see um, uh, Aiden Hutchinson and you see a David Ajabo, but it wasn't just Hutchinson. Ajabo right. was right there with him. Play after play after play. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think his motor is like Aiden Hutchinson. Nope. But I think they complemented one another very, very well. And, I mean, he, he slid in part because of the comparison to Hutchinson, but also in part because of injury. Yep. And so, like, he's not yes. going to – yeah, he blew out his Achilles. He's not going to be um, – He's not going to give them what they need immediately, but he is going to grow into something, and it's a you have to look at it this way when you have that, but there's an opportunity for him to really learn and grow and work and become a smarter player. He also, by the way, should be noted, hasn't played a ton of football, not just because of the injury. He found football late. So you're talking about somebody that even he admitted in the combine process that he has a lot to learn. Stunning to me, though, when you look at his combine numbers, and I want to make sure I get it right because I don't want to credit uh, discredit anybody their speed. I believe he ran a 4.55. So you talk about just the <laughs> speed of somebody that's 250 pounds and uh, is able to, yeah, he weighed in at 250 and ran a 4.5540. So I, nah. play, I play with a guy that's yeah, kind of similar to him, uh, Brian Arakbo, who didn't uh, play football a lot growing up yeah. and yeah. was a late bloomer, uh, won a national championship at Texas, was a first-round draft pick at the time to the Washington Redskins, now the Washington Commanders. Uh, but I, I love this pick for the Ravens, and they never seem to disappoint, Dom. The Lions. You know that. You play for the organization. I mean, they, 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 they especially do a good job finding corners in free agency. I'll the, say that. The Lions uh, pick <laughs> is in. Let's, wow. The Lions pick is in. Uh, but you're right. I will say, uh, before we get this Lions pick, or as we get it, to your point, there are certain organizations that you just look at it afterwards, you're like, how did they get all of that right? Every year. And this is just another one of those examples where – they're getting great players. Uh, oh, Josh Pascal uh, is the defensive end out of Kentucky, has been selected by the Detroit Lions. So uh, getting a little bit of a run here on pass rushers. We knew the pass rushers would be a big part of this draft. Uh, he's somebody that uh, felt like he was a bit of a riser for some people, uh, obviously out of Kentucky. Uh, so what do you guys think? The, this is a like just a straight-up bulldozer. Like if you, if you have any sort of critiques on him, it's that – he was so good moving that way in a straight line that he's going to have to develop way more technique and way more moves off the edge. But in terms of power, he's super impressive. Kentucky gets all of these dudes, by the way, who are just, yeah, I'm going to get there in a straight line. every time. <laughs> Look at that, like that. Just persistence, drive, consistent effort, and the kind of dude who I think if he, you know, goes to the NFL school of awesome moves. And yeah, look at this. He did get a big man TD. I can't hate that. Go that's ahead. Two, that's two guys on the defensive line, though. And Aiden Hutchinson and now Josh Paschel. Mm -hmm. And you can just see what, what the foundation they're trying to build there. Because I, I honestly believe the Detroit Lions in the future can probably be a team that we, we're going to talk about. Yeah. Not right now, but... The way the games that they lost last year, mm -hmm. it's a ton of games that they should have won. Yeah, they were they competitive. Lost. They were competitive yes. against good teams exactly. with a quarterback that none of us think is a franchise quarterback at this point. And you said last night that this could be the draft that turns around the yeah. Lions. We all laughed about it, but in all seriousness, Aiden Hutchinson, Jamison Williams, like, you looked at it, you're like, hey, they did right. some things. And Does this Williams add to that? was big because this, the lack of 
Uh, I say wide receiver produ productivity mm -hmm. for this team was huge too. So moving up to get a Jamison Williams, now it might not be the pick that he wanted. He, he may not want to go to Detroit, yeah. but it I was mean, good for this team. And I, I think uh, to keep in uh, everyone's mind is blown with the athleticism of these players. This guy ran a four seven, so like he's <laughs> another one of these people who just ain't human. And it feels like the the edge class is a lot like the receiver <laughs> class. It feels like where it's just so much. Uh, just explosive, impressive athleticism that it feels like you can't miss at any point in this draft. And as for the Lions specifically, I think that this draft and what they've been doing there, they're building something special, they're getting strong, and they could be moving into a place where they're one of these teams next year or the year after. They're not, are not only looking to draft a quarterback, but could be a place where we see a quarterback force his way out the same way that Stafford forced his way to go out to win a championship and uh, with the Rams and Brady obviously did it down south. Matt Ryan's trying to do it now in Indianapolis. It's a new trend that's happening in the NFL and the the location has to be ripe for it. And I think that the the Lions in the next three to four years could be one of those places where people want to play. So when we like when you like things that people say at the poetry club, we snap fingers. If y'all agree with Dom, snap your fingers. <laughs> yeah, you I didn't know he was at the poetry club. I like that. Do, do I have to rhyme my takes from here on <laughs> no, out? No, no, no. You could. You okay, I thought I was just having you me freestyle. Start in like MC Dom. No, no, I, <laughs> I feel like we need some Push like You brought up Diet wine. Coke, so I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Like we need Yesterday's price <laughs> is not today's price. It's not. Mm -mm. Price, 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 The Washington price, price, price. Commander's <laughs> pick, by the way, is in at this point. Uh, things uh, sort of quiet for a moment uh, for the Washington Commanders in this draft. So, uh, you know, at, at this point, Mel's team needs wide receiver, guard, linebacker, corner, safety. Is there anything that pops out to anybody for the Commanders? I mean... Uh, quarterback. <laughs> yeah. I mean, quarterback. <laughs> yeah. Especially, like, right here in this draft. Like I don't want to do that. Quarterback position. Yeah. I don't, don't yeah. want to do that to that quarterback. You can't. You can't. You can't do that to that quarterback. The organization yeah. is a mess, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, just I, I just Carson Wentz, the, the start of, like, the Carson Wentz troubles like most yeah. people connected to them going to draft Jalen Hurts and so you're going to go yeah. do that again at another spot they can't yeah. do that to that man That's you better go nightmare. get a corner this don't get game a damn is not corner. for the week <laughs> well that, that, <laughs> this game is not for the week though <laughs> I feel you but you, you don't you don't make it a harder order you don't give them something else to worry about psychologically yeah he's gonna be you don't messed up, I mean man. the commanders went out and got ja Jahan Dotson in the first round yeah. and there's a weird sort of like pay no attention to the man behind the curtain moment here for the organization. There are so many things going on yeah. outside of football around the Washington Commanders right now that it's got to be hard for everybody in the building to just hunger down and focus on football. Like, that's just real. And if you're a fan, boy, you just want something right now that feels easy. Like, you want somebody that's easy to root for. You want somebody that you can get behind, and you want one minute, one day, where you don't have to deal with the ridicule that comes with everything around being a Washington Commanders fan. Because outside of football, off of the field, and you just look at everything else going on, it's tough to be a Washington fan today. Is N'Kobe Dean still there? Yep. Yeah. He's still there. I think this would be a good fit for yeah. him. Uh, especially with that defensive line, who I thought underperformed last yeah. year with high expectations coming in. Chase Sean, Deron Payne, Allen Sweat. Uh, you add a, a N'Kobe Dean to that, I think, I think that'll be a solid guy for him. Another big defensive player still on the board is Travis Jones out of UConn. A lot of mocks had yeah. him going in the first round. So we'll, we'll see. Got a couple of big there. Uh, some wide receivers still on the board just in general, obviously. And the quarterbacks are all still there. The, the pick is being announced as we speak. So we'll see how it comes through. Harry Douglas, Spencer Hall, Dominic Foxworth, I'm Jason Fitz, Field Yates also. And it's Fedarian Mathis, the, the, the Alabama, Alabama guy. Alabama. They're taking a, <laughs> taking a big guy out of Alabama. You like this? Yeah, I do because they already have two of them. I just named in uh, Payne and Jonathan Allen. So that system, that rapport between the Alabama connection is going to be there. And he has two guys that he can sit behind and rotate with and learn from. So I love this pick. Yeah, he can play multiple positions like every single Alabama player ever. <laughs> is, is apparently a 170 IQ when it comes to football and everything oh, else. Uh, absolute mutant. Some people will look at the lack of college production overall and think that means anything. Those people have not watched how deep Alabama is. Uh, they are getting a monster. That limited snap count, I think, is something like when you talk about Alabama and Georgia, what's being asked of those defensive guys is a little different. Got to make it tougher for a scout to figure out like how production matters versus like even rhythm. We talk about guys need a certain number of reps to get rhythm. You don't always get that in those situations. It makes it tougher, but it also makes it easier. Like I feel like I am not a big small school guy. 
I don't love drafting players from small schools. You know what you're getting when you get somebody from Alabama, LSU, Oklahoma. You know if they've had success there, you know that they are at least capable and competent. You know what the floor is. If you can get on the field on an Alabama defensive line, you could probably be able to play a few snaps Seems in the okay. NFL. Okay. But it's going to be all right. I am surprised. I mean, Travis Jones out of Connecticut, like I said, yeah, is somebody that a lot of people are in love with. Uh, Perry and Winfrey out of Oklahoma, a lot of people loved him too. So this is, well, again, I, we don't know perspective here. Like, they're all sort of bunched in. But there were other prospects that I thought would have gone before Fidelio Mathis. So yeah. I thought Travis would have gone before. He's a powerful um, guy. But I think that maybe uh, – some of the scouts are like me, and they're like, you know what? Well, I can trust this dude from Alabama. <laughs> uh-huh. And I would That's say right. that, that the commanders are showing a track record because I think Baltimore is a team that loves to go to Oklahoma. You get a lot, specifically offensive guys, they get them a lot from Oklahoma. And I was going to say the same thing about Washington, but then I realized – Every team in the league got four dudes on it from Alabama. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 at least. It Minimum. doesn't, it doesn't matter um, where you go. So, But, but, you, but you're getting players that you know are coachable. Yeah. Because if you don't have thick skin, because there's going to be numerous of occasions where mm-hmm. Nick Saban's going to curse you out. <laughs> Kirby Smart, if you're at Georgia, is going to curse you out. Yeah. So you got to be able to be coachable and take constructive criticism. And most of these guys that come from those schools, they're able to do that. you got to be able to take destructive criticism, too. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yes. they ain't always going to use the right words. The tongues get sharp. No, 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 no. <laughs> the Bears, by the way, the, are, the Bears are up. Their pick is in. We'll wait and see. Uh, where that goes, and this comes to a conversation we had earlier about the Bears that may want to get some weapons. There were a few options for how the Bears wanted to play it out. The Bears pick is in, and if the Bears were, frankly, thinking about wide receiver even as an option, as we discussed earlier, since their last pick, uh, Wandell Robinson, John Menchie Jr. are the uh, are the third, I should say, are the only two wide receivers that have been taken since I'm, then. I'm so surprised uh, Sky Moore still Wandell said. Robinson went before Scott Moore. Uh, so if they want a wide receiver... There's still one there, right? however that may play, which we sort of expected in the second round of the draft. The pick is about to be announced, and uh, we will let you know what it looks like when it comes in. Chicago making their pick now as we are flying, by the way, through the second round of the draft. Everybody Look at God. <laughs> Two days in a row. Won't he do it? But he does Chicago it every day. Brisker, safety out of Penn State is the next pick here. So the Bears go defense on this. Remember, earlier in this round, they also went with their secondary, taking Kyler Gordon. So two Secondary picks in the first or in the second round with their first two picks. Brisker coming in at safety. Yep, he's in just to tackle because I've seen him try to cover. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. He's, he's in to be in that box. Oh, uh, he plays in that hole. Um, oh, you know, wreak man. havoc. So when I do my scouting report on <laughs> the people on this show, I'm going to say that day two, Harry Douglas, <laughs> oh, day spicy. two, Harry Douglas come with the <laughs> spice. <laughs> yeah. See, the, the, we uh, left him in the fridge look, overnight. Look, look, so look all the neighbors highlights. Could really Most intensify. of them are about That's tackle. happened. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Made a play there, but hey. I mean, um, uh, not up in here. I had to get is, one uh, I'm going to be a little kind, um, which is rare. Um, he is a high variance player. Yeah, yeah. He is a high variance player. Big plays, big play potential, as you see here. Um, also, maybe not a guy who necessarily knows exactly where he is on the football field all the time. Good recovery speed, but he can also make big mistakes. The, I love the way you just said that. Like, you want to talk about buttering me up and making me feel good? <laughs> Like a high variance player. Like it's high, yeah. which makes me feel good. Variance is a fancy word, so I don't feel dumb with it. I'm a high variance player. I'm not wildly inconsistent or not always in the right spot. Uh-huh. I, and gentlemen, well, high you, variance. I but, love that. But I'll tell you yeah. that, like good. players like that with the right coaches can yeah. thrive and have great careers. I just don't want to see him going down against an athletic tight end and we're saying, hey, guard him, uh, Travis Kelsey, guard him man-to-man oh, or man. slot receiver and we're telling him to guard him man-to-man. You got to play towards his strengths. Like, he's good in, in, in space and making up areas that he probably is not supposed to be in and intercepting the ball like we just seen right there. But I don't want him coming down in the box if you stay base personnel right. and another team is in 11 right. and he's guarding a slot receiver. I don't oh, want to see oh, that. Oh, no, no. So this, I mean, I think we have to keep him. <laughs> no. I thought you were going to say come down and guard a tight end on play action, but you said <laughs> slot receiver and I got palpitations. I thought, that's stressful. Um, but, <laughs> you just say, come out. Yeah. No, not with, not with that young man. So, um, 
I think we have to be conscious of the fact that we are in to day two, or excuse me, yeah, we are in day two, but we're in the second round. And I think this is when you do take these type of high variance players. You're not, everyone's not going to get a star to slide to them. These guys are going to have bigger holes in their resume than other players. Um, high variance is very kind. Yes. However, if you apply that to other things, then it exposes how much of a negative thing it is. So, like, you don't mm -hmm. want to be a high variance husband. You, 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 might be, you might be one, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you may not. You don't real. aspire. Like, like if, if, if you overhear your wife talking to her girlfriends, you're like, well, he's high variance. <laughs> it, no, it, it, it doesn't go over well. You want to be consistent. Can, can, can I tell you what that usually gets expressed at and realize that you know him? <laughs> yes. that, you know. That's how they cover it up. How many no. strikes you don't go to a high variance restaurant? Uh. You're not like, hey, let's go to this steakhouse. It's high variance. <laughs> boy, when Volatile. it's good. Yeah, so, I mean, he could mature, and that's oh, something man. that we don't take into consideration also is that they're all they're very young. Young. And oh, the yeah. point you made earlier about now it's your job, it's kind of your job in college. I mean, it is, but you have other things going on. Yep. And also, you're not mature enough in many cases to focus the way that you need to focus. So once you get here, different things happen to different people in different situations. So and, he could turn into a star. And I'll, I'll turn that back to something Max Crosby said to me when we were sitting down and I was talking about being drafted in the fourth round. And I asked him, like, if he could go back and talk to teams and say, hey, you know, this is what you're missing about me. Like, what would you tell him so you'd be picked higher? And his answer was nothing. He said, I wasn't, I wasn't ready to be picked higher than I was. I, I, I should have been a fourth-round pick, and I needed that time to develop. Like, for a lot of these kids, and I, I think smart point Spencer made earlier, like, you're picked in the second round. The, the pressure difference is incredibly yeah. different. Like, there's a, a mm -hmm. bat, there's a moat between that, right? Yeah. So now you're a second round pick that maybe you got some upside, maybe you don't. Like, maybe you got some things to work on, but you're working on them in a real way where everybody's not suddenly throwing their pizza at you in New York saying, up yours, you didn't do the right thing. Like, it's a different world. Also, we're not expecting the Bears to be online this year, are we? We're not expecting them <laughs> to be 100% full steam. This is a good low pressure I situation. own you. <laughs> yeah. I own you. <laughs> it's, it's, I always own you. That lease will continue into this year. <laughs> yes. But that's going to be interesting, too, because <laughs> like, we're just sitting you're saying yeah, the Lions, like the Lions got better, right? The, and I'm not saying the Lions are suddenly a playoff team. Let's not be, yeah. let's not get it twisted. But the Lions got better. Mm. Uh, the, the Packers don't need to get better because all they ever do is win their division. Yeah. The, Vi the Vikings are, yeah, that's all I have to <laughs> okay. say about that. Sure. Um, I have one thing on the Lions, by the way. I've noticed this. Dan Campbell, familiar with like his build, yeah. how he looks? Yeah. Yeah, that's the man who's still pulling like four or five hundred on a deadlift, right? Like he's hitting. <laughs> He's hitting the gym regular creatine's a part of his diet. <laughs> Who are they picking on the line? I'm not saying they're the best pass rushers, right? Uh. Unless on defense, right? But both of those dudes, both of those dudes move weight. And I'm like, I kind of suspect Dan Campbell, once you get everything else, even it's like, what's, what, what's, he, what's he lifting? <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a pushing, deciding bro. factor. Yeah. You remember now, that clip? Name, your, pre, name oh, your pre workout. <laughs> <laughs> did the you pick take is a, in. Did you take your pre-workout today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you take All a right. dry? We, gotta, we, dry think, we yeah. might want to get him out of here. Yeah. <laughs> the pick is in for New Orleans. Uh, all the quarterbacks not named Kenny Pickett are still on the board. New Orleans just get, did just do a two-year deal with Jameis Winston. I, I, I want to stress that. But we're starting to reach that point in the draft where I feel like teams are looking around saying, I didn't expect him to be here. Like, But also, there's a real moment. For, for Malik Willis. Like, yeah. if you're sitting there and you're Malik Willis and you read the mocks and people had you going sixth, Ooh. and now you're sitting here in the middle of the second round, like, I, the human being I, in me has to just take a second and say, like, this really has to be hard for this kid and his family and everybody that supported him to get where he is. Like, it breaks my heart. It is. It's hard, but it's also motivation. And if anybody tell you uh, athletes don't use stuff like this as motivation, they're, they're a complete liar because they use things like this as motivation. But... He's probably saying to himself, I can't wait to get with somebody. Not that I can pro prove everybody wrong, that I can prove myself right in my mm. Will Also, the, Willis has done this before, yeah. right? Good yeah, recruit, goes Auburn. to Auburn, Auburn right? Doesn't, it doesn't work out there. Yep. He ends up, he has to take the long way around, transfer to Liberty. Like, I don't see that as being something that he's unaccustomed to or can't rise to. Yeah, yeah it's just got to be difficult. If, right if this is a N'Kobe Dean, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, Alante not, Taylor, oh. safety out of Tennessee. So the Saints go safety here, and uh, I, that, we all seem to be a little bit surprised. No, I'm not surprised by them going safety because they lost, lost Marcus yeah. Williams Let me say, yeah, and right. Malcolm Jenkins. With this they lost. Safety. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they, I mean, they are 
they seem to be a defensive, not seem to be, the talent of their team, the strength of their team is on the defense. They want to maintain that at this point. I guess they aggressively attack the offense earlier. I wouldn't have been surprised had they moved up and went for somebody like Kyle Hamilton to add to replace um, Marcus Williams, but they waited to the second day. I guess they trust this position, so we'll see what happens. I mean, he'll fit in well there. I think it's we always talk about how the context matters. I think it matters very much, particularly for a safety. He's going to go in here and be around a lot of veterans who can teach him the ropes. I think with his ability, he's going to be somebody who can play well for them. He's not going to be like a Pro Bowl game breaker, but I think he'll fit in. Late bloomer. And like he, that, he a lot to tell. Yeah, he came on. He came on late. Yeah. Like that's that's what you're looking at. So if if things look kind of iffy for him, they're projecting him upward and, and outward. It's not a guy who you look at and go, oh, yeah, that's a can't miss. No, this is definitely a developmental pick. It feels like there's been more safeties, in, like, because yeah. there was a real conversation that it was Kyle Hamilton and then not much, right? But we've seen a good run on safeties through this process. So, uh, you know, obviously now the, the Saints have Olave, Penning, and Elante Taylor. So I they've uh, – the run on – I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. that's a good draft. But I think the run on safeties speaks more to the change of dynamics of the league than it does to the talent – in this safety class. And uh, I think with the flexibility and the ability, or, or just the general emphasis on passing, you're going to have to have a lot of corners, have to have a lot of safeties. And we're seeing a lot more consistently, we're seeing more aggressive sub pack packages with more and more DBs on the field. And the DBs are being asked to do linebacker things on occasion, mm -hmm. safety things on occasion, corner things on occasion. So I think that explains it more than the talent because the talent hasn't changed. It is Kyle Hamilton and everybody else. I think but, the but Saints, I, go ahead. The Saints, uh, they were one of the teams who started out in the 11 personnel or sub personnel, mm -hmm. taking a linebacker out the game and C.J. Gardner-Johnson being that guy. But yep. we also see the last two years, why have the Saints been able to uh, match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who had elite talent as offensive weapons? They had the guys in the back end to be able to do it from the Marshawn safety position, Lattimore. from the uh, corner position. Mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes, though, you, when I look at the safety position, I think about what Dominique just talked about. It's one of the weirdest and most difficult transitions now that players are being asked to make. And, and I remind everybody to look at the damn calendar for a second. You get drafted, you have like three days to figure out how suddenly you're going to move your whole family to this city you know nothing about. And now about a month later, you're going to go into these OTAs where you got to learn a whole new playbook. And now, because of the way that we're running defense in the NFL, this kid that was one type of safety may be asked to play in three or four different places all of a sudden while they're learning the speed of the league. Like, it is a tough transition, and it's tougher than it gets credit for. That's why I love the Texans picking Petra, because he is versatile, because he plays in a very diverse defensive scheme that does a lot of things really, really well. Safety doesn't mean what it used to mean. It used to have what? Hammer and a rover, right? Yeah, Hammer right. and a rover. And now, when you have to have two, three, four, five DBs on the field all at the same time, it, the diversity of scheme, that diversity of experience is really what matters. Coming and out of I would say also about the safety, the way safe position changes is in many ways they're becoming the linebackers on the defense. The way we used to think about a middle linebacker as the one who makes the adjustments, makes all the calls. Like the pressure is on the safety more often than not because the linebackers are in and out. More often than not in modern defenses, the safety is the one who's calling out the adjustments based on the shifts and motions that you're seeing. The safety is the one who's making those decisions. So it's more and more pressure on these guys we have a trade the Patriots have traded with the Chiefs we'll get the details of that as soon as we can here in the meantime the Patriots are on the clock and their pick is already in the Patriots Damn. surprised a lot of people last night taking Cole Strange out of Chattanooga it felt like a strange pick you watch you watch <laughs> us all run to the field there I say Cole Strange we're all like hey field yeah. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> there's ever been a time where we were like take it away my friend yeah there, there's no doubt that it was a surprising uh, trade but the Chiefs have traded number 50 to New England in exchange for 54 and 158. So at this point, the Chiefs. Uh, it has to be Nicobe Dean, right? Yeah. I mean, like he, he just seems like the Patriots type player. Come on. Yeah. You mean just the, the best player on the board that's a no brainer? Well, that, and then look you, back and be like, what you, the hell you were look we thinking? At, mm -hmm. uh, you, you look at Nick Saban and you look at Bill Belichick's, their relationship. I'm excuse me, um, not Bill Belichick, but. Not Nick Saban, but being able to play in that system that came from a Bill Belichick, mm -hmm. uh, Nick Saban, Jesus. Um, no, he's not Jesus, but I mean, his, his record, yeah. su his record get, suggests. I can't even get it out. <laughs> not you, fat Jesus. There we go. Kirby Kirby Smart. That was a good one. That was a good one. Look at you. Kirby Smart being under Nick Saban in that system yeah. and that 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 whole thing and. 
similar to Alabama, I just think N'Kobe Dean is a guy that can be in New England. Yeah, well, the Patriots Dang, that also... Rough. That was rough trying to get out. I, I, that's okay. We <laughs> still love you. He's Harry Douglas, by the way. Uh, the Patriots... <laughs> <laughs> one of the Patriots' needs, though, is wide receiver. And they moved, They they gave up a pick to move up four. So you start looking at it, maybe there's a wide receiver that they're in love with here that they think could be a benefit. What, what do I have to do to sell this to Bill Belichick? Do I have to say that he played lacrosse? Do I have to say that he's from Tufts? Right? It's a transfer from Tufts. Do I have to make him some sort of diamond in the rough that makes you look real brilliant yeah. from taking him? I mean, they need... What do I need to do? Because I'll do it. I'll lie. <laughs> they need a Dante Hightower replacement. And yeah. I think uh, he's a guy, as we keep talking about how important the flexibility is to have at safety, when you have a guy like N'Kobe Dean, he's a guy who can be an every down linebacker, which is hard to find. So, clearly, Come on. this can is Can we also to acknowledge, too, though, Dante? Dante Hightower might be one of the coolest football names of all time. Oh, 100 like Dante Hightower. That's just. It's pretty good. I mean. It's pretty good. Sky with two Ys, though. I mean, Max with two <laughs> sky, Ss. Sky more. Yeah. Oh, he's unique. <laughs> <laughs> he has, he has yep. two of them in his name. All right, what we got here? What Do you know the here? story, by the way, of why Max Crosby has two Xs in his first name? Because it's cool. No, um, he was. <laughs> my, he was 12, he was over 12 pounds when right. he was born, so and they had to actually, like, break his shoulder to get him through the birth process. Yeah. And his mom was like, no, nah, you're, you're extra large. So she put two extra. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. And, uh, I mean, this, the, the best part of the story was you said the birth process. That was really fun. <laughs> that was, I'm very uncomfortable with all of that. To get him through the, really uh, the uh, yep, birth good. process. Very, <laughs> very <laughs> Get you all through there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now push. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Please, Nicobe Dean. So. I'm so uncomfortable. Come on. Let me cut, I thought I let me cut a promo. <laughs> let me cut wait. a promo. <laughs> I cannot wait for Tufts the Tufts transfer pro- to Georgia, Nicobe <laughs> Dean. <laughs> Lacrosse genius, Nicobe <laughs> Dean. Does somebody have Field Yates on speed dial so when we've never heard of this guy, uh, we've got it? That's uh, what we need here. I know. I'm in the Field Yates chair, but if a rando pops up, don't y'all look at Ty me. Taekwondo. Thornton, one of the Ooh, fastest sh- wide receivers out of Baylor. So, above and beyond, like, Thornton is somebody that I saw Mox had him in the seventh, and I saw Mox, ha- Mox had him in the second. So, you're talking about divisive. Mel Kuyper Jr. Ooh. loves this guy. He's commented he's not just a speed guy, can get in over the middle, can get a lot done. So, Taekwon Thornton out of Baylor, 6'2 and 3'8", 181. Absolute. Burner. So uh, this is. To, a I'm trying to remember. It's forty. I think it was. It was. It was very, very fast. Like, every, man, eight. everyone. Yes. Four it, two eight. You want to know where to find like Blazers, like uh, off market that are not necessarily like top tier teams, but right under that Baylor. Man, Baylor's just cranking out fast dudes year in and year out under Aranda. Uh, Taquan Thornton, he's going to stretch the field. This is as close to um, I think draft the fast guy as you're going to get in this draft because he's he's very 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 fast. <laughs> It's also one of these things where I think the context isn't going to fully explain his potential because Baylor was somewhat limited offensively. Yep. You're not going to see everything he was capable of. So I like it. Um, he's a little, he's a little small, but it's like a like or thin, not small. He's tall, but like he's kind of slight. But I don't know. The potential's limitless, but the demonstrated production is not quite what you want. So Bill Belichick drafting receivers is not a good track record. Oh, so my evaluation. <laughs> Of Thornton uh, has been impacted because Bill Belichick thinks he's good. Uh, that surprises me. Um, <clears throat> and they felt like they had to trade up to get him again. New England moved up four picks to get they this. They didn't have to trade. Well, I-, I can't tell you. I'm In sure- Kansas City, a team that yeah. needed a burner yeah. was willing to trade down. He's got the benefit of the doubt, but these are some super genius picks, right? Yeah, like, these, these are. are some these are, but he does. He doesn't picks. really have the benefit of the doubt when it comes to drafting. As Bill Belichick, I would especially say. not wide out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so these both of these picks are picks that would get you fired if you ain't won six Super Bowls. <laughs> you know, because these are surprising <laughs> picks. You have to have a level of job security to reach like this. But I don't want to bury the lead. The man ran four damn two. Well, yeah. Oh, that, that's, so that's fast. That's why I think eight. this pick for, for, for them, do I, do I like it this high? <laughs> no, I don't. But they had nobody to take the top off the defense. I'm sorry. The defense is so topless right now. Uh-huh. Yeah, no. <laughs> Lord, 4 Dude. to 8. But he's 181 yeah. pounds at the combine. Like, that means he, put, he like, beefed up to get to 181. Like, Dominique, you got to be a solid, like, you know, you're, you're big. Oh, is that going to take him down to 4-3? No. Oh, that, that's God. it, right? <laughs> if we spend a couple of weeks at the buffet? I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to need you to appreciate how fast 428 is. We're throwing a lot yeah. of numbers around out here, yeah. and we're not taking a moment to understand that even if you can't catch – 
a guy that's running that fast is going to stress yeah, the you hell know who out you're of talking defense. About? Like yeah. Darius Hayward Bay, James Jett. I can go down the list I'm, of fast okay. guys that did nothing for me with okay, the Raiders. Okay, we can go down the list of slow guys who did nothing too. The yeah, point yeah, yeah. is, Raiders when got you that, walk yeah. a human out there who runs 4 2 eight, and the defense knows it, I, I'm speaking as a cornerback. I yeah. said earlier I had heart palpitations. Right now I got a bubble in my gut. <laughs> Thinking about a man running 4-2. <laughs> I, I but think you, you want to know where it too. translate? You look at a guy like Tyreek Hill when he first came into the league. Yeah. Right? He wasn't on, on offense. He was doing it on special teams. So once guys start to see him returning them kicks and how fast he was, you know what those DBs are going to yeah. say in that meeting? No, Don, what them DBs are going to say in this meeting? <laughs> Listen now. All right? You better hey, get out your damn back pedal. Hey, <laughs> press them if you want to. You better win at the line. You better you, damn win at the line. You better get out your back pedal. And to that point, in his freshman year, he had, this is his average per reception. 17-7. Sophomore year, 17-4, 9-9 is junior, but 15-3. Like, when you talk about a guy that just in his, in his senior year, you talk about a guy that just gets downfield. Yeah, I, I mean, when, when, when I say his production doesn't quite show it, I mean, I just think that's because of what Baylor has had to do offensively yep. given the quarterback situation yeah. that they've had over the And they the were a predominantly year. running team. Right, with, right. Uh, was it Abram? Yep, Abram. Yeah, so, so what I'm team. saying is a compliment. There's a lot more to tap there. Yeah. Yeah, so the Eagles are on the clock now. The pick is in. We'll get you that. As soon as they get around to telling us the Eagles also have four picks remaining in this draft, Philadelphia. Like, <laughs> they don't got they don't on the it's because and I, by the I way, feel like you're not fully appreciated. No, no, I, no, I want to no. get this point across is that I'm getting emotional thinking about having to walk out there. <laughs> and I was a fast guy. Like, that was my thing. I was small, so I could run. Like, that was my thing. How, how would you run at the would you? Not 4 2 8. Okay. I ran 4 3 5, which is pretty damn fast. And that man. To eight. I'm telling you that <laughs> even even if he stinks. So I'm telling you, when, in in the defensive hand back me, meeting, hand me that iPad. I'm gonna tell you what the defensive coach said. Hand me the iPad yeah. really quick. Hey, and don't hand it to him if you want it back. Yeah, listen, yeah. If, if, broken. if you're on the sideline, right? And the defensive coordinator. Listen, son, you got to get out your damn back pedal. <laughs> yeah, you see? That's it. You so, you're not out your back pedal, for, son. Forget on the sideline. He's side running line. by you because you're not at your forget back Forget on the sideline. I'm telling you, in the defensive <laughs> meeting on Wednesday, oh, when we come in, you. and there are like there are normally guys that we highlight. I'm talking before the game. Guys that we highlight, like, all right, focus on this guy. When he does this, he, do, he does that. You should be ready here. And it's normally like the star guys. If it's a man who run a 4 2 8 on a roster, <laughs> it's going to be up there in that board. It don't matter what he do. So I'm just saying that to say that it has an impact on the team. Team, whether he's um, gonna catch the ball or not, we are gonna be stressing about it. I do. I you do gotta respect. get out. To, back in the day, let me not mark it. Back in the day, back in the day, it was pitches. Remember? Yeah. Son, circle them. This, this you right here. You gotta get out your back pedal. <laughs> <laughs> he go, he gonna get on your toes quick. Now like quick, he gonna get on your toes. Just drawing a cartoon turtle where you're supposed to be. And, and you. I do respect. Like when Dominique no, talks about speed, I respect no, the hell out of him. Uh, by the way, mm. oh Cameron Jurgens is the pick, a center out of Nebraska for the Eagles. So the Eagles go offensive line uh, with their pick. So you know we talk all the time about the strategy of how teams are going to build. Uh, they, they've done what we every cliche, like build a, in the trenches. Jordan Davis in the first round. Now Cam Jurgens out of Nebraska in the second round. And uh, you see the measurables there, uh, 300 pounds uh, for Nebraska. Had a heck of a career. Yeah, also, by the way, sort of a great fit for what uh, Philly's going to do schematically because not entirely dissimilar from what Nebraska ran when they were successful. Um, again, that is America's best 4-8 uh, and eight football team right there. I say that not jokingly. They were so close to winning more games. It wasn't Cameron Jurgens' fault, y'all. Not one, not one bit. See, I'm big on having guys ahead of you that you can learn from. And who better is it to learn from Jason Kelsey? Yeah. Right? You look at a team that I think after the New England Patriots, when they played them last year, the first time, not in the playoffs, the first time, this team, a switch, a light bulb went off, right? Okay, we need to be more of a running team first. Uh, and, and I'm glad their head coach um, made that switch. The offensive line, I think they're physical and nasty. You're just going to be plugging in a guy. When you think about Nebraska, what do you think about? We did this with Iowa yesterday. You think about Lawrence Nebraska? Lawrence Phillips. I think about <laughs> That's me. running the yeah, football, <laughs> you know, tough guys, Tommy offensive Frazier. linemen, defensive <laughs> linemen. By the way, the Eagles pick up a center, 
uh, they pick up arguably one of the most impressive defensive players in the draft, and they also pick up A.J. Brown. Let's not get that twisted. It's one in the trenches, man. I mean, yeah. they're building, one in the trenches. They're building this team, mm -hmm. again, to be one of those places where uh, a disgruntled quarterback forces his way out to go there. <laughs> yeah. that, like, that's what they're building this team for, in my view, because they don't believe in Jalen Hurts. And the Steelers, who in the first round took yes! a quarterback. Oh, there it is. Oh, now, oh, yeah, wide he receiver. did it. He did it. George Pickens, <laughs> wide receiver out of Georgia. Another guy that... You know, coming into the season, everybody loved George. So where are you on him? So I, I think with Pickens, when he first started playing, you see them his freshman year. He's the guy I think if he wouldn't have got hurt or had the off the field issues, would have easily been a first round draft pick. Yeah. He, now he's also a guy that you can't have out there in telling him to do read coverage, do this. No, I need you to. You so, the X receiver. Yeah. I need you to run a slant. You the X receiver. I need you to run an in cut. I need you to run a go ball. I need you to run a post. But that's the kind of guy he is. But. I love the dog in George Pickens. Mm, and uh, you can't, uh, hold on. Uh, no, 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 no. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Don't rush That's it. our first oh. one. <laughs> I love the dog in George Officially. Pickens. Officially. And what I mean, he's a dog. You don't why, think wait, he's a wait, dog? Wait, wait, Why did we put the dog, like, why did we put, are you? Because he can't, because it's, yeah, it's like a collar, Where's right? my, where's my right one yeah, shot? Yeah. Oh, he's waiting where's for the camera. Where's that? Give him the hero shot. He got to finish the highlight, Rip Harry. Hold on. They have a clip, right? Um against Michigan, and I believe it was Daxton Hill. Yeah. And a, a, a guy that people thought very highly, highly of. He's now you're. Punk, he's punking them and pushed them down and stood over and then told the Michigan sideline, basically, I can't say it. Tell the Colts to wait. We are still talking about George Pick. Yeah, the Colts can wait. Colts Pick is it. We'll get they to it when wait. we get to it. We'll get to the Colts when we get to it. Tell dog. me about the dog. Uh, but I also love his receiver coach, Frisman Jackson. Is a guy I played for. You have a guy that can understand him and grab him and take him in as his own child, right? And show him the ropes uh, because of the things that you had off the field when it came to George Pickens. But this is a steal for Pittsburgh. And now you add him with Chase Claypool and Deontay Johnson and Pat Frymouth and Najee Harris. Oof, 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 oof. You guys ready to let the dogs out? <laughs> still, we're, we're, we're still waiting. Still need to protect him and somebody to throw him the ball. Those yeah. are, those are, <laughs> they need to protect the quarterback and also find the quarterback. They got Pickens now. Can I mean, um, they got Kenny Pickett. Pickett. Kenny Pickett. Is they still need <laughs> <a quarterback. laughs> right, right. Nothing changed. Uh, the Colts, by the way, are continuing the run on wide receivers just oh, like yesterday. Man. We get them back. It feels like back to back to back. This is the run Alec on candy Pierce. here. Uh, this yeah. is not the right comparison in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. This is not the right comparison at all because Jordy Nelson came in in 2008, was the year I came in. We used to watch a ton of film on their receiver court. Jordy Nelson was fast. Mm. He was excellent at route running. You know why we got this comparison, <laughs> Harry. You just stopped playing, Harry. They, they saw a white man. They, they named a white man. It was like, hey, you white? He white. You play receiver? Let's let's cop him up. What? All right, so here's, my, here's my dilemma. What if he's actually gritty? <laughs> what if he's actually a gym? What do I do? I, I refuse to say it. Uh, enough with the back dog thing. I mean, like, it's, just, it's true. I mean, Harry was tiptoeing I, around. I don't it, like this but, comparison at all. Yeah. I'll be honest. I don't like that comparison. Yeah. Who, Yo, who, would, you, who would you compare what is it to? The comp? I, I, or, I, don't, I don't like it. I, don't, I hate comps. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but yeah. Okay. we got to do it. What's his game? Like What's his game? Do it. Like, just describe the specifics of his game. Because I don't think he's an elite route runner. And then yeah. he did struggle with easy drops this year. But he does. He is big and a guy that can run. So you, most of, most of the yeah. major catches he had came from Fades, go routes, uh -huh. being bigger than smaller defenders. Yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah, but Jordy Nelson wasn't. I'm gonna jump up and take the like, ball. Like I think that's head. that's a weird comparison because I think this dude isn't isn't polished. Like no, he actually I like so at all. I like he relies on his athleticism. I don't think there's a whole lot of technique there. <laughs> I, and, and like I'm not lying. It sounds funny coming out of my mouth, but it is. I'm not lying. That's this dude. Here's the question: In this Indianapolis offense, which you mentioned Foolish. earlier, is going to be all about like just running the ball right down mm -hmm. your damn throat. What does Alex? What does Alex Pierce do in that offense? Is like, does that make a difference to you? Who did he go to again? Indy. Indy. He went to Indy. Well, you got a quarterback, Matt Ryan, a guy that. Who's? I'll tell you this: You can't. We love Matt. You can't run mm -hmm. routes and not be where you're going to. be supposed to be. Yeah. Matt throws the ball with anticipation and timing. So if you have to be at 14 yards, you need to be at 14 so yards. You can't I, be at 12, can't be at 16. I think the answer is Matt Ryan's best year is within the play action Kyle Shanahan offense. They have a great running back that they want to run the ball first. So the, the answer to that is a guy who has the athleticism of Alec is going to try to beat people with, with his athleticism off of play action. So you give him a step, 
based on a play action, a safety comes up or the corner has his eyes in the backfield. You give, try to um, create a way to give him a step, and then he pulls away and tries to make a play like, like that, and he's a, a bigger target, which is nice. So here's something that surprises me a little bit, y'all, because the Chiefs pick is in. The Chiefs traded down mm -hmm. with the uh, New England Patriots. They went from 50 to 54, and in the process of doing that, they picked up 158. I only think that's significant because 50 was a wide receiver. 52 was a wide receiver. 53 was a wide receiver. If the presumption is the Chiefs may have been in a speedy wide receiver market, we've seen three wide receivers, one of which was the fastest in this entire draft, all go off the board. This becomes part of the context. As much as I love the opportunity to trade down, and we said last night, sometimes you're just like, well, that didn't work. Like, if I'm the Chiefs right now, I'm looking at it saying, well, I didn't see that coming. Like, everybody's going wide receiver up in front of them. It, it has to have some impact on who was on the board. You, you can't tell me that they were sitting there at 50 saying, oh, yeah, we got four or five wide receivers. They're all the same at this point. Yeah, but this is, this is when everyone goes grabbing for the candy, right? Like, this is, this is, Speaking this of is the run. Which, by the way, <laughs> now that I've said that, like, watch the Chiefs just take a defensive play. <laughs> you think they will? I mean, Kobe Scott, Dean is still on the board, y'all. He is. Kobe and and on the board. I think Dean. Sky Moore is the the highest yep. rated receiver left. Um, he's a. And he is. He's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's he's not like four two as we've discussed, but he's a four four guy, and he's a guy who can make something happen with the ball in his hands. Um, I mentioned this several times. Is I'm not when I watch guys from small schools, like I need you to just jump off the tape and dominate. I didn't see that from him, yeah. but uh, I also am not Andy Reid. So maybe he finds a way and with them trying to transition their offense and take some of the pressure off of Patrick Mahomes, I believe, and not be home run ball all the time. A guy like Sky Moore working uh, in that offense could be helpful. See, I, th I thought he was one of the toughest receivers in this draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A guy that's going to go in and block on numerous of occasions. I see him going in that box to block safeties. Uh, and, and normally, you know, you have wide receivers trying to turn those things down. I thought he made those tough catches against one-on-one -on -one coverage and his release game I thought was good. But he just has a great feel for the game of football. You know, mm -hmm. some people just have that that great feel for football. He, Scott Moore was that for me. I mean, Juju Smith-Schuster is that guy for yeah. them now is going to get in there and be happy to block and do those tough hits. So maybe he's not a fit for their offense. But um, The Chiefs in. have been aggressive about with McDuffie and uh, I'm trying to think of uh, Carl Loftus. They've been aggressive addressing there we the go. defensive Sky side Moore. of the ball. Sky Moore. Sky Moore is the Western receiver, the yep. Western Michigan wide receiver. What do you think? Well, I love this pick for him. Another guy I just mentioned that's quick off the line of scrimmage. He's not going to do the Tyreek Hill things, but he is a guy that you can give reverses, right? And mm -hmm. They have a lot of big guys. They need some little shiftier guys. You got Nico Harmon. I thought he has been a disappointment mm. because I thought they drafted Nico Harmon to try to, you know, find a way to get Tyreek out the door, yeah. but Miko Harmon has to live up to the standards uh, of being in the NFL so far. So I think this is a good a, a good fit for, <laughs> for the Chiefs. Oh, yeah, step it, he, he also yeah. performed a live step over in the middle of a football <laughs> game. <laughs> so let's, go ahead, let's go ahead and give him high marks for attitude here. I'm also a little stunned, y'all, that like I have this sense in my mind where it's like he's fast, but he's it's 4 4 1. Like, you ran a 4 4 1. But we got to stop saying 4 4 1 is not fast. Because know, you just, yeah, it's, it's, four, it's, it's so relevant. <laughs> that, yeah. That's why I stood up and closed my laptop and stopped the show mm -hmm. when we had a 4 2 8. <laughs> because 4 4 1 is fast. Yes. That's a speed guy. That's fast. And I, I think if. I am drafted by the Chiefs and I'm a receiver. I'm very excited. It's the opposite of if I'm a receiver drafted by the Patriots where I'm a little nervous. So I think this is, even if he wanted or expected to go day one, um, or excuse me, yeah, go first round or earlier, this is the best possible place to land for a receiver, I feel like. Yeah, my, well, jo my joke on Andy Reid is that, like, people just keep handing him knives. Yeah. You know, don't, don't give the knife guy a knife. They just gave him another knife. <laughs> All right, Harry Douglas, wide receiver one for us. You get to take a little breather. Uh, get, get a moment, catch your breath. We appreciate all your Some great sprite. work. We'll see you in a few minutes. In the meantime, while he uh, while he gets to take a breath, Field Yates going to come back and uh, rejoin us. And we'll get uh, that. And then also the Cardinals pick is in. So we'll see where the Cardinals go uh, with this. And it is Trey McBride, the tight end out of Colorado State. So uh, we get a tight end off the board. Finally. I, I, they just, mm -hmm. I, I don't know wh where you are on this one. Um, I think that what you've seen here is a very fundamentally sound tight end with good hands who was in an offense that could not fully exploit his capabilities, right? Great so, story here. So, I, yeah, it's a good story. It is just somebody who I think in college really didn't have a chance to produce the way he did. 
I will say this. There's a confounder. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how good he is in the red zone. I'm yeah. really not because I don't know if they put him in good spots there just because of the way that Colorado State offense was. But at the same time, um, he could be that dude. What are the Cardinals doing? In what regard? That's a really loaded question. <laughs> I mean, whatever regards you, you want. Welcome, Phil. I would like to ask you the hardest question possible next to what's the meaning of life is what are the Cardinals doing? Because I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of sense to me. This is a team that just gave Zach Ertz a three-year deal. Exactly. Worth 30-plus million dollars. What are the Cardinals doing? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> and then they went and made that trade for Hollywood. Yeah, they get Hollywood I, Brown, too. Which I I'd certainly... Which, uh, by the way, like... Which I didn't think was a very wise trade. Worth worth noting, let's get into the weeds a little bit, but Hollywood Brown... Nothing wrong with weeds. ...shares the same agents as A.J. Brown mm -hmm. and D.K. Metcalf and Debo Samuel mm -hmm. and Mike Williams. You can't imagine that he's going to want to go to Arizona and they traded their first-round pick for them for him and say, you know what, I, I'll do it for $12 million bucks a year. He's going to want a two at the beginning of the average value per year of that contract. I'm with you, man. They keep improving. Like they have improved year over year over year yeah. during Cliff's tenure there, but he makes me a little bit nervous. <laughs> yeah, like they're I'm confused. undoing moves they've so, previously done. Uh, Hollywood may expect that number, but I don't think – his production suggests that he deserves that number. His impact on the game suggests that he deserves uh, a number with a two in front of it for his annual value. Yep. But I guess it doesn't matter whether he can get it or not. But it just doesn't make sense to me to commit to Zach Ertz in the way that they did and then go draft a, a tight end where they Weird. did. Also, Weird. To, By the way, to make that trade to bring Hollywood. In. Like, it wasn't a good trade. A player who they also are going to have to pay. I don't know. doesn't make sense. I'd have to guess. I bet ESPN stats and info could drag this for us. But I wonder what team played the fewest – percentage of snaps or the fewest total snaps last year with two tight ends on the field. Yeah. I bet Arizona's got to be way up there. Yeah. Way up there. I would guess so. With the, the or way up. down there, how, guess, right, right. how you scale it. But yeah. We knew what you meant. For the first okay. time in the second round, I believe the Cowboys are, their pick is in. So let's see where the Dallas Cowboys go as uh, you are watching the 2022 NFL live stream draft coverage on ESPN and the ESPN app. Facebook, Twitter, all over the place. Sam Williams, linebacker out of Ole Miss. The pick is in for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, so they went Tyler Smith in the first round. They go Sam Williams, linebacker, Ole Miss. Let me start here by just noting this is not Kobe Dean, which is weird. Yeah. Um, uh, Sam Williams uh, listed as a linebacker. I mean, outside, yeah. I'm sorry. But more of an outside linebacker. He's going to play outside. So I don't want people to think, oh, linebacker, that's not Kobe Dean. But he's a much different player. Uh, <clears throat> he was solid. Like, I thought there was... The SEC obviously has three excellent, or excuse me, has multiple excellent left tackles. I thought Sam, Carl, I'm sorry, Sam Williams was a solid player. Like I, I get it. I don't know. I don't have like a, a spicy take yeah. on this. He like was the, the Cowboys doing Cowboys things. Please yeah, stop. he was a big part of an improved Old Miss defense. Yeah. That's that's probably like the cleanest, clearest, nicest thing to say about yeah. somebody who was picked ahead of a guy I would have taken instead of him. Right? Like yeah. That's and that's no that's no slight on Sam Williams, but man, that. <sighs> frustrating. Deeply frustrating. It's, it's been interesting. Let's say that way. We do have a trade. We'll get the details momentarily. Tampa Bay is on the clock. Wow. So Tampa, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers okay. have traded. Remember, they took Logan Hall earlier in the second yep. round at the start of the second round, and they have already put their pick in. So as soon as we get details on that trade, we will let you know. <clears throat> so this is <clears throat> Randy Gregory. Like, they, the Cowboys lost Randy Gregory, who uh, – I was just about to say was probably the best player on their defense, but then Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons existed, he, he was the right? best player yeah. on their defensive line, despite um, the money that they had committed to, to Lawrence. So uh, this is not going to replace him, but this seems like they're trying to address that um, vacancy that was left. Quickly, Buffalo is traded from 57 to 60. And in exchange, they get 180 as well. So 180? 180. So they, they, get a little, okay. they get a little extra equity to move back. So... Uh, we'll see with that Buccaneers. Any guesses on where the Buccaneers what, – what are the Buccaneers so passionate about that they need to move up three picks? They, they give up a roll of the dice to move up three picks. Atlanta and Minnesota ahead of them. I mean, does that come back to N'Kobe? Is that, is that where we start to – I don't know. Yeah, this N'Kobe thing is stressing me out. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it just it, – it baffles me that you have me. somebody who I think is so NFL ready. Yeah. Especially, especially in the mental side of the game. So, so – why? Why? I mean, give give me why Nicobe Dean hasn't been picked. Yeah. Why, if you're sitting in a scouting room, what's the justification? Um, 
So not like there's no like major, major injuries that are currently existing, but he's got a history of like smaller things. I believe there was one labrum issue at one point during his college career. Um, not going to blaze with speed. Yeah. Average time speed. Five foot 11, 240 pounds, 235 pounds, like not a big guy. See, like, I don't have an answer. I mean, listen, he's if like, I had an answer, like, I wouldn't have like one to two, first He's like yeah. 1% to 2% off what you want on the card, right? Which, like if you want on the card, though, pick guy. 57, yeah. you'd think like. Yeah, come on. You can take what you can take that guy now. I mean, especially since the upside, I think, is high um, if he figures it out. And the size thing, I understand it. Yeah. However, he played in the SEC, and his size wasn't a problem. Yeah. He found a way around it. And the speed thing, I get it. But he compensates for that by being smart. So, like. If he gets a tenth of a second start in the direction that he's the right direction, he's gonna get there faster than a guy that's faster who reads more slowly. So like I don't have any hangups on the type of player he's gonna be in the NFL. I think even though he is good reading play action, his size could be an issue with tight ends, like high balls with tight ends. But other than that, yeah. there is no perfect prospect. I'm shocked that he's still on. Yeah, there. I don't get it. For Tampa Bay, uh, according to ESPN.com, we have the remaining needs that haven't been filled as. Guard, defensive tackle, tight end, and running back. I only say that because if you then go back to our current best available list, yeah. you'll see that number three on that is Travis Jones, the defensive tackle. Yeah, they could still be in the market for so, a defensive tackle. Yeah, you know, there, There's a spot for me where I wonder if that's a guy that you were moving up because he's also had mm -hmm. a – Strange. I mean, again, how many mocks this week had him suddenly finding his way in the 20s? So, you know, uh, that, that's what we've got to sort of figure out, too, is Harry Douglas sneaks on set to get a whole bottle of honey. <laughs> what <laughs> bottle of honey? <laughs> Trying to get him a sponsorship. Like, he with Sprite, a, too. Like, and, and Harry's right. going to be in Sprite commercials in no time. Like, he drinks those things like they're water. All right, so the Bucks are about to pick. And about this, our guy Titus O'Neil, WWE superstar, making oh, a big, huge, a huge. Yeah, he's right. Gator is a large well. man. Uh, former player for the Thaddeus Gators, right? Bullard, yeah. Thaddeus Bullard, I'm sorry. That's correct. That's correct. That's the oh, no, that's, name Ti here. that's Titus O'Neill. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that matters. Um, he's making the pick right now. Great suit, by the way, huh? Really it's, strong. It's a little, and it's toasty out there for guys to be suited up. By, just, by great suit, what do you mean? I don't know, just cool color scheme. Okay, colors. okay. Would you pull yeah. it? Would you wear that? Yes. <laughs> You'd wear that? Okay. I don't know. Okay, remember you? this next year. Absolutely not. <laughs> Luke Gadecki. Okay. Luke Gadecki, Gadecki. Central, uh, Central Michigan tackle is yeah. the one they moved up for. So and I think the better Central Michigan ta uh, tackle, by the way. I think he's a guard, uh, but there are two. We'll talk about Bernard Raymond at some point. Luke Gadecki, great story. Lightly recruited, uh, very much off the college football radar, goes there. Uh, they play in the great uh, Jim McElwee offense. Pascal Beer, very uh, zone uh, run scheme heavy. Yep. And... Uh, this to me is very, very interesting pickup here by the Buccaneers. I think he, he clearly is a guard because they've got Donovan Smith, who they extended recently. They've got Tristan Wirfs. Clearly shows that they are going to move him to guard, where I think a lot of teams felt like he was best suited. Yeah, this is a point where the measurements really matter, right? We're talking yeah. about, yeah, moving move those slightly shorter arms inside. Where yep. You can put that strength where it'll actually can get applied. Yeah. I mean, it just it speaks more to what they, I think earlier before I joined the set, we were talking about how the Bucks, or you guys were talking about how the Bucks were an interesting situation and how their draft picks tell us what they think. And it tells us more of the same. They got an old quarterback who they want to keep upright. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's all that matters to them. And I don't know if they called him and consulted with him, but they are not going to enter the season wise of them, not going to enter this season with any question and they they anticipate injuries will happen along the offensive line i think stockpiling offensive linemen is a smart thing to do especially when you have the amount of talent on the outside that they have in a quarterback that makes the players around him better so this is a wise move I, I would have liked them to attack the defensive tackle spot but they know how their bread is buttered they know how they are going to win or compete again yeah. just by keeping tom brady clean uh, you're watching the 2022 NFL li draft live stream version. Dominique Foxworth, Spencer Hall. I'm Jason Fitz with Field Yates. Don uh, whatever his name is. Harry, Harry Douglas. Douglas is yeah. over Harry there hanging out with us. Yeah. Harry and, uh, Honey you know, Douglas. He's, he's over there, too. I'm just going to be real transparent with everybody because that's what we do on long these shows. Long couple days. Right? Yeah, long couple days. Uh, you know what? We, we've got the NBA on in the studio now, so we're going to work on that in a second and uh, figure out how to get the uh, the draft oh, broadcast that. back on in here. What, but, but, what an electric series. Unless, did Dominique yeah. do this? Did Dominique come in and be like, hey, what we really need. Yeah. Okay, we got, we, go. got yeah. the, we got it back here. I so, mean, it's 
pivotal playoff game. We got to at least have an eye on it. We don't got to talk about somebody, it. Somebody, somebody at this table might, might have put a little cash on it too. I'm just saying. Somebody at this <laughs> Which table. is a perfectly legal and valid thing to do in the state of Nevada. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of I, I am a believer yeah. in Memphis. That's all I have to say. So, uh, Work Done is currently making the Falcons pick. Mm-hmm. Work Done might be like the best human on this earth. He is universe. the best human on this earth. Like what the work that he has done to provide families that otherwise would not have stable homes. Like I, I've lost count. It's something along the lines of like a hundred plus homes he has built for people. I love you, work done, and I really like this pick <laughs> for the Falcons, by the yeah, way. Troy Anderson, linebacker, Montana State. Why do you like Yeah, him? freak athlete. I mean, this guy is an absolute mover. Uh, so, listen, Montana has been the superior of the, uh, the, the two schools in Montana that go play Grizz. football. Yeah. Go Grizz. But Montana State had some dudes, and this guy came to college as an offensive player. Played running back, fullback, played quarterback for them moves to linebacker, and just develops into this, like, unbelievable freak show for them. And the athleticism is just off the charts. You'll see it here right now as we run some of these clips. Uh, I think he is the, quote-unquote, modern NFL linebacker. I love the pick here. Yeah, no, no, no. I I will say this. He's just starting to learn the position. Yeah, oh, it's he's like, going to need a year now. Raw. Yeah, he's going to need a year. Raw, raw, raw. This is a dude who is relying exclusively on see that, hit that yep. at this point. So the technique, all of that, I know that's a given when you're going to the NFL. Everyone faces that curve. His is going to be pretty steep. Yep. Well, if Harry Douglas were here, I think this would be the time he reminds us yet again that Dean Pease is a noted uh, defensive coordinator. And uh, the the belief is if you have the right, you know, framework and you have the right skill set, that Dean is the sort of uh, person that can – uh, can make you better and can make you drastically better quickly. The Vikings, by the way, pick is in too, and they've been. He's moving along a little bit yeah. right here, right? I mean, teams, you know, you kind of have a sense of where the board is, and you know, the the ability, the need to like uh, draw the suspense has reduced. We've seen a ton of trades already, so I think we'll probably, you know, it would just make sense that like things go a little bit, a little bit fewer, you know, some fewer number of trades going forward here. So the Vikings, their pick is in up to pick sixty for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, coming up around the corner. So. Well, and the Vikings have addressed the defense and secondary specifically was seen in Booth uh, being their two picks so far. So uh, let's see what they do at this point in the draft. Gable Stevenson. His, How about look that? Look at his neck. He's all over the world right good. now. Huh? I mean, it's <laughs> good. 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 Yeah, look at where his head attaches to his body. <laughs> hey, that, that thing is bigger than my thigh. That's all I'm saying. Like, his neck is bigger than my thigh. That is. <sighs> Not that I have a up close and personal comparison there, but Ed Ingram, guard out of LSU, is the pick there. So Vikings, after going defense with their first two picks, now have addressed the offensive line. So let's be honest. When we're talking about guards, you use terms like all business, like rugged, <laughs> no nonsense, Nasty. those kind of things, right? Nasty. And like, don't tell apply to our friend Ed Ingram right here. LSU was not very good last year. Ready, buddy? Uh, can recall that, but he did, as you see right here, protect for Joe Burrow, and he was like one of like three players that was not draft eligible on offense during that unbelievable year, and we all knew he was going to be a pro at some point, and here we are, and that makes him, I want to say something like 10 of the 11 starters all got drafted from that Good team. Shot. Like, it's absurd. Like, the entire offensive line was drafted. I got to find a tweet, because that might be it. See if I can find this, dig it out. But that um, that is ridiculous that they just keep getting drafted. Um, yeah, I, uh, y'all, I don't. It, what? Not. <laughs> uh, okay, you just say the same thing about LSU. Okay, yeah. is that for LSU for for a hot minute managed to exploit all of its talent, develop it fully, and blossom into the 2019 LSU Tigers? How fun was that? Uh, you know what? Worth a long hangover. Yeah. Worth a very, very long hangover that might continue into this year because um, kind of just plateaued. Right? Family. That's like, yeah, yeah. Family. Fa- family. <laughs> family. I'm from like 20 <laughs> minutes away from Brian Kelly. Like, not one single person says family, family. anywhere family. like within like 20 hours of no, where he, we're he, he put on that big pappy foghorn leghorn for that. He also, like, he was like, boy, 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 my favorite part was like he doubled down on it, and he was like, no, this is that's just how I say family. Like, <laughs> yeah. who says family when they say that? Like, who, who actually pronounces it family? Do, do, you like the the, do you like the pick, though? <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah it's I mean, fine. It's, it's a, a guard. A, like, I have no problem with you getting a guard. Like, yeah. They're, they're, yeah, when you draft a guard, it's hard to be, like, uh, too opinionated one way or the other. I want to take us back a step to the Troy Anderson draft pick. Um, he's an incredible athlete. I think that's a, a kind of risky, high upside pick. 
because he was the competition he was playing against. But somehow we made it through that whole conversation without mentioning the name N'Kobe Dean, uh, <laughs> which, which I don't uh -huh. understand how we did it. I don't understand how you make that pick given the competition that we saw each, both of them compete against and given the way that they played versus that competition. I'm Another not trade pretend, here, like, by the way. Oh, I'm mm. sorry. The Bengals are coming up from pick 63, it would appear. Who back with the Buffalo Bills? Yeah, the Bengals would be on the clock. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I, I would not pretend like I'm deep in Montana film study because they're not on TV. <laughs> Montana State. Montana State film Montana study. Montana State, yeah. They're Even not more on TV. niche football. Yeah, community. yeah. And I, I did see a lot of N'Kobe Dean do – N'Kobe Dean-like things against NFL-level players. So I understand that Troy Anderson can run, and he's big, and he's strong, and he probably was very dominant. I wouldn't be able to tell you because the games weren't on TV. <laughs> um, there, is, there is also this issue, though. I've got to say this real positive. This is an Atlanta tradition because – uh, big old linebacker out of Montana. We have filled the Croy Beerman spot, oh. spot from Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, right? He's I've, Anderson, I've played with old Beerman. You did you? Well, see, he could just slide right into the spot. This is a <laughs> this is a hallowed Atlanta Falcons tradition, right? He's going to be on reality television in ten minutes. <laughs> that was ten such minutes. a curveball. Well, yeah. Cincinnati yeah. moves up, right? And so Cincinnati's moving up at this point. The pick is in, and. Uh, Cincinnati, we talked about yesterday, is in this spot that Bengals fans, I don't think, are used to being in, where you can look at it and say, everything's a luxury. They addressed their offensive line aggressively during the offseason. We knew they had to do that. They pick up Daxton Hill at the end of the first round, second to last pick in the first round, the, like that the safety sure. out of Michigan. So what is what is so compelling that it's worth giving up extra equity to move up for if you're Cincinnati? Could be in a career. So they're jumped ahead of San Francisco and Kansas City. Could this be a center right now for Cincinnati? I mean, who? Because the, the, the 49ers do not know what's going to happen with Alex Mack right now. He has gone back and forth in terms of needing uh, – I think he's – like they'll have him if he'll play, but he hasn't decided if he's going to play. Could, could a center be in play? I mean, uh, our, our best available do is Donovan West, according to ESPN.com right now, the Arizona State Center, yeah. uh, is who we have listed as, as best available. Luke Fortner out of Kentucky also on that list uh, for best available at center. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I mean, you know, the weird part is when you move up like three or four picks, sometimes I think it's an indication that a GM is like, I don't know what the people in front of us are or aren't going to do, but I don't care. Like, yeah. I'd rather just get this out of the way because this is the one player that, like, I think maybe in the case of Cincinnati, it could be jumping ahead of those teams. It could be also protecting against other teams that are behind you that could come up and leapfrog you. So, wouldn't surprise me um, if they, they are doing this just as much to play defense against teams behind them. And, and this is our chance to remind everybody, not only that you're watching the live stream of the ESPN NFL Draft and you can watch the – Draft itself on ESPN, ABC, and, of course, the NFL Network. We're live in Las Vegas. Field Yates, Jason Fitz, Spencer Hall, Dominique Foxworth, Harry Douglas is also with us. But, guys, uh, I just and listed off a bunch of names. And his honey. Uh, 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 what? Harry's honey is also uh, Oh, Harry's honey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I listed off a bunch of names, uh, and when you talk about a bunch of names, there's still a bunch of names of quarterbacks just sitting here, right? Guys, like, like, at this point, like, when does the run end? Like, at what point do these quarterbacks go? Like, it, like what's the motivation for a team to use a pick here? Yeah. Clear, like, you know, listen. Bottom line is this. The, the draft is an imperfect uh, science. It, it just is. There have been so many examples. The greatest quarterback of all time, 199th in the 2000 NFL draft. We've also had guys go number one overall that became massive, massive, massive busts. But one thing that is clear is that going into this draft, the amount that draft Twitter, and I throw this into that draft Twitter community, liked Desmond Ritter and Matt Corral and, De and Malik Willis was significantly higher than how much the NFL liked them. It's almost a third round, and those guys haven't been picked yet. Sam Howell as well. Such a shock, though, because it's, it's normally the opposite. Right. Like, it's normally coaches convince themselves or, or teams convince themselves that it's worth a shot on a guy earlier, and we're on the side like, mm, reach. That's, that's, why it feels yeah, like I, that's why it feels like Desmond Ritter is going to be the first one off because, to me, yeah. he's the one who's the most, like, polished and complete at this point, and this seems like a really cautious environment overall. Or, or a rational environment for once. Yep. I, I think part of the reason the Twitter Ooh. community thought that everybody was – the draft community thought everybody was going to pick a quarterback was just because you don't trust people to get out of their own way. Same reason the salary cap exists right like his owners are all afraid they're all just going to spend into oblivion like I just didn't trust teams to to step back and be like ah, 
Uh, we're going to be good on this one. The pick is in, and it is Cam Taylor Britt, That's the safety out of Nebraska. So the Bengals move up. They traded. Uh, they Buffalo traded 60. Cincinnati gave 63 and 209. They yeah. gave up an extra pick to move up and get Cam Taylor Britt, the safety. Safety yeah, he was a corner. corner. Well. Yeah. Yep. So I, I, I'm, they haven't listed as a safety right there, which surprised me, but it makes sense because uh, the issues that he had were issues that you that will not that you can't hide at corner in the NFL. So I, I was looking at our list and he was like the best corner we had available and I thought it was a reach to get him here at corner. Maybe it's not a reach to get him here at safety because he goes from being a not great cover corner to probably being a top end coverage safety. Because he'll, it, listen, he'll go off script. Yeah. Right? You can't go off script if you're a corner, right? Like you might be able to do that a little bit as a safety. That's why they're putting him there. But, like, Nebraska would give up big plays, and he was on the end of a couple of them. He's a big physical guy, too, which is, like, something that, again, is an attribute that's nice to have in a corner, but it's not must-have in a corner. It is must-have in a safety. So it'll be interesting to see how they use him. He might be another one of these guys that they're thinking of. As we've been talking about ad nauseum, um, the NFL is moved to a league of versatility offensively and defensively, and having these hybrid-type players is – not, no longer a luxury, it's now kind of a necessity. So maybe that's what their plan is with him. You just brought something up, Dominique, that I'm starting to wonder, like, you know, players going earlier or later than we expected. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like NFL teams are starting to, like, veer a little bit off course from that, that idea? Like, at the mm -hmm. top of the draft, the first 10 picks, like, it's rare that we have, sorry, Fitz, like a Cleveland Farrell pick where it's like completely out of nowhere yeah. and not a single person other than the team that took him was going to go that direction. Maybe not even the best guy at his position on his own team. Right, yeah, yeah. totally, yep. Yeah. But I'm wondering, Who would like, do that? like, there have been a lot of guys that in this draft, I'm like, there? You're like yeah. 20 picks, 30 picks ahead. Meanwhile, we've got guys like N'Kobe Dean that are still out there. Like, man. Have we said N'Kobe Dean or Dog more? And, and today's Nicobe Dean. So yeah. far. Nicobe Dean so far. Nicobe Dean is starting to catch up with my hangover references. We're, we're, <laughs> yeah. we're almost there. We, we need a word cloud. Uh, and Nicobe Dean is going to be the biggest in there. By the way, the 49ers pick is in, which is significant only because much different draft day experience than a year ago for 49ers fans, right? Trey Lance last year, all the rage, all the conversation. The 49ers pulled the, uh, the, the magic trick, like they went full David Copperfield. They went full Penn and Teller. We didn't see it coming. Uh, all of a sudden, Trey Lance goes at the top of the draft. This is the 49ers' first pick in this draft, uh, 29th, obviously, in the second round. So we've been waiting a very long time. Uh, now we have an interesting situation at quarterback with Jimmy Garoppolo. It really is. In, 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 in it's his, like soup. Like if they don't trade him this weekend, guys, like, are we certain that Jimmy Garoppolo is not the starter going into week one next I, year? I think he is the starter. I think 100% he's the starter. Your, your roster's too good. Your roster's too good. I would just take a step back. Because you might have to take a guy. step back to take a bigger step forward. And I think um, Jimmy Garoppolo has proven that to them time and time again that uh, he's not going to be able to make the plays. Like, you're going to need your quarterback to make two or three plays, like real plays, or at least – two or three more good plays than bad plays mm -hmm. in your playoff games. He has not been able to do that. And last year was really, really ugly. And I think that maybe you do take a step back in order to take um, two steps forward. However it's many plays he makes in the playoffs or in regular season games, it's going to be more than we've really seen from Trey Lance. So, like, that's such a, such a roll of the dice. I don't roll him out until I absolutely have to. No, no, do it sooner. You know what you've got. You know what, what do you want to continue – to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results? There's a word for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's called the, the price of proximity. Like, the, the, it's not like the 49ers are sitting here and they suck. Like, the 49ers have been a good football team. They've been yeah. competitive every year, right? Is there yeah. a lesson here? Because, like, sometimes we hear and we see trades go down and we're like, that's all they got? And sometimes it feels even, like, months after, like, a really bad move. Like, I think the Cowboys – maybe wish they had a bit more patience with Amari Cooper. And I don't know if they're getting a first, but, like, basically a fifth for Amari Cooper and a sixth is, like, not – like, that was a salary dump. Mm -hmm. but like, maybe sometimes we, like, should give, like, the teams that pull the trigger early, like, some credit, only because it's, like – I wonder if the 49 ers stubbornness with Jimmy G, like, hey, we're not doing it for anything less than this, yeah. has led them to the situation. Like, right now, if you could get a – Third round pick for Jimmy G, I think we'd all be like, do it, right? Whereas two months ago, they'd be like, we're not doing it for a third. We'll hold out for a first. Quarterback league, someone's going to get desperate.
so much. The, the Trey Lance thing is uh, a great, I mean, capital U, capital M, unsolved mystery episode here. Like, what on earth is that? Yeah. What is happening? I need to know thing one about that. I yeah. need to know, like, the intro, the setting. I, like, what has happened to that pick, his development? I know there's an injury there, but that's not the whole yeah, thing. It doesn't make any sense. The 49ers pick is in, and it's linebacker Drake Jackson out of USC. So uh, the, the 49ers, for the first that's time, free? make a pick this free? year. And they go on the defensive side of the ball. Staying uh, close to uh, where he played his college ball. That'll be nice. Again, we're saving on moving costs. This is a theme, right? <clears throat> yep. we're, we're not going to have to spend all that money moving you. You're real close, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Are we surprised? I mean, nah. I mean, I think he's the... <laughs> this this, to me, <laughs> this has been the me, most yeah to me this doesn't, it doesn't feel like a reach. I think that this is something that this 49ers team has kind of in their recent years they've been very successful up front, having a lot of guys who frankly are built like this. Yeah, um, attacking the edge in the interior. They had um, was it Eric Armstead make the pick. And Eric Armstead looks the part. Like, he is that guy that they like to have up there. So, it doesn't surprise me that they got him here. He will be somebody in there that they can rotate with the rest of their D-linemen. And, and that's the, yeah, that's the corner, or not the cornerstone. That's the, like, foundation of everything they do from their defense, I think, starts up there. That dude's a baby, too. Yeah. Like, he, uh, he, I think he just turned 21. He is real young, just starting to show his potential. The Chiefs wasted no time. They, they basically sprint out, and they're saying, okay, we are ready to get back on We've the clock. We've got a WWE and, uh, I'm on Baron on. Corbin also out there. Like, Let's go. This. I mean, uh, guys getting into it. The Chiefs, remember, have uh, traded around a little bit. Then they took Sky Moore. Now they've taken Brian Cook, safety out of Cincinnati. So we see a little, little another, another player coming off the board out of Cincinnati. Uh, Brian Cook comes out and continues to adjust the defensive side of the ball for the Chiefs, which uh, obviously seems yep. like the right. They need a safety there. Maybe a little earlier than I expected. But how about this? Would you have expected him to go before Kobe Bryant? No. The other, I mean, obviously there's Sauce Gardner who went early, but Kobe Bryant I thought would have been the second player taken from that Cincinnati secondary. Um, but the safety goes instead. Have we had two players taken off that Cincinnati defense, or have we had three at this point? Uh, we've got two. We have not two. yet seen <clears throat> Majay Sanders, who we'll see at some point here. I compare and contrast here, by the way. We've had two guys taken off Cincinnati, okay, mm -hmm. which was a <clears throat> guaranteed lockdown awesome defense yep. all year long. And we have had two players taken off the Nebraska defense, <laughs> which, while improved, should not be mentioned in the same breath as the Cincinnati defense. That, to me, is always fascinating when I'm like, What's the difference there? What's happening? Is that coaching? Might be coaching. <laughs> <laughs> Might be, well, again, look Obviously at this. Obviously, there's talent there. Yeah. McDuffie, Karloftis, and Cook on the defensive side of the ball and Sky Moore. So they're rebuilding their defense, and they give themselves an explosive wide receiver, a very good wide receiver. So, I think we focus so much in the draft on the bad teams and say the bad teams need to get good in the draft. But I think that it's often more important for teams like the Chiefs, because we always talk about how you have to have, um, or you're put in a good situation if you have a value at quarterback. Like your quarterback, you win a championship, the quarterback in his first five years. That doesn't necessarily, that formula doesn't change once you have a franchise quarterback. You just have to get the value at other positions. So you still have to draft well when you're paying somebody a lot of money. So while we may not think about the Chiefs draft as like, oh, they better hit these picks or else they're gonna be bad. If they want to win another Super Bowl under uh, or during the next few years of Patrick Mahomes, they're going to have to nail two to three of these draft picks along the way that are late in the draft. So this is where – this is why people say you win championships at this point. This is where they need to win the draft. All these other bad teams, they're gonna, we're going to talk about whether they won or lost. Super Bowls are being decided by how the Chiefs um, – fill out the rest of their, their roster. Well, and to that point, Fielder tweeted out, I think it was last year, might have been the year before, the success that the, the Chiefs had for a window where they hit on every single draft pick. I had stats and info, look it up, and to, to take it above and beyond just a quarterback point, if you go back over the last 12 years, only one player in the entire NFL, Rob Gronkowski, has ever been the highest paid at his position and won a Super Bowl. So if you have the highest paid player at mm. any – I don't care if it's safety, I don't care if it's wide receiver, and that's important for everybody to know because we've seen how much money go out this offseason to wide receivers. We see edge rushers getting paid like crazy. If you pay somebody, 
you don't win the Super Bowl. So it becomes more important to Dominique's point than ever that you start to hit on the draft. Like paying for everybody that wants to go out and just get an A.J. Brown and pay him a bunch of money, great. That only puts more pressure on the rest of the organization to oh, yeah. get the draft right. I think that's a fair point. Um, you're stressing me out, though. You're saying you pay players, you don't win. That just, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I had palpitations. I had bubble guts before. Hey, I, I'm love. about to have an aneurysm. I'm going to be an agent. Out here I'm sorry, we're paying again. for value. Value. <laughs> that is a Super Bowl winning player, and you exactly. will pay him. You're like, yes. well, you're not going to so, win I mean, Super Bowl. I you don't know there's that. There's a high variance to the amount that <laughs> That's a high pay. variance player. I think that, to, to your point, I understand what the point you're making, but oftentimes, whoever the highest paid player is at a position changes year to year, and there have been plenty of players in the top area of their franchise or their pay structure to win championships the quarterback thing I think much is made of that that is a little bit based on randomness like there have been several quarterbacks that were very close on doorsteps who were being paid quite a bit to win a Super Bowl but I get your point the, the point same stands. number of quarterbacks in the last uh, if you take the last 10 Super Bowls the same number of quarterbacks have won the Super Bowl that accounted for more than 10 percent of their salary cap has lost. The same number of quarterbacks have appeared that have account for more than 10%. There's no economics that say that you can't pay your quarterback yeah. and win. But you're absolutely right. The only way you do that is if you yeah, get you all win. of these I drafts. Mean, this is, this yeah. is when they have to do their job, the GMs and stuff. You know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. So part of the draft is like a process driven. You're or, philosophical today. I, but I, 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 I feel like I every, every, every I time I'm it's like, you know. Well, it's got me. like the monastic hood, I'm, I'm right? Take, like, let's go macro on I this I had thing. a pretty cool shirt to wear today, but it's so cold in here that I had to go with the sweatshirt instead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, take another button down. Uh, a, cool, a cool polo shirt. Okay. Um, although I am, shout out PLL, new ESPN programming. This is my Atlas t-shirt. Shout out PLL coming to the ESPN this summer. This is PLL Atlas, one of my favorite squads. I actually like, I like them all equally. Wow. Um, Bill you, got you got one. Went, I saw, I saw oh, yeah. a little ad peeking yeah. out there. Um, I wish. Yeah, that was, that was like a... a $74 cheeseburger poking out right there from earlier. Um, what I will say, though, is... The AFC, as we all know, is so loaded. And I think we, I know I felt like 13 teams conservatively are going into this year thinking, we're going to make the playoffs. Yeah. Right? AFC West, all four teams. You've got teams like, as an example, in the AFC East, you've got the Patriots, Dolphins, Bills. I think right now, every team other than the Texans is probably saying to itself, we plan on making it to the playoffs this year. Yeah. Only seven can make it. That means at least six of them are going to be sitting there saying, we may be saying from a results standpoint, dang, like they came up short. Like, well, no, I'm just going to say, just like, we got to be like disciplined with our process, like how we're evaluating the process now and going forward. And I'm thinking about that with the draft, just because you guys talk about the Chiefs and like, all, like hey, listen, uh, the Chiefs certainly could like continue to, to, to boat race the AFC West that they have for years. But maybe, like, the division becomes a little bit tighter. I don't know. It's a, just a fascinating time right now to evaluate these processes. Processes? Processes. 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 Uh, well, one of the best teams in the AFC, when you talk about that, is the Bills, and they've just made their pick. And it's a Georgia player. <laughs> Not the one you think. James Cook uh, well, running back. Uh, I love this. Well, no, I was just, I was just making an a couple uh, deals. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, go yeah. ahead. Why do you love you, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's let the man stand on his own here because <laughs> he's got his own merits. James Cook explosive i do not think james book james cook and this is a compliment this is a good thing he is not a traditional running back this is not a traditional running back fortunately he's going to a place where i think the bill's staff has proven mm. they will put a player in a position to succeed you could line him up pretty much anywhere all right you can put him out wide they did that at georgia they put him in the slot they threw him screens all right if he finds open space and i'm like why would you not with josh allen as a threat out of the backfield you can do a lot of really interesting things with him. Good hands, too. Good hands. Oh, this is that Elvis Doomerville? Yeah. With N'Kobe Dean sliding in the draft, it's interesting to have Elvis Doomerville pop up there who, like, was the smallest. Oh, my in gosh. History. Could Elvis Doomerville give you 18 snaps right now? He <laughs> looks great, doesn't he? Yeah. But anyway, they go linebacker, and they don't go N'Kobe Dean. Nick Benito, <laughs> really Nick. talented edge rusher. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, talented edge rusher out of Oklahoma. They've had a sort of up and down um, – Recent existence in terms of developing and producing quality NFL players on the defensive side of the ball. But this guy has some quick twitch ability to him. You see him right here. Obviously, a lot of passing, a lot of offense in the uh, Big 12 as it's currently constructed and where Oklahoma is for right now. I like the player, though, here. Like, Broncos, 
This seems to me uh, – he went to the Broncos, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. I'm just making that sure. I'm, I'm starting to lose my mind here. Broncos, uh, obviously, traded away Von Miller in uh, the middle of last year. Um, and I think right now, all of a sudden, we have ourselves potential day one starter opposite of Bradley Chubb. Yeah. Oh, I'm and, into it. Yeah, they got Randy Gregory. Randy Gregory. Yeah, yeah and yeah, that's, I mean, this is – they, for a long time, have had these two edge rushers. It was Von Miller and – rotating between Marcus Lawrence or, um, I'm just sorry, uh, Chubb and they God, have Ware, not Long Lawrence. day, huh? I'm sorry, we're all starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah, have Vaughn Miller with, with uh, Ware, then they have Vaughn Miller with Chubb, and now it seems like they're moving into a new kind of era of uh, outside end rushers on a very talented defense. Yeah, kind of, kind of dude, though, that, like, if you're looking for a weak point here and something he's going to have to work on, going to have to get that weight up, going to have to keep that size, going to have to uh, understand they're going to be running at him. One of our, our buddies on the show, Matt Miller, has gone to Twitter and joined in the Nicobe Dean uh, conversation and fun. He has tweeted out something that I, I think is, is of note here. Is it says, NFL source just text me, either Nicobe Dean has hor- horrible medicals mm-hmm. or is a serial killer. I just don't get it. I don't think he's a serial killer. I, I mean, I don't know. I watch a lot of Investigative ID. I haven't seen anything about it, so I, I feel pretty safe on that. A lot it, of Dateline podcasts in my life. He is too smart to get caught. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He is too smart to get caught. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, that, I, I mean, I, I didn't bring it up, but as in the back of my mind, it's like, is there something else that we don't know? But yeah. you don't want to, like, speculate about that sort of stuff because normally that stuff comes out. But there has to be something to explain what's going on here. We'll find out at some point. Maybe, or maybe the teams are just doing a better job. We've seen like a lot of surprises. Maybe we don't got a lot of loose lips this year like we normally do. Because there's been a, quite a few surprises in this draft. I think this comes down to, though, one of our opening conversations. It was about how this draft, once you got through the top eight or ten, was going to be really hard to predict because it's a bunch of people that – have different value to different people and have different sort of flair to different people. And I I always use the what flavor of ice cream is the best, right? Like that's such a variable. And this felt like a very variable draft. So it it does speak to what Field was talking about. Some guys super early, some guys not off the board. It is surprising, though, to me when you see N'Kobe Dean or when you see the quarterback sitting around because I think at some point you look at it even if – like now, even if you didn't really want a quarterback coming in – you're hitting the third round, and they're all available. Like, sort of, yeah, like the, the the hypothetically, like the number of teams that could be suitors for Malik Willis. Like, I'd almost be considering someone like Malik Willis to play defense from somebody else, right? Like, I'm going to draft Malik Willis so my division rival doesn't. If I don't have a great backup quarterback situation, yeah. I mean, considering Sorry. his his tools and how valuable a good quarterback is at this point, even if you have a quarterback, it. If you have a quarterback that you're not sure about, you have one of those mid-range quarterbacks, the value of bringing Malik Willis in. When is Arizona picking? Yeah, oh, they better, they better damn not. Well, just just, hey, listen, (laughs) we'll we'll get some, some, uh, we'll get a look at Arizona. We're about to hit the third round, and we're going to be joined by one of our favorite guests, of course. But we're in Vegas, which means we also got to get in a little bit of fun around some racing. It's time for Formula One. I am weaseling my way into that to hang out. They're shutting down the strip for F1. All right, Diana Rossini, one of our absolute favorites, going to join us, and we'll get Diana's thoughts on everything. Diana, make this whole draft make sense. Like, what? so far, we're sitting here reacting to everything, trying to figure it out. What has surprised you? I have, a, a like, a literally, like, a list. Because yes. there's, there's been things that are going on that – I'm kind of shaking my head, like, what? All right, like, the obvious thing that we're all talking about is the quarterback uh, situation, the fact that just one has been taken, and we're through the second round here, starting the third, dying to know which teams here are now perhaps maybe changing their mind on their pick and thinking, maybe we go quarterback. Uh, You know, the the team that I get to cover a lot, and and Fitz, I know you're, you're a fan of them, I was thinking Titans. Maybe this is the chance where they they go for like a Malik Willis now. Uh, I think this is going to be really interesting. This is one of those uh, once we get to see the behind the scene videos 
uh, after the draft. I, I want to see more now than I do probably at the top because this, this has really become such a story. And, and guys, I, we've all been on the shows talking and listening to those that have been talking to people that are making these decisions as well as our analysts that, that are studying this day in and day out. And we, we knew it was on a really strong quarterback draft, but I don't think we thought it would be like this. So uh, for me, that's, that, that's obviously the big story for me. The other one is I no longer want to say Lady Luck when we're referencing good luck. I just want to say Ravens Luck. I mean, when it comes <laughs> to the draft, like, of course, guys, right? Of course they get the guys that they get. And I'd say for them that they're on my list of just, I'm just impressed. Um, I think Detroit is having a really strong draft, uh, which we, we kind of assumed that they needed to make, well, we didn't assume, we knew that they needed to make these moves. And the Jets kicking some butt here. The Big Apple has been buzzing today with the Jets and Giants obviously having a great first round uh, and they continue. And the Chiefs, I just like the names of they're wide receivers now, right? We got Juju, MVS, Sky. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. my superficial take on the night. But, yeah, so so yeah. those are like my three just big things as I'm watching here. Okay, so we've been talking about N'Kobe Dean. Have you heard anything that gives any indication on why he's falling? Like, wh what's happening? That's the one I've been – it's – yeah, I'd say like 20 minutes ago I said it just out loud to myself. I know it's kind of weird. But just like, where is he? What's going on? Uh, so – yeah, I, I've been talking um, similarly to, to to what our colleague Matt Miller had been reporting a bit lately uh, in the last few minutes just about the medical thing. I, I do think there's an injury element here. There's There's got to be something bigger. I haven't been able to confirm that just yet. Um, I'm definitely going to get to work to it, though, on the 3rd, and, and I'll certainly pass along so you guys can, can get some more info, and I'll probably tweet it, too. Yeah, of, of course. Uh, Diana, one more real quick for you. Uh, you did a great job with the Titans, obviously, as we uh, we all watched the A.J. Brown stuff go down. Uh, Mike Vrabel was a little contentious yeah. in the uh, in the press conference last night. Uh, it, what's the blowback from the Titans for trading away such a great player? Yeah, they've been really um, strange today. A little, It felt almost like a little emotionally hungover talking to the organization. I talked to A.J. as well. Uh, I talked to a bunch of the Titans players, talked to some people in the front office. Um, and everyone has a little bit of that. I can't believe it happened. Like, what What just, did we just do this? Um, but at the same time, there's an understanding that it, it's really simple. Everyone keeps saying, why did they do this? Why did they do this? It's simple. It's just money. It's, it's, it's really as simple as that. The Titans did not want to pay as much as A.J. Brown's camp was asking. And, and, and Brown wasn't going to be happy on, on what they were willing to give him so it was it was they parted ways and from what I can gather from talking to everyone today it seems like everyone's now cool um I did speak to one source who had told me that just a few days ago uh AJ's camp basically just said you know we want to we want to trade which really is what got this thing in motion and it all went down yesterday everything came together yesterday the trade and his contract which is pretty incredible field. I know you know better than anybody how this stuff all works. Um, so the fact that they were able to do this in like a 24-hour window is, is tremendous. And, and man, the Eagles. Uh, I have so many family and friends in the Philadelphia area, and they are insane today because of this addition. And, and you got to give a lot of credit to Harry Roseman. Well, how about your husband too, Diana, right? I mean, like you, you live with an Eagles fan. How, he must be on cloud nine right now. No, he's a disaster because of Joel Embiid. I don't know if you saw the news about him, uh, but he's dealing with a significant that injury. Is, yeah. I'm, I'm so we're sorry in a separate that. room, and just obviously I'm working, um, and I just heard like a yelp. I'm like, what? What is uh -oh. that? And he's like, Joel. I know. Well, it's like nobody yeah. cares. We're watching the draft. Oh, oh yeah, no, Diana, I was just going to say, he's a Philly fan. He's insane every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Very true. Uh, believe me. I could I could fill this whole show for seven hours with Let's what go. is wrong with people from Philly, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not because oh, I man. made the decision. Nobody makes you marry people. I said oh, yes gosh. that day, and I live oh. with it every day now. Diana, you're the best, my friend. Get back to work. Let us know what you find out. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Thanks. I've been watching you guys. It's awesome. Great work as usual.
Oh, you're the best. I appreciate you, my friend. All right, so a uh, few picks have gone off the board. Obviously, we have Luke Fortner, uh, the center out of Kentucky, going to the Jags at the top of the third round. Brian Asamoah, uh, the uh, Oklahoma linebacker that I really thought was – like, I wanted him to be with my beloved Raiders. And then Joshua Azuda, the uh, guard out of North Carolina, goes to the Giants. So those are our three picks. Dominique, you were, you were pointing. What were you pointing at? The, the uh, Brian Asamoah draft pick. Mm -hmm. I just brought up his comparables to N'Kobe Dean just because. How's that looking? Oh, goodness. That is a very small circle and a very big. <laughs> they are similar. So, yeah. as far as being undersized, he's one inch taller than N'Kobe Dean. They weigh they're about the same amount. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I think if we were wondering if it's about size, I think we know that it's not about size. It may be about injury. It may be about. It's got to be injury on N'Kobe yeah. Dean. Again, I had heard consistently that like it wasn't a major like a single single major medical issue but maybe there's something that we are going you know the combine you always discover stuff that you weren't previously aware of so that stuff normally leaks though so i, I mean uh, the yeah. fact that nobody knows yeah is like yeah. mind-blowing well uh, and again my dean is better than him <laughs> like well, it, well, it also awesome oh yeah i was gonna say like in terms of just just play recognition Okay, just yeah. play recognition in terms of how they go. That's not the same universe. Yeah. Dean is better player than him. Like, flat out better player than him on a better defense, playing against tougher teams. He's better, and he's the same size, and they did draft him, so it must be interesting. I mean, yeah, at, at, at this point, it's got to be something. The yeah. Browns pick is in, by the way, and to the point Diana made, uh, you know, I obviously lived in Nashville for 20-plus years. I know a lot of Titans fans. The Titans are after the Browns, and it, I, I'm telling you, if you take the temperature on Titans fans – they wanted Desmond Ritter. Like, they, they wanted a quarterback in the first round. Now they're all sitting here in the third round. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. I'm just saying the Titans fans are starting to get really excited because they're looking around thinking, oh, we could have somebody. Like, I, this third round could get wild with these. Like, I don't know what you do. with Even if you weren't in the market, I don't know what you do. The Browns pick is in, by the way, so we'll get you that field. Are you a little surprised at this point? Like uh, By the quarterbacks yeah. or by what? Yeah, I totally, of course I'm surprised by the quarterbacks. I thought one quarterback would go in the first round. I thought that, like, remember we let out the show, and I was like, oh, a bunch of trade-ups to see Matt Corral and Desmond Ritter and Malik Willis. It'll just – next thing you know, it'll be ten picks in and we'll have three quarterbacks taken. And, you know, I remember talking to somebody who's – um, somebody close to Desmond Ritter today, and it was sort of like, hey, listen, I know it's disappointing to not be drafted last night, but the good news is at least I know what's going to happen today. And now I'm like, are we sure? We got the Miz the up there, Miz. by the way. Miz We've got there. the Miz, baby. We've got uh, some notable quarterbacks drafted in the third round on the screen for you. Russ, Joe Montana, yeah. Danny White, Dan Fouts. Ever heard of them any? Yeah, they're Danny, fine. Ken Anderson. They're fine. Fran Tarkenton. <laughs> decent. And there's good. There's, there's he's decent. This is, yes, and, and the Miz is out there getting the crowd. The Miz is trying to take that mic off the Fired stand. up. He is trying to walk The there. pick is in for the Browns. It is Martin Emerson out of Mississippi State, cornerback. So uh, the Browns go uh, aggressively uh, defense here and uh, try and get the, uh, a corner off the board. Do you like this one? I, I like this one just because Mississippi State played well against the pass pretty consistently this year and against really good competition. So, yeah, as, a, as you're, like, solid – conventional purchase here on the draft market. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a good fan. size here uh, for Martin Emerson. Um, Prize by the Browns, to be honest with you, though. Like, when I think about their roster, I don't think cornerback in terms hmm. of a need. They just paid Denzel Ward all the money in the world, obviously. Actually been pretty solid. Like, some of the players they've drafted recently. Most surprised here. Is this a best available pick to them? Probably a best available pick yeah. to them. Well, and we said yesterday, in certain divisions particularly, I will never fault you for having secondary depth, right? Like, they're in a division yeah. that has a lot of quality offenses. So, you know, you, you pick up some depth there. I, I don't – that kind of makes it – the Titans quickly put their pick in. I don't know what that means. Can we get a quarterback? Please! Please give and me a quarterback. And I will say this. This is important for, for a corner, any DB, who's going to be working in the NFL these days. He's – an extremely smart defender when it comes to how he is or how he moves in relation to the wide receiver, i.e., uh, this is not a dude who's going to draw a whole lot of flags. Um, Bobby Trees on this, well, not actually Robert Woods, but a guy wearing a Bobby Trees jersey. The Titans, uh, the Titans pick is in. They put it in quickly. Uh, they have eight picks remaining in this draft. The Titans have a lot of equity here. Uh, in this draft. So we'll see where they go. Quarterback? Did, did quarterback? They traded did, a wide receiver and drafted his replacement in the first round. So Where's this from? Yeah. They, they get some coupons? They've got like... 
way too many picks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they, they've got a bunch they of them. They came into the draft. At one point, this they seems were like they brought picks. some in the pocket. <laughs> Their offensive line had some struggles this year, too. So, you know, they've got some big decisions to make there over the course of the next year, too. Major struggles, Fitz. Major struggles. <laughs> wow. That's Harry. Just in the, like, Harry, you can just come on up here and talk. Hey, oh, why not? It's Petta Frere. Uh, Nicholas out of the yep. offensive Ohio tackle State. out of Ohio State. Harry, I'm, glad. I'm just going to let you I'm talk because you, you, you have something I'm to say about this offensive off line. I'm glad. For the Tennessee Titans because they, they weren't good um, protecting the quarterback last year. Now, on paper, they had one of the better offensive lines, but it didn't come to fruition last year at all. So, them going offensive line here. They ranked 24th in pass rush win rate last year as an offensive line in the league. That is not good enough. Then you lose a guy. I know this is a tackle, but you lose um, Roger Sofel yeah, to, 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 to the cut. Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Hey, let yeah. me let this seat down a little bit, too. <laughs> Do you like this pick? Jeez. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I, I, I'll be curious to see where Pettifrer ends up. Um, they have Terrell Lewan at left tackle. I mean, they're paying Taylor Lewan a ton of money, right? I, yeah, I'd be surprised if they move off from Taylor, though, right? I, I would think so. He's a, obviously a big part of their culture, a big part of the Nashville community, obviously. He's one of the boys. Shout out to the boys. By the way, I don't know. I'm not shouting was... out the boys. Will Compton didn't text me back last week. Well, I texted Will Compton, gave him a compliment. He didn't text ex- me back. Can someone explain to me how it's the NFL draft and Will Compton hasn't been signed yet? <laughs> he's been he's been available since yeah, like a, this like January. No one signed like him. That. Like I wonder if the NFL if NFL teams actively care about winning or not. The proof is in the pudding. I mean, <laughs> no, they don't. What I'm trying to tell you is they I'm do not. I'm here looking at uh, you know I mean Nicobe Dean or Will Compton. Like where are we gonna go with this one? Uh, That's a good point. Nicobe Dean we and Will Compton, the two best linebackers available. Shout out the boys. Oh um, we're anyways. into we're we're. I also can't get an invite to the bus. Go ahead. We're into the dra- into the third round, and we haven't a- even acknowledged that this is where you find the true ballers. No one has pointed out the fact that the best football players in the draft always come in the third round. You don't need to Google Especially where me. You don't. You don't sounds, sounds you don't, good to me, Donovan. You, know, you don't need to Google where me and Harry were drafted. It doesn't matter. You I'm think it's a coincidence <laughs> the two black guys are sitting beside each other now? It's not wow. a coincidence. Speaking <laughs> of nothing shouted. related to that, <laughs> just to make us less uncomfortable, third, third Chad Muma, linebacker. Okay. Yeah. Another oh, linebacker oh. who's gone. I'm changing the subject. Oh. All right, both thugs. Uh, Chad Muma, <laughs> the linebacker out of Wyoming. But I, I wanted to have this conversation with y'all, man, because I, I do believe the Kobe D not being taken, there has to be something else yeah, I that think. we don't know or, or anyone is saying right now because you look at the competition, you look at them on film, everything matches up. Uh, you look at his measurables, okay, question mark there. But at the end of the day, when I'm looking at a guy, I believe in the football film. And we say see ball, get ball, that was the Kobe Dean for me. Yeah, it was uh, great. So I, it, Something's not adding up, and it's just, or something that we just don't know. The Bears are on the clock. Who is Muma? Anybody have thoughts on Muma? Uh, another another good athlete, by the way, Montana. Um, not quite the level of Tori Anderson, but Montana's actually been kind of a pipeline recently for NFL players. Obviously, Josh Allen being the best, but a couple of years ago, Logan Wilson comes out in the third round. Cincinnati Bengals, here we are. Tr- uh, Chad Muma also picked in the third, third round. We're in the third round, right? Yeah, we are. Yes. Um, and the Jaguars, by the way, have reshaped their linebacking group in a massive, massive way this offseason. First round of the draft, Devin Lloyd. Third round of the draft, Chad Muma. Foye Luwakon gets three years and $45 million Woo! in free agency. This Get that back. Well, he but he, he's worth every single dollar. No he's a good player. Yeah, he's every a good player. Single dollar. Contrary to what Dominique thinks, I love it when players get paid. I don't know. You was in here arguing against people getting money. Huh? I'm just saying you got to draft right couple. when you pay people. All right, Dominique, that's all. Like, <laughs> Oh, Lord. Mm, yeah. Good Lord. Yeah. I, I will not stand here and allow you to take now, money out of my guy's pockets. Look, we've got a, a, a shot of the, the fans that we can see in the studio, and there's a guy wearing, like, a bear's head with a bunch of makeup on. Stop, bears! I love all of that, y'all. Like, I'm a face pink guy. Let's go for it. But the Vegas heat is not going to be friendly to that. Like, let's just be – like, how are you <laughs> – what are you coating that paint with that it is not melted on? Because I by feel now – like you're not – like, when you're doing that, you're not, like, considering the element just in general. You're just sort of like, I'm so committed to the bit that it could be Arctic chill or it could be 90 degrees out and you're just going to do it. Right? I don't think that's true. Like, I think I'm the person most likely at this table to do that. Okay. And I would definitely consider the temperature. Like, I, you know, th- there's a spot for me where I'm like, no. I, like, what am I – is it going to melt off? Like, if I'm going to put this all over this pretty face, like, I got to make sure that I'm doing – what? Dominique doesn't. I mean, no, I think yeah. yeah. I, mean, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't describe you as pretty. That's all. I was uh, like, I dashingly good looking. Like, yeah. Particularly handsome. I know. Uh, I, aggressively average. Well, I, I, <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> aggressive. <laughs> high variance of average, right? High variance looking. Like, Y'all should have put Harry next to me. It's all trouble now. <laughs> you put him next to me, what and happened? now it's just trouble oh, for the rest of the happened? show. Do you know what, Dominique? <laughs> It's a satchel. All right, so Dominique Foxworth, Harry Douglas, I'm Jason Fitz, oh, Field Gates, yep. uh, Spencer Hall getting a little breather. Uh, we are going to be with you all the way to the last A pick. little breather? Spence is not little. <laughs> and it shows off the rails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off the rails. What the, the hell? The rails. It's off the rails. Harry must have had some extra Sprite while he was out of the room because he came back a little uh, bubbly. That's all I'm saying. Oh, uh, the pick is in for the Burrs. Ooh, you know, I like see, this uh, one. Where they go with this one? I like this one. Valus Jones yes, Jr., yes, yes. one of the best players of football in his hands in this year's class. Wide receivers got some returnability as well. I think this player has a chance to make a pretty legitimate mark on this offense because, let's be honest, this guy, I mean, their offense is not loaded with wideouts. You see here, started his career at USC before finishing it off at Tennessee. Explosive after the catch right there. I'm in on Bayless Jones. I am in. Yeah, I like, I like him too. Really uh, good in the return game. Me and Don, game. we talked about speed earlier. This is a guy who ran a 4-3-1. Mm, uh, mm, I think mm. the system at Tennessee, that offensive system is so weird. You don't really see the natural just uh, route tree based on the offensive system, but you just put the ball in this guy's hands and he gonna do the rest. Mm. That's yeah, I mean, all that you need to do. That system you mentioned was about like quantity, right? Like, yes. Tennessee was about how many plays, plays can we run, run, how much uh, how much speed can we do it with? Like, it's not air raid, but it is air raid in some ways. So like that, it, it was nice to see him shine in that. But boy, I, that was much different than what he'll be asked to be doing in the NFL. Four, three, one. Slow. Can we Man. acknowledge to like Man. most of the people Man. that are sitting at home looking at speed? Most of, yeah, not to back up. Don't let them get on your toes now. Most of the people sitting at home talking about speed like need to understand that like a 400 pound NFL player can outrun them like when they're running for their lives. Like, yeah, and I think the reason why I'm so uh, like. <laughs> Dom, this is you. <laughs> you better, better give him the a cushion. The man is on your damn toes. <laughs> you better give him a cushion. <laughs> the reason why I'm so like demonstrative when I talk about speed is because when we talk about the numbers, it doesn't sound like a big difference. But it is a big difference. So like you hear 4-3-1 four, versus 4-4 four, four, or versus 4-5. The, the speed of the game, everything happens so fast. And those tenths of a second or even hundredths of a second in some cases, it feels like... Uh, entirely different game when you're out there playing and I know Tyreek Hill's name comes up often when we talk about that type of speed where it's game changing and you have to design your entire defense around that because there's a difference between having a guy who's going to move the sticks and having a guy who's going to change the scoreboard and when we are in film study and when we are making game plans that's the hierarchy we start with guys that's going to change the scoreboard when they touch the ball if you run 4-3-1 one missed tackle, nobody on the field can catch you, no matter the angle, a missed tackle is score a touchdown. So, like, that, that stuff is game-changing. So, I put a play up of, of Mr. Jones on my, on my Twitter, right, when I was Mr. watching this Jones. film. <laughs> <laughs> Me and, and a, a fan said, well, it looks like a pretty easy lane for him to be running through. I said, yeah, but you're not a 4-3-1. Yeah, he makes it look <laughs> easy. I said, he him hitting look... that hole at 4-3-1 yeah. is different from you hitting a hole at 6-5-1. <laughs> yeah, it makes it look easy. Yeah, so that's... if you take a look at the Bears' picks, Kyler Gordon, corner out of Washington. Love him. Brisker, the safety out of Penn State, and now Jones, a wide receiver out of Tennessee. So they address the back and they address the weapons. It feels like the Bears come in and uh, they, they make themselves a little more explosive in a couple of different areas. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'd say so. The kind of feel uh, the two or three biggest needs on their roster needed more wide receiver help and then needed safety and secondary help. And bam, bam, bam. I wouldn't be surprised if all three of these guys have a chance to legitimately start as soon as day one. Now, the Seahawks are on the clock, which we have no media times here right now, as she was with us yesterday. Uh, but there were some people that were trying to mock Malik Willis to the Seahawks in the first round. Right. The Seahawks are on the clock in the third round. And while they may like their quarterback room, at some point you just got to look around and wonder, like, yeah, but we because even if you draft now, somebody in the third round and you don't like them, you just draft somebody else next so year. I agree, but like we're at the point now where I'm just not sure that like any of the teams that we have been saying like makes sense for a quarterback. Like, why are they inclined to do it now? Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm not counting. That's what I should say. Well, I mean, they're inclined to do it now because the cost now is not inside. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's and the uh, the pressure to play them and all that stuff. All that changes. You bring you draft a quarterback in the third round. Yeah. There is no expectation that he's going to play. But the challenging thing is I think these quarterbacks are a little different because we've been talking about them so much. It's not going to be a regular third-round quarterback. 
if you bring Malik Willis into camp or Desmond Ritter into camp and your starting quarterback starts to struggle or probably is going to struggle, then there's going to be calls to have those guys play because we've been talking about them as first rounders or second rounders for the entirety of the draft. Is there a spot, though, like what we always yell at bad teams in the beginning of the draft, we're like, don't reach, just follow the board. Yeah. Well, maybe it's possible that by now, if you follow the board, Malik Willis may not have been there for you in the first or second round, but you're looking around the board now and you're like, well, actually the best guy on the board is this quarterback, so maybe you take him. I mean, uh, the chances, that, according to ESPN's draft predictor, that Malik Willis would be available entering the third round was less than 1%. Matt Corral was 2%. Desmond Ritter, 4%. I mean, you just talk about the, the chances. It just didn't really seem to be something that made sense. Here's something unique, though, about the next three picks. If, you, if we don't have any trades, the Seahawks potentially in talks about a quarterback. The Colts potentially talks about having a quarterback and the Falcons. Those are the next three teams that are picking. And you could probably see the quarterbacks go in any one of those three spots. All right. So let's see what the pick is She's in for gripping. the Seahawks. We'll see where they go. suit right there, huh? Oh, this is a nice mm -hmm. suit. Can't see the T-shirt, but can't see it either with the, the suspense. The suspense. <laughs> He has on that Uncle Jim. Abraham Jules, Lucas, Uncle offensive Jules tackle out, out of Washington <laughs> State. Abe Lucas, really solid right tackle. Right tackle only in college. Never a left tackle. A guy that uh, plays in a system where they throw it a ton. He's got endless pass protection reps. Seattle came into this week with no starting left tackle and no starting right tackle. They have now used two of their first four picks, three picks, on <clears throat> Charles Cross to open the night and Abe Lucas. Like, those are legit two starters right away for Seattle. Really, really, really solid. And, you know, you, Dominique, you mentioned earlier, sort of jokingly, like, third-round players come out. Like, I feel like every time we did draft calls and all of us that were talking about the draft this week, like, you can get quality offensive linemen that come in day one in, in, in round three. Like, that, that makes a ton of sense. Well, to be honest, a lot of people, you, you want to hit on your first and second round draft picks, and it, and it sucks when you don't. But the heart of your team is in round three to seven and free agents. That's the, the, those guys are the hearts of your team. The first and second rounders are the guys that you just, you know, that gets you over the hump with those guys. But the, the, the root of your team, the heart of those guys come in round three through seven. I was thinking earlier, I wasn't out here when you guys, um, when the Seahawks got Kenneth Walker. But the interesting thing that we talked about, oh, we got somebody. Kids on stilts. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> kid on somebody's shoulders somebody's doing a pick. Like this weird thing. That's how like I tried to get in into the, the club last night oh, and I didn't get in. Are they joking? I uh, hope so. Oh, no. I don't know if they were joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to make the point that. Are they joking? Was, yeah, this is a joke. This oh, has got to okay. be a joke. It's all choreographed, I hope. I'm up here laughing. Don't make it. Don't <laughs> <laughs> I think I was going to make the point that when they got Kenneth Walker, Charles Cross is not, uh, we all talk about how Charles Cross is not a run blocking guy, something they need to work on. Like, it just was the interesting combination that Seahawks fans felt like maybe they were going to modernize their offense because they got a pass block and tackle. Then they went and ruined <laughs> all that hope <laughs> by drafting a big back who can't pass protect. You, you were a thousand percent right. Like, that. that's sort of the benefit of the draft of the, the Seahawks get organizationally. A tight end uh, out of Virginia, Jelani Woods, Great pick. is the pick for the Colts. Why? Uh, I just think he, the athleticism is there. Um, I think they need another guy, and uh, Matt Ryan, a guy who loves tight ends and knows how to get them the football, especially in space so they can run with it um, and throw on the ball with anticipation. Uh, I thought at some point the Packers or the Denver Broncos would have got this guy, especially losing Noah Fant in that trade to get Russell Wilson. But I think this is a decent pick for the, for the Colts. There is a um, athletic metric called relative athletic score. Jelani Woods is like the most athletic tight end in like 30 years. Wow. He's a freak athlete. Started his college career at Oklahoma State. Was okay there. Was better at Virginia last year. Ridiculous. Um, by the way, I need to shout, I think I, I, think I saw Megan, who apparently I just referred to the three players in Josh Allen, Logan Wilson, and Chad Muma haven't gone to Montana. I meant Wyoming. Oh. So, huh. my right. bad. Sorry. I confused my two. Would that be because they're the Rocky Mountain region or no? <laughs> we have a quarterback off Whoa. the board. The Atlanta Falcons just selected Desmond Ritter, quarterback, Cincinnati. Here we go. And this makes perfect sense because you brought in a guy like Marcus Mariota, right? Uh, right. These two guys have the same skill set. 
So I always get upset with NFL teams when they have a starting quarterback, but the backup is nothing like the starter. So now when the backup has to go in the game, you have to alter your entire game plan and what you like to do as an offense to complement that guy. Here in this situation, you have Marcus Mariota with all the same intangibles that Desmond Ritter has or vice versa. So now if, 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 if he goes down, now you have a guy that you just plug in there. You don't have to change the system up. You also, and you know this from playing with him, Marcus is the sort of guy that will take somebody under his wing. It will show somebody what you want him to know. It will teach somebody. Like, you could say whatever you want about Marcus Mariota's Nicest career. Nicest teammate there is I've nothing ever had in my say. life. Right. I like Him and a guy named Shan Schillinger that, uh, that played at Montana. The yeah, two nicest teammates I ever, ever you're had. You're talking about your football teammates, not your ESPN teammates. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, football teammates. Yes, yes, yes. Because you know, I love Did them. they get to go to the club with you, unlike some? <laughs> well, me and Spencer had a good time. <laughs> uh, we're sorry that you couldn't be a part of it. Yeah, well, maybe maybe you won't tonight after you body shamed him once you went to Tinkle. No, it doesn't bother a guy like Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> It, nobody hollered at me. I was at Dre's last night. You could have came with me. You was there? Yeah. I was in there. Oh. Me and Spencer was in there for real. For real? Uh, yeah. all right, how are your thumbs? Your thumbs okay? Because <laughs> I didn't get a text. It was like, hey, man, I'm with Dre's. L- okay. Little baby put on a hell of a performance. Oh, it was outstanding. Um, that's I'm going to be Ritter. a little baby about that. Go ahead. <laughs> that's me, Ritter. Um, yeah. This is like, I don't want to say the steal of the draft, but this feels like a steal. Yeah. Like, this guy's... Uh, Potential starting quarterback in the NFL, which, like, if you have that potential to get that guy in the third round uh, is a a great acquisition, and they're in position so that they can do it again next year if it doesn't work out. So at some point, he's clearly going to – they don't have to rush him out there. We've made we've said a number of times about the Falcons that they've decided to be in rebuild mode. They made that quite clear when they traded away Matt Ryan. So – they can take their time to de- develop him and see if he has anything in this first year. And I-, I think it's a great pick. We have a trade. The Denver Broncos have traded the 75th pick to Houston. Houston's now on the clock. Houston gives up 80 and 162 in return. Yep. So the Broncos move back five. So, uh, But in the meantime, Desmond Ritter is the second quarterback off the board. I, 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 I'm third round or not, do we agree with that second quarterback off the board? I mean, at this point, does it matter? I don't. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters, right? Yeah. I mean, I I thought Malik Willis was the guy because none of these guys – Malik Willis had the highest ceiling. And so – Maybe not. uh, I mean, based on our analysis, generally the consensus was Malik has a small chance, but he is the only guy who has a chance to be like – uh, top tier, like top of the league type of quarterback. And so if I'm going to take a risk – that's what I'm going to take a risk with. I think people project wow. the rest of those guys, best case scenario is like mid-tier starter. Did you give me a wow? Yeah, just the whole class, man. Like 74th overall for a guy that some people had going to the Falcons with the 8th overall pick in their mock drafts. Not just a good reminder, like quarterbacks are a hard position to draft and evaluate properly, yeah. even when you have all the resources. And maybe in like the pre-draft process for us in the media as well. Yeah. But the NFL clearly thought very little of this draft class amongst the quarterbacks. Like, clearly, like Malik Willis, I mean, who knows at this point, but he's in danger of going in the fourth round. Yeah. Day three pick. Who think, some people were literally mocking two overall. One of, Lions. I, I just wonder, though, if that also has a little to do with what everybody expects from next year's draft class. Like, so why reach this year if you think next year? I think, so I also think that wow. we are in a place in the league where there are a lot more starting level quarterbacks and good quarterbacks than I think we've ever had. I can't remember a time where there, there were, that this many teams had quarterbacks that they were comfortable yeah, with. Yeah, I agree. That's a good point. You know what I mean? So, like, yep. the league isn't as starved as it's ever been um, right now. So, the reaches aren't there, and those guys, their talent, and you're right, the next year, there's, that's just another way to look at it for why it's happening. By the way, Christian Harris, linebacker out of Alabama, was just selected by the Texans. It should be noted. We haven't said it in five minutes, so I'll say it again. N'Kobe Dean still sitting around, just just for everybody's edification. Another mock draft miss. Uh, Christian Harris, though, uh, goes here. Uh, 79 tackles in 2021, 11 and a half tackles for loss, five and a half sacks. Really good linebacker, really productive linebacker for Alabama. Small. This is like the exact type of linebacker that we're seeing the NFL gravitate towards, which is guys with more speed and less size. You don't have these 250-pound linebackers anymore. You have guys that are 225, 230 pounds. Christian Harris, second straight Alabama player that the Texans have now taken. 
a guy who you would imagine is going to compete for starting reps almost right away. We're not going to talk about them much other than they're losing most likely this year, but I continue to be impressed with the foundation that Nick Casario has been laying in Houston. They're doing smart things consistently. It's going to take a lot more smart things. It's going to take eventually either the development of Davis Mills or a different quarterback, but they are making strides in Houston. It's a credit to, I mean, Nick Casario's been criticized, I think, from day one that he got that job. Like, we were surprised by it, and he's been, we've been all very critical of him. But you have to give him some credit. He's doing a good job right now rebuilding this team. I think that speaks to how, I mean, we, we talk about these jobs as if they're incredibly difficult, but you get surrounded by the right people, and you're... Yeah you're smart and take your time, like you can do a good job at this, even if you are not the shoe in for it, because he certainly was not. Well, and I will say to your point with the Texans, and we said this earlier, I don't remember if you were on set at the time field, like at some point, if you're the Texans, you got to make the whole th- whole roster better, right? So yeah. if you're doing that and Davis Mills turns out to not be the guy, cool. Next year you can find the guy. But if yeah. you're putting whoever the next guy is in a much better situation. Well, and if you look at the, I mean, the Texans right now certainly are in a position that, like, they're probably not going to be great next year, right? Like, and that's that's fine. And if they aren't great next year, then they just go ahead and take one of these guys. It's going to be really good. All right. We've Bryce got Young, a, CJ Stroud. We've got a tweet coming in from Pete Thamel, one of our buddies, uh, uh, with apparently a little bit more insight on everything that's happening with N'Kobe Dean. And uh, the tweet itself, you got it? as you can see on the screen, Go get your magnifying you. glass. I had, I had LASIK, too. Texted with some teams about the N'Kobe Dean slide. They said that the combination of his size, medicals, and how the combination of those project his durability had prompted this slide. Dean never missed a game at UGA, but the confluence of those factors looms here. So the question becomes, gentlemen, I mean, are we buying that? Like, that's a, that's, you know, I'm, I'm looking at that situation saying, he never missed a game, though. Yeah. I mean, I, we have to buy it. I don't know what else we can say. Yeah. We can project it. And you can take the size out of it because there have been a couple linebackers drafted um, that are pretty much identical to him size-wise. So that is not true. I think it must be the medical. And they are whatever formulas they're using based on the information that they get is – projecting that he's not worth the risk, which is shocking to me. I mean, that's that just feels like one of those things that everybody's going to look back later and be like, how did this ha-, right? the context around yeah. all of this? But, yeah. you know, to, to something that Harry said earlier, because, I, I mean, there's a real human element for these kids uh, sure. uh, that, that sucks, I think it just sucks, right? Like, because you think about the number of people involved in this draft process, the people you talk to within a team, your agents, your family, everybody has a hope and a dream and an expectation. And then all of a sudden, through no fault of your own, with no control over what you're doing, you're just sitting there watching something you dreamed about just start to fade away. And, like, the human element – like, I understand what you're saying, Harry, that the great ones use it as a chip. I just – it breaks my heart that somebody has to go through it. Because, like, the, the great ones are used it as a chip, but there's just a human element of not everybody can can recover from yes what that no. does. I agree to a deg- – I agree to an extent, like – Obviously, I'm bummed for these kids that have to wait it out, and especially the ones that are in the green room or in, you know, here at the draft that have to wait it out. On the other hand, like, we on, the, on this side are the ones that are saying where they're going to go in the draft without actually being responsible for where these players go in the draft, right? And, like, I hope that they are all able to, they are all able to take it and turn it into a chip or manifest that chip. And, like, at the end of the day, you know, you hope that you have the right people in your corner that are telling you, like, Point zero 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 one percent of the population has a chance to play in the NFL. I don't Whether matter, Phil. That doesn't matter. I'm sorry. In this, in that moment, like, I think you're you're comfortable with Too bumped? Pl- with playing in a in a game and losing because you have you participate in that. Like, you have some impact on it. I think what is more painful right now is like it's out of your control, and like it has to hurt. Mm. And I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. It has to hurt. I, they, no one's going to admit to it. But, you like, know better than I. I mean, but that's a big slide, a though. A guy yes. who was potentially supposed to go first round, now you're in the third round. And what are we, halfway through the third? Are we halfway through the third yeah, right now? Yeah, And, and you're on the brinks third. of yeah. going, possibly going in the fourth or fifth? Like, that's, and, that's and tough. The number of people that these guys talk to before they come out for the draft to figure out what to expect and how to expect it, like, I don't know. You're, you're, you're feeling like... It, 
it's hard not to feel like you're letting people down. Like, yeah. it, even when I've talked to, like, Olympians and everything that won bronze medals, and they'll tell you what a failure it felt like, <laughs> which is such a wild thing. Like, it, I just, that's what – it breaks my heart as a human being for Nicobe Dean and everybody that's involved in this, and Malik Willis and everybody that's involved in his camp, and all the people that are just sitting here waiting for a name to be called. Travis oh. Jones is another name we were waiting <laughs> look, for. Look at the organization, that was mocked though. in the first <laughs> look, round, and he's the now a Baltimore the Raven. Right. Like – uh, Unbelievable. Travis Jones out of Connecticut, smaller school, obviously, but somebody field that was rising on a lot of draft boards in the last month. Powerful, had a really good senior bowl. Obviously, Yuhan's program has been down since Dan Orlovsky left, but um, <laughs> was really down this past year. So he got all the attention of former offensive linemen or of opposing offensive linemen and still found a way to kind of hold his own. And we thought that the Ravens might be a fit for Jordan Davis. Yeah. This is Jordan Davis in third round form. Yeah. In case Pretty there was any que- in case there was any question whether the Ravens were going to get Jordan Davis or not, I think this makes it pretty clear that the Eagles had the right intel yep. when they traded up to steal Jordan Davis because totally. he was certainly going to be a Raven. But yeah, I think the this guy fits into that defense quite well. Um, the point you made that's really interesting is he's going to have it might be a little easier for him in the NFL. Like, he's going to have the pressure off of him in a way that he's not yeah, accustomed to. Totally. So well, like and to see how great with his hands. You see that swim move. Not everybody can do that swim move, man. Look at the, the Ravens That's draft, by the picks. way. Like, the Ravens draft is Kyle Hamilton, Tyler Linderbaum, David Ajabo, and Travis Jones. That's four first rounders. <laughs> like, but guess what, though? Like, guys in them trenches, they understand yeah. what games are won, what championships are won. That's in the trenches. Yeah, Bernard Raymond, the tackle out of uh, The glow-up is real here for our guy, Bernard, Ray- Bernard Raymond, who went to Central Michigan as an, a tight end and just Austria. developed over time. Uh, old players, he's 24, he'll be 25, I believe, by the time the season begins. Um, but good, effective player. Luke Kadecki, this other Central Michigan tackle, has already been drafted by the Bucks. That was in the second round. Bernard Raymond, though, great hair, great development. Oh, he does have good lettuce. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yeah, I, I was um, surprised when I watched the, the film on him because of what you said. He was a converted tight end, so I expected him to have great feet. Hmm. Um, I was like, his foot speed was slower than I anticipated, and he did not. Uh, you never want to say somebody doesn't have the dog. Okay. But, but he <laughs> did. He dog. did not attack. Bone. No, yeah. we, the bones gonna be put up. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did not attack in a way that I would have liked to see. Which I guess maybe you expect from someone who was a tight end. But yeah, I had seen him really highly touted before, which is why I watched a lot of tape on him. And I, I think drafting him here is a great place for him he, because he is kind of. Even though he's old, he is kind of a bit of a. I wouldn't say a project, but he he has. There's work to be done. So the Colts have taken Alec Pierce, they took Woods, and now they got Raymond. So, uh, so far you can see pretty clearly they're giving themselves some weapons of protection, right? And the like, yeah. and they lost, what, Eric Fisher this year? Eric Fisher remains a free agent. So he could okay. come back, but I'd be surprised there. T.Y. Hilton remains a free agent. He might retire. Um, so two guys, and then a tight end, Jack Doyle retired. So three veterans out, mm-hmm. three rookie picks in. Young Bucks. I, I mean, that's the way it's supposed to work and also kind of the weird part of the way it works. There's going to be a lot of pressure on those guys because they're going to have to play, and this team is has, – they've been in a Super Bowl window for a while. They've been a quarterback away for – ever since Andrew yeah, Luck retired. Yeah, and I think that's an important – like, when you look at the Colts over the last few years, there was an aggressive roster rebuild. They got that roster right. Obviously, they had quarter, quarterback issues outside their control, and then they've been grasping at quarterback straws. But – they clearly have been in a window where expectation is to win the division and compete in the AFC. So uh, that's not going anywhere, you know, for the way that that roster's built and uh, as well as they run the football. I, I, I can't look at the Colts and say that they're not going to have huge expectations. Oh, our guy Hawk is Hawk. up there. Yeah. Hawk, what up? I wonder if they had to lower the microphone. And his son, more importantly. Yeah. Wow, you are a jerk. His son, <laughs> Hawk's son, is an A-plus NFL draft analyst really he does mock drafts like every day throughout nice. the year and he That's crushed great. his first round mock draft so shout out to the two of you um that family is just like just prodigious there's nothing that hawk doesn't do incredibly well by the way like uh, i mean kudos to him for some of the business things he's got going on and also just one of the nicest human beings great dude they say uh, slow feet don't eat he doesn't have slow feet oh he posted a video recently on instagram oh, yeah. and i was like Damn, I mean, you, you, like, you realize it, then you see it. Alex Wright 
defensive end out of UAB is the pick for the Browns. Yep. So, uh, uh, reactions? I'm not going to sit up and act like I know who the hell he is. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> Uh, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't let's, watch it. I didn't talk watch about, let's talk about the team in general. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't, or, I didn't watch it. Or, okay? let's, or let's let Field do his <laughs> thing. Yeah, there's a couple of times every draft where we yeah. just go, we all go, Field? Yeah, <laughs> no. Um, I, I, so I would say that if you're looking at the Browns roster right now, we all wonder if Jadavion Clowney is going to be re signed. But a second pass rusher, obviously opposite Miles Garrett, has been one of the biggest needs that they needed to fill. During this during this process or during free agency in the later outskirts here, so this seems like a like a fairly need driven um, selection here. Browns did a uh, made a pick earlier in the draft that was very sort of like value driven. It's fine, it's fine. The Brown season is going to be determined probably by whether Deshaun Watson is suspended yeah, for game. I mean, and that's what you want um, at this point in the draft. Like you want Field to be like. Yeah, it's fine because like this, 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 it's not home runs right here. No, you're it's not either gonna, like, I mean, it's yeah, fine. this is you know if how, you have a guy that you think can contribute at this point in the draft, then you're happy. You know how rare it is when the Raiders pick that I can look at Field and he's like, no, it's, it's, yeah. gonna, be, it's gonna be good, man. <laughs> it's okay. like, I, I, like, it's gonna be all right. Enough. Go get your bottle of whiskey, fit. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Uh, what's your whiskey is smooth. Uh, so I, I will say this: the the to your point, the the Brown season is gonna be all about Deshaun Watson and. Yeah. The other part of it's going to be what happens with Baker Mayfield. I mean, that that is part of this quarterback conversation we're not really having tonight. Is that yeah. we all know Baker Mayfield's uh, the the presumption is that he's going to have to go somewhere, right? And uh, if you're the Browns, yeah, the, that's going to happen. He, after he changes his damn attitude, <laughs> you think that that's going yeah. to make a difference? Well, it makes a big difference because this, this is one of the things I try to explain to a lot of people, Dom, like who are outside and don't understand how a locker room works and how. Uh, people in front office, how they, how they want their players to be. It's not going to always be the way they want it to be, but they don't like people who talk too damn much. Yeah. I, I, they just don't. And it's been like that for years, and I don't think that's changing anytime soon. Yeah, but what do you do if you're sitting there and you're like, all right, you just took another quarterback, everything's wildly changed, now you want me to sit down, shut up, and color in my book. I have no interest in doing that. Like, I want to play somewhere okay, else. Okay, well, go get a 9 to 5 then. No, because I mean, no one cares five, about your feelings in this in this business. At nine to five, you don't have the leverage to to talk that way. So he has <laughs> he feels like he has this ability to talk. But I mean, we've all been in situations where we've thought things about people that we thought it was wise of us not to say. And just because it's true, don't mean you got to say it. So I. I appreciate Baker saying the stuff that he got to say, but I don't got to play with him. I don't got to be in the locker room with him. I don't have to coach him. So I do think but that. But if you're Matt Rule, don't you need him? No, need him. <laughs> need him. Need him. Who the hell is going to play quarterback for him this year? You don't need him. Well, I mean, you, your own receiver don't want him. So, like, I don't know that you need him. But I, I, I get your point. I think he's obviously the best quarterback available. He would have gone. If he was in the draft this year, he would have been the first quarterback Perfect. taken. Yep. But he's not in the draft this year. And the benefit of drafting a young quarterback is the price and the time. You got five years on cheap. He has one year left. It's more expensive than people think his value is worth. And not only that, if he plays okay, then he's a free agent. And then you're in a situation where you're, he plays good enough to play you out of draft position for the quarterbacks next year. Good enough for some fans to be like, hey, maybe we should extend him, but not good enough for you to win a championship. And then you're in a situation where you're like, all right, we're not high enough in the draft to get a quarterback. We got a guy that's okay. Maybe we sign Baker Mayfield to a four-year extension. He's in a bad spot, and then you put on top of it, he has an attitude that doesn't bother me, but an attitude that rubs the conservative NFL the wrong way. All right, but then uh, the one element I'm going to add, the one yeah but to that whole conversation, because I think that's really smart, everything you just said. The yeah but is now I know I'm going to get fired if I don't win games this year. So now I need a quarterback that's going to win me enough games to keep my damn job. If you're Carolina? Yeah. But see, that's, I think that's the, that's the key chess piece in this. We don't know if David Tepper has told Matt Rule, hey, you have two years versus one year. You see what I'm saying? Because, I mean, we all think he's on the hot seat, but we don't know what their owner, David Tepper, is telling him, hey, you have two years, or if you have one. Well, I'm going to let see how you oh, do. But you, you yourself sat on this set last night and said, you know, at some point you can't trust what anybody says. Like, Matt, my, Rabel said two yeah. weeks ago on, I, on national so, TV, we're not trading A.J. Brown as long as I'm the head coach. I, like, so I agree, that, that I like, agree you, with you. I agree with <laughs> you. We trust any of that? I yeah, I agree you, with you. But you, I, you hit his man. Yeah. You on this set last <laughs> night. <laughs> I agree with what? I'm just, just calling. You know, if we if you invited rob me to the club, I won't rob a bank with you. <laughs> if you, if you invited me to the club last night, I wouldn't hey, push back. But they, they got us. Wow. Come out the bushes, Harry. All right. This is the point I'm going to make to you is 
it's not necessarily about what he says to you because I believe I agree with you that you can't trust that you can't trust what the owner or management is going to say to you. I think it's more about being able to tell a story and more valuable than being the smartest person in the room in many like professional settings is being able to sell a story. And if you go into David Tepper's office and you're able to convince him of a long term plan, then how many games you win this year doesn't matter nearly as much. I think it's hard to construct a plan worth selling to an owner based around Baker Mayfield. So Baker Mayfield, if he comes in, you win seven games, your job ain't safe. And I will say this. Matt Rule can sell a plan. Like, yeah. I, I, I was around so him for a few minutes at Baylor. <laughs> like, that guy can, like, you, you spend ten minutes in the room, you're like, yep, I'm but, on, I got it. why did you say to the people that I said last night? <laughs> you said last why night, did you, you have to bring that up, though? Like, but you said it. Because yeah, I'm just reminding okay. you said last night on this set. We were sitting and, right and, here and, on this set. And we, you are right, though, because you, I, I don't <laughs> trust anybody when it comes to this business, and I never have. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't blame you. Uh, the the Chargers fun. have uh, made a pick, by the way, and we should give this a little bit of love here. As the Chargers took, uh, just took a safety. They took JT Woods, safety out of Baylor. Speaking of Baylor, uh, JT Woods is the pick. Uh, any surprise that the Chargers went safety? No. Okay. Zero Adderley coming up in a contract year. Former second-round pick out of Delaware. He's been okay. I mean, not necessarily great. Um, and then Derwin James is awesome. But Derwin James, unfortunately, has missed a lot of time due to injuries. So this strikes me as a need for, for, for LA. This was a need. Yeah, and um, again, it's a lot of repeating stuff, but like flexible, you need a lot of in the secondary, particularly in this division. You're going to need a lot of secondary players um, to cover the great receivers and the awesome quarterbacks that are on every team in this division. So it, it doesn't hurt. And I think the, the Chargers are moving in position to be the favorite this year. Phil, how you do, just gave me a ooh how, on how the do you next. How pronounce his tight end's last name again? Greg Doltich. Greg Doltich. I think this is big for Denver yeah, because of the loss of Noah Fane. Yep. Uh, and, and a guy like Russell Wilson who can give him that ball down the seam. Great job on the double move right there as we watch him. Good Big athlete. head and Good shoulders. Athlete. See him pulling right here, leading oh, up in get the out hole. Space. Pretending like he wants to be strong and blocking. <laughs> Pretending <laughs> like he wants to be strong. <laughs> but right. well, it's no secret, like he. Most of these guys, they want to catch footballs, right? Yeah. Just because the game is different. Uh, very rarely do you have a guy like Gronk that wants to do this, a, a great two-way tight end that can block and be in those trenches and do it at a hell of a level of a hell of a way and catch balls. But the athleticism jumps out on the charts for me. He played in the system under a guy, Chip Kelly, who, you know, they're going to pass the football and throw the football. Does so he have purple hair different. or is that just the lights reverberating off of his I think, it, I think it was the lights. Yeah, I got think it. it was the lights. Okay, got it. Great, right, great so pick the, for Denver. The Giants, uh, their pick is about to come in. Rejoice, America. That means we're only five picks away from my beloved Raiders picking, which I know is everybody's focus here. First one, eh? Las Vegas. Uh, Vegas going to go nuts uh, if, if they're not. Uh, I think it's been a long day out there. They might be a little bit, it might be a little bit uh, schnookered. So let's just see how that crowd looks. Uh, uh, Giants fans are excited for it. And then uh, they take Corner. Cordell Flott. Yeah, we've, we, out of we've officially, LSU. and Don mentioned this earlier, we've officially reached the point of the draft where it's like, Again, some of these dudes, like, these might have been projected seventh rounders. Yeah. Or it's like you get to the top 100 and, like, players that are sort of comparable. Like, you know, I'm not sure the difference between player 81 versus player 121 is that significant. So the Giants, keep in mind, James Bradbury uh, in the final year of his contract and has been speculated upon as a potential uh, trade target. Not only that, um, Adore Jackson. Probably, if you just look at the cap for 2023, he is probably in his last year with the New York Giants. This is a huge position of need for the New York Giants, and what do you know, LSU, state secondary, they're going to almost always have to be. One thing I love about LSU secondary, watching them, and when you're watching some of the other receivers that have been drafted and stuff from those big schools, right, those guys play man coverage, and they play yeah. cover zero like no other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I watched that game against Bama and I see how many times yeah. LSU played cover zero against those guys, yeah. I was impressed with it. Yeah, and you can play in LSU um, against Alabama and be comfortable in that coverage. You can play in the NFL. And if I remember correctly, he was, like, incredibly small, right? He's, like, 6'1", 175, I think. Good which, question. Yeah, which I think, um, I mean, we have the Internet. We could look it up. I could not just be throwing out speculation. But I remember... <laughs> Um, seeing that, so that I think at this point in the draft, if you're comfortable with uh, like the brand names, so uh, yeah, if, you're right. Six two one seventy according to the team website, which means it's actually like six one and like 
155. <laughs> yeah. <he's, laughs> yes, yeah, true, true. So, yeah, he um, – Oh, we're on to another pick already. Right? Yeah, D'Angelo Malone, a linebacker out of Western Kentucky for Falcons. How do you like the Falcons going linebacker? Uh, I think it's big, defensive period. And I think that's the second linebacker in the row that they've taken, right? I'll have to look it back up. Yeah, they took uh, Troy Anderson. Well, they also uh, took Desmond Ritter. Yeah. Falcons? Oh, the Jaguars. Yeah, Jaguars. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. No, the Falcons. Uh, I'm talking about line, linebackers. Though. Yeah, so the, they got Troy. He was off the ball linebacker. Yep. And, um, now they got D'Angelo Malone. Yeah, and he looks like an edge, I yeah. think. So, so defense is, is big, and then they got Eva Keedy. From uh, Penn State. That's right. Trying to cover a lot of uh, the needs that they need on defense, but linebacker was one of them. Edge was another one. Uh, now you have corner as being another one. You will go to the other side. Another offensive lineman will be one. Yeah. Uh, they got a quarterback, which was one. Y'all get y'all get the, the theme here. Yep. They this need is going to be like. Uh, <laughs> It feels to me like this is going to be an extended training camp for them. Like the entire season is going to be about finding out what they got in these guys. And they're going to get put in a lot of uh, situations and be given a lot of opportunities to succeed or to fail. And um, there, there's going to be no time, I think, for development for these guys. They're going to have to develop while they play because they need to find out what they have in them. And I've seen some of that last year with some of the young guys that they drafted. Uh, the last two years, right? They put them in these situations to see how fast they'll be able to catch on. And they struggled early, but toward the tail end of the season, you can see their progression on the football field. Oh, what man. are you laughing at? We got a, a ATL chant. Never mind. You're, I ain't see it. Yeah, there was a there was a guy they went to ATL. Going, ATL. By the way, ATL. I gotta give a shout out. There's a shout word out. that comes after ATL and mm -hmm. he snuck it in. I was ATL, proud yo. There you go. Anyway. But shout out to um, the Atlanta Falcons season ticket holders who came out to Las Vegas and represented very, very well. I had a chance to go meet them this morning and spend some time with them. Uh, we, we had a great time. So love to see them Falcons travel uh, as well as the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, that's can't the cool part up. about the draft is like I, I, I can't think of a team I haven't seen represented here so far this weekend. Like everybody is, and that's the cool part. You got, you're, we got 32 teams with hope this weekend. <laughs> uh, it's also one of the cool things about, like, I, I don't want it to be lost on any of us. We said this yesterday. First time in a couple of years we've been out with people. Obviously Nashville being the last time, uh, but it wasn't that long ago that the draft was a, an event at Radio City every year that was just sort of programmed to be what it is. This traveling circus show that's become the NFL draft is one of the coolest fan experiences I think you can have. Uh, outside even just what happens in the draft, the way they've set up, and I went and checked it out this morning, like yeah. the whole NFL area that they have over it's by cool. the stage and like and the areas where you can you run the 40-yard dash. Oh, I just couldn't sleep. Field, I was too excited to sit next to you. Uh, but you, you start thinking about like all of the things that they put together to make this happen here. Like I, I, I don't want it to be lost on everybody that this is one of the coolest things that, that they do in the NFL, and I think one of the cooler things in sports. And you look at the crowd being there, every team is represented. People from all over the world are around here to be in this party with each other. It's what makes it really incredibly wild. Uh, Dominic going to get a little breather, obviously, which means we're going to bring Spencer Hall back on. It's the 2022 ESPN NFL Draft. We're doing the live Perfect stream edition of it. for Spence, You can by the way. watch us on ESPN2, on ABC, and, of course, on uh, the NFL Network. Field Yates, I'm Jason Fitz, Harry Douglas, Spencer Hall. Finally. Uh, finally? What are we? Oh, we have, fun. finally we have Spencer back. Yeah, Spencer, uh, how are we feeling? Uh, how's the chair hype, by the way? Because that's <laughs> been the big debate. Uh, Field was in it first. Uh, Harry said it was too too uh, too tall. Yeah. He brought it down. Now I feel like you're very proper and upright. Like, where are we on chair height? I'm like 70% torso, no. so this is fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> most of my height is from, like, the bottom of my spine up. So, like, this is great. I'm good. 70% torso, 30% <laughs> yeah. beard. That, that's it. That's my, my draft profile. They're, like, long, uh, long body. Uh, I'll let you rewatch some of the things that Harry had to say about you when you weren't here. So, I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> but I got, Dorm, I got, the magician. I'm did I'm going to tell you, they was like, you were going to take a little breather. I said, Spencer's not little. Uh -huh. That's so true. You, no, no. You went for a big true. breather. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, mm -hmm. The okay. Eagles pick is in, by the way. The Philadelphia Eagles are making their pick with the 83rd pick in the draft, the 19th pick in the third round. The Eagles strong are getting riled suit for up. John Dornbos, by the way, the that magician. Is strong. Nice. He was great yeah. on like America's Got Talent or one of those shows. Which one was it specifically? I can't remember which one it was. Uh, yeah, it was America's Got Talent. Yeah. There we go. Oh, the Kobe oh, 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 Linebacker, oh, Georgia. Bone, yes! Bring out that bone. Yes! 
There we finally, go. Finally, finally, let me cut a promo. The Philadelphia Eagles are the greatest franchise in football for a reason. Because they respect above all else, above all analytics, above all numbers, and above all facts, they respect one thing, that dog. Oh. They respect a player with that dog in them. Oh. That's why oh. we'll put it on oh. the table. We're going to make a noise. That, that is dog. correct. Finally, yes. Boom. You guys ready he got that dog out? in him. He has the dog, man. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got to say. Watch. Watch I will. Uh, we will find out at some point why he fell so far. But this was somebody that we thought was going to be a first-round draft pick, and he still sits here. I mean, go birds, baby. Go birds. Because watch. The play recognition off the charts. The timing off the charts. The anticipation, right? The understanding of where everyone is and is going on the field. The Game speed, right? You want to go ahead and throw out a draft term, game speed, okay? <laughs> it's different than his 40 time, all right? Because you can look, Michigan tried to play him out of the play, and he still got in. A hash-to-hash -hash cover guy, um, I have nothing but really good things to say about him. You might be like, oh, yeah, he's a little undersized. There is no getting around that, all right? But most of the time, there's no getting around N'Kobe Dean. See, I love the intelligence, the high yeah. football IQ to be able to read and react. But not only read and react, but arrive violently and make the play. Because normally, you don't have a lot of people that can put it all together and see what's going on, have the intangibles and the smarts to, to, to make the play and get there. But you see that from N'Kobe Dean, and he won a national championship. Dominique has come back up Got on the set. Just like this, we're so yeah, worked up about this one. Moment. Yes. Dominique, we get uh, it. Would you anything you want? You are you the three best friends that anybody could have? What do you got to right say? Now. Yes. Right now. <laughs> to be here for this moment. Because yeah. finally Nicobe D went. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I'm happy for oh you. My Congratulations. God. I know. It's a big moment. I'll go back and finish my break. My little break. <laughs> uh, wow. All right. Y'all take it easy. Uh, let's let's recap here really quickly. Not only Thank do God. the not only do the Eagles add Nicobe Dean in this draft, they add Jordan Davis, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Cam Jurgens uh, out of Nebraska, and they add uh, AJ Brown. Like you, if you're looking at the Eagles, your team now suddenly you're, you're saying, okay, we had a, we thought we had a needed wide receiver. We got one of the best in in the NFL. We got two guys that were mocked in every first round that we could possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. Like I just, it feels if you're an Eagles fan, you are damn pumped. I got to give some credit to a guy named John Gannon. So I, I've known John Gannon for for a very long time. He was a GA at Louisville when I was there. Uh, he's worked his way through the ranks, man, to become a defensive coordinator. And now you have two of the best defensive players in the draft on your team, and they happen to go to the same school. This is a, a incredible moment for Eagles fans. They're going to be stoked and obviously an incredible moment for N'Kobe Dean. I can't say this loud enough. I hope N'Kobe Dean turns into a massive Hall of Famer and gets so wildly rich that for the rest of his life he can look back on these two days and laugh about it because that's the only, like, that's the piece I get for somebody that has to uh, to go through all of this. That's, it, what you, that's what you want for, you know, someone who slides to the third, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's what we want. I mean, and, uh, again, we're still only two quarterbacks out, so let, let's see where this story <laughs> uh, changes for, uh, obviously, Malik Willis and the rest of them. Now, we have had another oh, pick. Oh, boy. DeMarvin Leal out of Texas A&M defensive end goes to the Steelers. Rich gets, gets richer when it comes to D-line play, doesn't it? Hey, the weight is going to have to. <laughs> Continue for your boys as the Raiders just traded out of their pick. I'm good with that. I said, you know what I said? Uh, like, <laughs> frankly, I'm gonna be honest with you. That's a I, I, hey, we that's, talk. We that's talk about denial. Too. Denial yeah, yeah. is serious. It's, it's okay. You don't have to admit it. Vegas, denial. He's been waiting all. Vegas, week. No, no, no. Vegas <laughs> trades with that's Tennessee. Dope. It's and I, I was on six for ninety and one sixty nine. I, I, I was on Raider Nation Radio this week, and they asked me what denial. I wanted, what I wanted for the Raiders, and I said, you know what? Denial. If you tell me that the Raiders <laughs> traded every pick in this draft, I don't care. Like, at this point, when you're picking third, fourth, fifth, sixth, like, it's all a crapshoot anyway. Because who did you get with the 22nd pick? I don't want to talk about last year, and we got Devontae Adams. That's correct. Yeah, Here, Devontae you up there. Okay. Devontae Go Adams. I'm Go. good. I, Go. I got Devontae. Give I got, I got the Derek Carthorne. The we got Donnie Osmond on the set. Ooh. Look at that. I also, I'm a little weirded out by the fact that Donnie Osmond, who played for at the Flamingo for years with Marie, so it's Donnie and Marie. Now it's just Donnie at Harris. I need to know what happened, Donnie. Like what? Like uh, what happened with Marie? Like, do we want to talk about it? Or like, is there going to be a reality Marcus show about Jones. it? Marcus Jones. Marcus Jones, corner out of Houston uh, for the Patriots. Very, very unique. Uh, he's, oh, he's, he's a he's a smaller guy though. Very, very he's unique small. though. He's yeah. five eight. 
This dude is fun as heck. He is dynamite yep. on the football field. One of the most versatile players in the entire draft. This guy is frisky as all get out. This guy is going like, – I don't care where he plays. He's going, no, he's going to the Patriots? He's going yeah. to the Patriots? Okay. Yep. He's a free. He's going to make plays all over the field for this team. Uh, he's going to have to probably play in the slot based off size. But you see right here, he played some perimeter corner in college. He was a kick returner in college. Special, special Played player. offense, too. Had some offensive yeah. plays. He he is, I mean, this dude is, uh, he was the most, I believe, let me let me get this, since you know, is it the Paul Horning Award for yes. most versatile player in college football? Yes, the Paul Horning Award. Yeah. This was him. Led the NFL in terms of getting his hands on the ball. 17 passes defense last year. All-American player. Most versatile player in college football. I mean, is there like a uh, more Patriots thing than the Patriots taking the most versatile player in college is, football? Is, is he, a, he a little Pac-Man-ish? Little, I'm not yeah. saying a lot yet. Yeah, yeah, little yeah. yeah. Pac-Man totally. Jones. Good call there. Yep. Yeah. Not, well, that, not that we're in the pebbles. comparables, right? Not that we're in the comp. Eats the little pebbles? You didn't mean. No, 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 no. I, yeah, no. That man's way, 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 be, way better than him, though. Yeah, oh, yes, this is way, way, no, way no, no. better. Way, way Here obvious. But I think for, for his size, though, I, I just don't see him at that size being outside. I see him more so being used uh, in a way of putting a ton of DBs on the field for New England when you're going against a team who wants to throw it around a lot. But being in the slot against sometimes smaller guys, but I can't even see him matched up right now with a guy like Chris Godwin in the slot who is who's a bigger body uh, guy. But he's a football player. He is a football junkie. And he can do more than one thing good. Uh, again, the Titans are on the clock, and that's because they made a trade with my beloved Raiders, which I'm totally okay with because I but why see do you have three to, names. He, I see three names. Really you, interesting. You, I see three names that are on the Raiders board yeah. that I think are all still going to be there when they pick it. Well, not all. You but keep one saying of them that you're okay with it. I'm that lets us know that you're not really okay no, with it. No, I am so good. You have no idea how good I, I am. I know. I'm do, so, I'm do, so do, unbothered. Do you think he's I'm definitely okay. not bothered by this. <laughs> Look, I'm going to tell you. He thinks the lady doth protest too much. I, I, <laughs> like, let's just be real here for a second. The Raiders are not going to suddenly win or not win the AFC West this year based on whether they pick. But we're here or 90th. in yeah. Las Vegas. You have on your Las Vegas Raiders shirt. Uh -huh. This is what yeah, the draft right. is being hosted at. Homage and the this. Raiders have not made a pick yet. Look, it's just only getting us more lathered up. Sometimes, like, it's like Guns N' Roses. Like, Guns N' Roses used to wait. There's this great story when Guns N' Roses went on tour with Metallica, right? And uh, the, it was in their contract that Metallica said, we're not going to open. This is way back. We're, we're always going to open. We're not going to go last. This is back in the day. And Guns N' Roses took it at it as a, like, you know what? That's because they don't want to follow us. They also didn't read the contract well where it said, any overtime expenses on you. So back when Axl Rose used to make people wait two, three, four hours to come out on stage, they were losing money so they finished this massive world tour and their accountant said uh, congratulations you toured the world and you you didn't make any money because you, you lost all of this to overtime fees i look at this like getting a, they're axel rose and me we're just getting more lathered up gives everybody time for more bottle service at the club that i'm not invited to with harry douglas Can you that's all me? we're doing <laughs> okay Still could you stop <laughs> telling people i didn't invite you i wasn't even supposed to did go i get an invite i wasn't to the even curb. supposed to go did anywhere. i get an invite to the club well, me, Dom, and Spencer, we were all be there. Did I get invited to see clothes. Little Baby? And yes, I said it that way just no, to make everybody No, because you're acting like a little baby. No, that's probably fair. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Spencer, yeah. why is it that these two always do this? Whichever's at this end becomes trouble. I'm going to separate you two. Spencer Hall, Dominique Foxworth, Field Yates. Uh, you're not Dominique Foxworth. He's Harry Douglas. I don't know who the hell is here. I'm Jason Fitz. They're all, you know, it's just all just going all over the place. Uh, we are live in Las Vegas on the Strip in the beautiful set for Daily Wager and Bet. Uh, if you don't check those shows out, you absolutely should. Everybody here has done a great job of making us feel at home, and we can't thank them enough. You can watch the draft right now on ESPN2, on ABC, on the NFL Network, but you can stick with us for every single pick. Right now, the Tennessee Titans are on the clock. And uh, if you're a Tennessee Titans fan, you got to figure out what you want right now because if you wanted uh, a quarterback I, in the first round, they're I, still sitting there. I have a feeling this is going to be a fascinating pick. Why? I got a feeling as well. Yes. What do you guys know that oh, – look, I'm always Don in the Ponte dark. from the league office does a tremendous job is on the, uh, the mic for the next handful of picks here. So, uh, shout out Don. She does a ton for the league. Is one of the most un unheralded superstars of the league office. Uh, and the Titans are about to make a pick, and they are taking with – <laughs> All right. Malik Willis, quarterback out of Liberty. Whoa. Wow. Okay. Whoa. Some yeah. things might be shooken up in Nashville. I oh, mean, boy. Malik Willis, I, I look, I, Malik Willis has a, the chance to be great, maybe. But I, I, what I said even when we were scouting him leading up to this is like, 
it's going to need a long time to get ready. So yeah. I, I don't I don't hate this for the Titans at all. That's the best part about it. You have a guy, Ryan, Ryan Tannehill, who is your starting quarterback, that gives him time to be able to mm -hmm. sit back, learn, understand the nuances of the game, how to be a pro, how to approach game day. All those things are huge for a young quarterback. And now the Tennessee Titans get to slow process this thing versus if you draft them in the first or second round, uh, for being forced to play them early. Yeah, by the way, every single highlight here, as Mina Kimes has said, looks like the biggest kid on the high school team absolutely dominating smaller competition because at Liberty that was effectively what he was. You're seeing a dude who had to sort of make it all happen by himself in what was a relatively simple offense, even at the college level. He's raw. Like, he is sushi raw. This is a player who is going to have to learn pretty much everything about how to run a pro-style offense of any kind. He's in a good spot, and it's kind of lighting a fire to Tannehill. Well, not a fire. It's like a lighter. It's like a match. But, but what a weekend for the Tennessee Titans in the Nashville community, yeah. right? You trade A.J. Brown, uh, but then you bring in a guy like Malik Willis to push your starting quarterback. And I always tell people all the time, now, sometimes oh. the, the best way to get a player to, to, to play his best or be even better, bring in competition because it, all, it can only do two things, make you fall or make you great. Yeah, I, I think there's a, a moment here for the Titans, too, where we got a message about their draft strategy. Yeah. Their draft strategy was long-term. I mean, it, when you when you decide that A.J. is not going to be part of your team this year, we all know that came down very last second. You're right, absolutely, and we argued about this last night. Traylon Burks might turn out to be everything that A.J. Brown has been. Yeah. We don't know. But it's definitely a it, – it would not be unreasonable to think that that could take a second to happen, I, right? So Love the like, landing spot here. Yeah. Yeah, like just to sort of take a step back from it, like – Think about what Tennessee is investing here is that you got a third round pick, which I understand that we thought he could have gone in the first round. But when you draft a guy in the third round, at a quarterback spot especially, like Ryan Tannehill will feel Malik Willis breathing down his neck eventually. But it's not like the minute he walks through the door, it's like, okay, if you, if yeah. you, if you, if you take him 15th overall, it's like, dude, it's just a matter of time, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Malik Willis could be a backup for three years and nobody would be surprised by it. Lots of third-round picks at quarterback are backups for three or four or five or seven years, right? So if Ryan Tannehill plays like he did last year and if Malik Willis develops and becomes the player that some projected he would become – You've got a great situation on your hands. Like, I really like this investment for Tennessee. And by the way, the cost, again, the cost here, I keep saying this, a, a third-round quarterback, even more so yeah. a second-round quarterback, you're paying like $4 million bucks for four years. A yeah. million dollars a year for a quarterback, that's literally, that's like pra that's literally practice squad money. Like, that's crazy. That's a, that's a I think deal. it's a great, that's a great opportunity and a smart, just good investment by Tennessee. Even if all Malik Willis becomes is a really solid backup for them for the next even if four he years? Does, even if he busts, even right. if he doesn't play, even if he can't make the roster in two years, who cares, right? Like, it's a swing. He either becomes, like, I, I literally, I, I know that sounds ridiculous, but, like, if he is cut in two years, it's still a worthwhile gamble. Still, because how many players that they could have taken here have the opportunity to change the dimension of your franchise going forward? The answer is not many. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a really smart point. And Ryan Tannehill, I, I believe Ryan Tannehill is good enough to win, right? I, I think people are overreacting to some of the difficulties that Ryan Tannehill had compared to what everybody expects. Like, everybody thinks that their quarterback yeah. is supposed to be he the next. He great last year, and he's got he's to turn that – Turn it around. He wasn't great, but he wasn't as – I, was I don't think he was year. awful as is being painted. Yeah, he was pretty – I mean, I just thought he was not great. And um, I think in the AFC, like, what's clear is that, like, you can't settle for, like, he was okay or, like, solid. You got to have great quarterback play. You Can we talk do. about the real winner of this acquisition? Okay. Everyone who purchases Madden next year, what I want you to do, ah, right. set up a spread playbook, get QB choice, put in Malik Willis – and Derrick Henry, and just run that all game long. That's all you're going to do, okay? That's who the real winners are because you can just run the ball like 80 times in a game of Madden, <laughs> and you're going to be able to win because Malik Willis is a quality runner. And they can also have a special package for Malik Willis. When you, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Excuse me. You get down to the red zone and third and short, fourth and short. Um, we see them struggle a little bit late in the year last year when Derrick Henry was trying to come back. 
on th third and f uh, short, fourth and short situations, especially in that game against Cincinnati. So you have a guy like Malik Willis. Now the defense has to honor as well because he can run the football. That's also an easy way to just get him reps in situations, right? Like yep. you, you give him a small amount to really get great at. By the way, Winnie the Pooh, do you need more honey over there? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, voice starting to wear down? Do we need to get you a little bit more like? Uh, what happened to my honey? Is it over there? Oh, I took you it in took the back, You took it with right? you. Took it in the back, yeah. yeah. You took it with you. I, so I fully did. expected you to for come back. For those of y'all who don't know, honey. honey is good, uh, a good lubricant Multiple. for your throat. I really yeah. thought you were going to come in and, like, do the whole old man at the YMCA thing, like the full Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Just no. be, like, underwear and a shirt and, like, carrying around a thing of honey. Well, I, I, that probably would have been a choice if it wasn't damn Jack Frost in here. Oh, my God. this air condition. Oh, my God. For, Harry, for the second day in a row. Harry, can I distract you Talk from Can I distract you from your agony in this freezing <laughs> cold studio that is totally comfortable? Um, Thank you. We, we got a big old hoss. This is my only description for Jalen Tolbert, which is yeah. this. this dude. I love him. All right, because I, you know, he was always on like Wednesday night or like you know a Tuesday night uh, playing for South Alabama, and every single time you did, this was the dude that you're just like he's down there somewhere. This is one of the most he down there somewhere quarterbacks in the draft. But I like him because he played outside, he played inside, he yeah. played just about every wide receiver position. On the field, and I think he killed Tennessee. He was Mr. Yes. Consistent for his team. Yeah, and when they needed a play, they were going to him 100%. Of the Which time. is wild to me, by the way. Wide receiver is one of the hardest positions to be that guy on the team, right? Mm -hmm. Like, who's our reliable guy who's going to catch it every single time and get us where we need to be? Jalen Tolbert. I love that pick. Me too. The, the chimes playing mean the Bills are on the clock, which is cute and everything. That also means we're almost to the spot where my beloved Raiders going to make a pick. <laughs> ah, like, uh, you know, uh, th 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 this is all fine and dandy, but the, the pants selection we are seeing right now uh, is well done. That you know is, who this is? Yeah, of course. Of so course. got Kyle Brandt right up here. Kyle was with us a couple of years <laughs> ago right. in Nashville for part of the show. Like we Kyle Brandt, that. what a legend. Hilarious to see this right now. Kyle Brandt has this ridiculous energy about him. He is a Bills he has become a card carry member of Bill's Mafia. You look tremendous out there, Kyle. Good job. You were an awesome. Uh, you were here with us in Nashville. Yeah. We did a little crossover uh, with the NFL Network. Of course, he is uh, a star of Good Morning Football, is Kyle. And I know how much this moment means to him. Way to go, Kyle. I don't care who they pick. It's a winner in my book. That, that's of former Princeton running back, Kyle Brandt. Is that's it? right. That's oh, right. Yeah. That is, yeah. that is Man, look at my reality boy TV over star. Here. Reality TV star, yeah, former assistant on the Jim okay. Rome show. That's right. That's producer, producer, right? Okay. Oh, I got you. Yeah, right, got that's you. the yeah. last time. And you wonder why I had jokes when you left. You see, right. when Dominique came in, by the way, he put out the hand and I already had the fist out. Could have been awkward. We adjusted Stitching? quickly. Wait, yeah, no, we, we, went, <laughs> you go, no, we, went, we went fast, right? The dap almost failed. We worked it out. <laughs> that was so good. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, the Bills made a pick. Who cares? The Raiders are on the clock. Uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to be professional. I'm it's sorry. It's Christmas. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You guys want to break down uh, who, did, who is the pick? Oh, Terrell Bernard, linebacker out of Baylor. Anybody uh, Anybody have any thoughts uh, for the Bills here? No, that was just awesome. No, great job, uh, Dave Aranda. Right, yeah. That, that's good. So now let's talk about the Raiders, shall we? Uh uh, if, is there if, anything more terrifying than the concept of Raiders Christmas? Uh, Raiders Christmas look, is a look, terrifying concept. You know, what, what, do, so what do you prefer we, with this pick? What, what do you want? Let, me, let, me, let me first say this. This is so good. When we were together in Nashville <laughs> and Clee Furl was picked fourth overall, camera mm -hmm. got right in my face. And I just sat there and I'm like, eh, right? You should have bid it. Last year, <laughs> I went through all three days of every NFL pick and the only pick out of seven drafts, seven rounds of the draft, the only time that our great producer, Chris Colon, had to get my ear and say, hold on, hold on, we don't have anything, we don't have anything, was when <laughs> Alex Leatherwood was surprisingly picked in the first round. I am so happy that I haven't had to sit here and say eh, about anything in the first round. Devontae Adams, it doesn't matter. Third round pick, this is just, this is playing with house money. Now, the yeah. Raiders yeah. do have a couple of significant needs, I think, you know, to be honest. What would they be? They, they have a significant need on the offensive line. Okay, we're at that. Yeah. Uh, they, basically, everything's up for grabs on the offensive line. I think that's fair. Okay. They have needed linebacker, tackle, and they have a lead at, uh, need at corner. Yeah, not left tackle. Colton Miller's yep. uh, said Alex Leatherwood is going to get the opportunity to play somewhere. This coaching staff hasn't really yep. uh, told anybody whether guard, it's right? guard or tackle. So uh, I, I think for the Raiders, this is likely going to either be offensive line or corner. Kobe Bryant's a name that you've mentioned a couple of times that I think makes a lot of, like, if you're the Raiders, You've got Trayvon Mullen, who hasn't been able to stay safe, uh, stay health, uh, healthy, I should say, at corner. And you have Rock Yassin. Those are your starting corners in the AFC West. I don't yeah. think that that ex gives a lot of people a ton of, uh, of joy there. So 
Uh, I, I think either of that and could be – and also – Knowing that they're changing schemes defensively, a, a big defensive tackle, not a bad idea. So there are still options. That's why I'm all in support of the Raiders trading down, frankly. so Who's making the pick for him? Uh, Marcus Allen. Yeah, he looks great. Yeah, Marcus Allen him. making the pick for him. Uh, and, yes, you see the notable offseason additions there. Uh, Chandler Jones. Oh, and Wayne Newton. Devontae Adams. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Wayne Newton out there. Wayne is a, a legend. Oh, the Raiders wasted no time getting in with this pick, by the way, which I appreciate. Also, uh, what a, you know, gotta have me come out and say hi. Let's see who the Raiders picked with this one. Devontae Adams, obviously, uh, being the big offseason addition at this point, is an offense that's going to have Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro. Uh, that, that's just, that is everything you could possibly want in the AFC West. They did announce they're not picking up the option on Josh All Jacobs, three. which, yes, and Cleve Furl and uh, J- uh, Jonathan Avery. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Uh, I, I do think it's interesting. I think the Raiders are sneaky in the running back market, but I don't think they take a running back here. Wayne Newton making the pick for them now? So. I can't, they can't take a running back no, here. No, there's nobody here. It's got to be offensive line. It, it's got to be. I, I mean, I would think. Falele uh, out of Minnesota, somebody like that. Daniel Falele. Um, Spencer, thoughts on him? He's large. Oh, uh, Dylan Parr. Uh, oh, Dylan, Dylan Parr. Like we Parr. said, Parr. Dylan Parham, an obvious pick here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, he's a good player out of Memphis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Solid, reliable. I think – I, I would think he's got a chance to play center or guard, uh, play center in college, um, solid during the pre-draft process as well. Makes sense to me. You you can get a starting guard in the third round of the draft. Like, this is not rocket science. So, like, yeah. to me, at this point, this everything on your offensive line in the third round comes down to the trust you have with your coaching staff. Totally. Yep. So, at, at this point, for a Raiders offensive say, line, that's that, not good. Say that again, because I think that's important. Everything that you, you decide to do in the third round of the draft of your offensive line comes down to trust – in your coaching staff. And that's that developmental uh, aspect and factor when it comes to the National Football League and your position coach, coaches and who you hire in those positions to not only tap into those kids' athleticism, but their mental and how they are off the field as well. I tell everybody all the time, these players are the closest with their position coaches. Yeah. Not their head coaches, not the GM. But they're position coaches, so who who's coaching them matters a lot. He's also, I mean, relatively young at this point. He's 22, 311 pounds. You know, I, I, when you're talking about making the jump from Memphis to the NFL, I think there's always going to be a real and fair and honest conversation about that for any of these guys. But again, it comes down to, you know, as, uh, as Field mentioned, he might be able to play center too. The Raiders did invest some money at center last year. The guard position is wildly open for them. So, you know, if you take the best offensive lineman available in the third round, I am, to your to your coaches, I am never going to fault that. So, also, it's, a, it's a safe, easy pick. Yeah, and for what they do, because he's a pass pro specialist, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, too. I mean, uh, the, the Raiders' offensive line, and this comes back to what the previous regime did. They made a, a conscious decision last year to let go of several veteran players thinking that they could just plug and play anybody they want. And last year was difficult, to say the least, for that offensive line. You knew Surprise. it had to be addressed. So, yeah, I mean, it's like you, that, was the role, that was the role of the dice they took, and that's part of why there's a new staff and a new regime coming in even now because that was a roll of the dice that I'm not sure the front office was going to survive. I mean, surprised the table just got handsomer. But I mean, I'm not surprised <laughs> you're giving up sacks, but that's a bad surprise. I'm a good surprise. Wow. That's you, sir. That's a surprise. <laughs> I was just about to give you a compliment. Oh, okay. I'll as, take it. As, Thank we, you. as we rotate all these other people in and out over the past couple days, you have been here. The Iron yes. Man. Yes. And that is it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You you have, your work is, uh, your, your Are you giving him an attendance are, award? You have been here. Uh, <laughs> doing keep everything. going, Dom. Oh, yeah, no, oh, no, doing, I'm done. You're doing, you're doing <laughs> a great job, man. Go on, we, tell me more, Tom. We appreciate it. Yeah. We appreciate it. Fueled on coffee and Reese's, you are killing it. Thank uh, you, well, sir. Reese's peanut butter cups are a delight. And yeah, once again, this is a guy who was up. Uh, till 6.45 a.m. walking the streets of Vegas. No, didn't I was up any at 6.45 colleagues. because neither of you invited me to see the baby that happened to be Can you say neither of us, all three of us, was uh, yeah. at the concert? Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I mean, we were doing things. <laughs> <laughs> there was no way you got into a club. No, he, he went with me. What do you mean? 
afraid. I mean, I'm just. You'd be surprised. Did, you where, told people yeah. you were Rick Rubin, didn't you? You would be. Surprised. You walk up and you're like, I'm Rick Rubin. I'd like to get into the. You'd be the surprised where this attitude gets. You. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be surprised. Yeah, okay, thank you. Be thank you. Yeah. No, no. Is he being serious here? Yeah, is he wearing that? He looks fancy. That's a hangover think... reference, people. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my bad. Right, no, no, no. That. Yeah, no. Now we're off game. Yeah, I should have yeah. known. I should have. I should have known. It's a 2022 NFL draft. I'm Jason Fitz with a bunch of clowns. Like, I am just, I'm sitting here with Barnum, Bailey, and Ringling Brothers Too all hanging Willis. out with me. What? Two talk about Willis. Oh, about my clowns. God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Dirty God. clown? Angry clown? What kind of clowns? Oh, man. I got Zach Galifianakis, I got Black Doug, and I got whichever character you want to be. He, he called Black Doug, by the way, America. Uh, excuse I did me? not. I, <laughs> excuse yeah. me? Yeah, I call myself Black Doug. I didn't say you could call me Black Doug. Enough with the Black Doug. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm the tiger. Oh, my God. Tigers love... Uh, There's a love tiger in that bathroom. Okay, oh, where are we on the draft? <laughs> we should really get back to actually talking about uh, football at this point, other than the fact that the Raiders are absolutely, at this point, the uh, the uh, the favorite of the AFC West. Let's just be real. Clear, right. clear winners this draft. Uh, clear so, winners. Yeah, I mean, Devontae. Like, uh, there's, there's... Ooh, would this be a good spot for Tampa Bay to take Matt Corral or somebody like that? No, they have Kyle get... Trask. Uh, well, earlier I got this whole, like, yeah. Kyle Trask thing shoved up my rectum, so I think... That's <laughs> <laughs> all. So hold I, on. I can so confidently hold on. say so that sentence on. has never been said in the history of humanity. We, we, ne- we have completely went wrong. No one has ever oh. said that. Oh, my, oh my God. God. So oh. Let's get dangerous, though. Sure. He, he, came, he came out of the birthing process, but we go straight to rectum. Though. We say birthing process, but we're comfortable with... Wreck- oh. Sure, <laughs> sure, man. Oh, oh my God. God, I don't even know what we're doing here. Oh man, we are trying to get kicked off the internet. Apparently. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, we do work for Mickey Mouse, so yeah. uh, that's where we are with this. So uh, the the pick is in, and they've got running back Rashad White, running back out of Arizona State, is the pick for Tampa Bay. So uh, the pick is in for them, and uh, they get up uh, a little bit, which is funny because there was a conversation about running back yeah, earlier, yeah, yeah. and we all said no because they gave too much money to Fournette. I mean, you need running backs. You need more than one. Fournette's had injury history. Um, in recent history, They he came into this year's playoffs a, a little hobbled. And honestly, like, if you play running back, the only time you're going to be healthy is before the first day of training camp. Yeah, every time after that is going to be, uh, you're going to feel like um, the things that come out of the rectum that you were talking about earlier. <laughs> so that, that, um, this is my fault, America. We just, just, we just went we there. Know. You, don't gotta, you don't gotta take responsibility. They know. They've been no, watching. No, they know. Yeah. Um, so it's you need to have, that's one of those positions where you need to have multiple. And uh, with the amount that Tom Brady likes to throw to the running back, I think it's nice to have. Yeah, that. yeah. And that's what you're going to kind of have to do with him, too, because this is not a, uh, you know, Clanging and banging running back between the tackles, yep. right? Like he's kind of slight, real good in space. Definitely the kind of guy who is going to work in like a modern pass game. Right? So I'm looking at a Tampa Bay team that has added Logan Hall, Luke Adecki, and Rashad White. So it uh, feels like uh, uh, Tampa Bay came in, addressed the defensive line. Obviously, we love that. Now they're getting some offensive protection and help. The next pick is in from the Packers. And of course, it wouldn't be a weapon. That's all I'm saying. Sean That's Ryan, just a guard out of UCLA. That's all I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> such, yeah. How do you know he can't play wide out? <laughs> but, uh, we uh, haven't uh, even uh, tried it. Another, another good pick, though, it's just not because illegal. Of I think it's just frowned upon. All the people that have have left the yeah, offensive right. line for the Green Bay Packers, so them taking a a, a guard here, I, th- I thought was very vital. Yeah, that was really serious and good analysis. It was. I appreciate that about can, you. Can, by the way, can we look at this? The midriff top, the hair. Oh, well, I, like I'm oh, start, I'm that's, starting. That's to ain't no mid rip. That's a damn crop top. <laughs> yeah, that boy that playing with a crop top. No, <laughs> I, 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 I love like, it. Like, like I, he in the uh, 90s. No, he goes down my he goes down my draft board immediately. Like, I know that's you climb the board with me. The confidence. Oh yeah, no the, the confidence, blonde yeah. hair. I've never the, seen a light skinned guy <laughs> would, <laughs> wear a jersey like this. That is honest. true. Like, I've Didn't, never seen um, it in my life. Oh yeah, Zeke came to the draft with his tummy out. That's yeah. That was, <laughs> <laughs> it wow. panned out well for him. That's a uh, that's a different tummy though. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah. a surplus. Yeah, I think we could actually that one we can't call a tummy. That's a gut. This is yeah. I, I'm speechless at this point. Doctor, I, we have a Twitter. Right, does anyone know who Doctor Disrespect is? <laughs> Do you know? I don't. Do you know? Do no. you know? All right, this is. We now have a Twitch streamer. Oh yeah, a, I do know Doctor yes. Disrespect is. You no, 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 that is correct. I do. I, I don't watch his streams. Look, they're going uh, crazy for Dr. Disrespect and also for Terry and Davis Price. Uh, yeah, Davis Price is So he, he's going to thrive in that offense. Trust me, they find a way, whether you're drafted, whether you're a free agent, 
whether you're a nobody. They find a way to make you somebody in that offense. As a running back in nope. particular. Look, there are certain certain coaches that just get so much benefit of the doubt, rightfully so, for what they're capable of doing, and Kyle Shanahan is one of those. So you just look at it organizationally, and like we talked earlier about how everything the Ravens touch turns to gold. Well, if you're an offensive player and you get picked by the 49ers, you're just going to tip at the cap and say, thank you, good sir, I'm going to go get rich. Like, that, like you're going to get fed, you're going to get the opportunities, and – you're going to thrive, so th this always makes sense. Thank you for showing this Florida clip where nobody fills that gap. That's excellent. Uh, which <laughs> That was by I'm, design. Not like they had to look hard for that yeah. one. No, he had a couple options there, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. They, by the way, we have a trade. New England is trading the 94th pick to Carolina for 137 and a 2023 third rounder. We're in that spot now. Where so like, you know what? Carolina's Let's on the clock now? Uh, Carolina is on the clock. You think they go get a quarterback here? Yep. Yeah, actually. Well, who, I Sam Howell? Got, I mean, if you're Carolina, Howell, if you go Matt get Corral. Sam Howell. Yeah. If you get Sam Howell. They might, be, they might be, have decided already that they are going to try to fill this quarterback void in free agency, to your point, where he thinks he wants um, Matt Rule, believes he needs to win to save his job. So they could be trying to fill it through free agency. Well, it's not free agency now, by trading for Garoppolo mm -hmm. or – your your buddy Baker Mayfield, one of those guys. Why's he got to be my buddy? Why can't he be Why, your buddy? But I'm not saying he can't be my oh. buddy, but you just presume because we're both dashingly good looking and <laughs> you super would, you, famous. Yeah. You wouldn't buddies. hang out with a, you wouldn't hang out with Baker Mayfield. Well, may, he'd at least text me back. You don't. <laughs> Man, you cut him deep with that one, Harry. He's, I know. He's he's coming mad, back he's to him. He was texting somebody. You know what? Club last Here, night. Here's <laughs> here's what happened. I got a call from Harry like a week ago, and Harry's uh, like, that's it, you're done. You're dead to me. You never call me back. You never answer my calls. And now I don't even get a clerb in Now now the truth comes out. Yeah. Clerb. So for the past, I'll say like a month or so, when I have call fits or text fits, don't call me back. He'll text me four or five days later. I don't, I don't want the damn message now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's I called him back. We get to Vegas. Like, he's like, you never call me back. We get to Vegas. What? I'm immediately. <laughs> I didn't sound like Kermit the Frog, though. <laughs> I'm immediately you calling him You made him sound like, like Chucky <laughs> Kermit the Frog. <laughs> Why are we wait this long for this impression to come out? Uh, this, is, uh, this is day one impression. And you do the <laughs> next 15 day one minutes impression. of the show <laughs> in that voice. Oh, my oh, gosh. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I called him back so almost immediately, like, and I even texted him because I knew, like, oh, he's being sensitive, Diva Harry. So I texted him right away, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm on a call, but I'll, uh, I was like, can't take your call right now. So like 10 minutes later, I call him, he doesn't answer, and I text him, and I was like, hey man, I called you back. I nothing. I get nothing. So his, I get nothing his, from him. Text, and now he's out in the car. His, his texts sound like that too. Well, yeah, like, because he's got voice texting on, so he's like, hey man, call Harry. Like that. <laughs> This is the greatest thing on right now. Okay, we're oh, gonna now. now we're peaking. Oh, good. Playoff basketball on right now. <laughs> yeah, but it's put, just put the game on. <laughs> Go ahead. So let me ask you a serious question though, like about quarterbacks, right? Okay. Let's say you're the Carolina Panthers mm -hmm. and you have Matt Corral and Sam Howell on your board almost even. And one is like this North Carolina kid that everybody loves, it's like local, and the other is not. Should it matter at all that like You'd be, you'd have that immediate like, oh, I love the kid coming you, out. There. You know the answer to that question. It, sh it shouldn't, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, but does it? No. In this case, especially UNC doesn't roll like that. <laughs> it's not. Uh, no, it it's is not. Much. No, it's not the same thing. Because yeah. I feel like fans do this every time, where it's like, yeah. that's a well, he went to Miami, school, right? so yeah, that's, that's a basketball. Yeah, school. that's a basketball school. <laughs> I baited him. He took the bait. <laughs> it's a basketball school. <laughs> he I mean, took the bait. Facts are facts, though. <laughs> <laughs> Florida's a basketball school. At least they're a sports school, unlike Louisville. Mm. Oh, what we won't do. Uh, shout out to Kenny Payne. <laughs> yeah. Just got hired by Louisville men's basketball team. Louisville, we will, we will be back on the map. Mm. We will be. Trust yeah, so hey, so mm. are UNLV. Yeah, like that. I'm, I'm banking on both. Like UNLV and, and, and Louisville yeah. playing in the Final Four. But you Gr Grandma Ma not walking through that door anytime soon. Nope. Hey, if he, mm, I got nothing. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Be nice. The next pick is in. Uh, Carolina Panthers. Remember, they, they traded up for this. Get dangerous. So it better be sensual. Get dangerous. <laughs> sensual? <laughs> Sensual. Have you have you used all your words? You're just I'm, at the yeah. bottom of, the, of of your word of your sensual word bowl now. Yeah. Like sensual makes a whole room uncomfortable. Uh, crowd going. Yes. Oh! Matt Ole Miss quarterback. Really you yes me. Why? Can Ride the lightning, baby. Ride the lightning. Call me a psychic. Yeah, I love Matt Corral. Just one attitude for days. Look at that quality headband. How do you not love a quarterback who goes ahead and rocks a headband that hard? Immense amounts of eye black, but will actually talk about the stuff he does on the field. Great arm. Right now, 
zero sense of touch. He's just going to throw it as hard as he possibly can every single time, which rocks maybe not the best thing of the next level, but he can work on that, all right? A relentless competitor. And I think played two different styles of football based on the year when he had a lot of receivers. They threw a lot, and he looked more like a gunslinger. This year, it was more of an RPO-based offense. In fact, I think he threw more RPOs than any other quarterback in the SEC. Uh, and, like, played a totally different kind of offense and ran the ball a lot. There are some concerns about his durability just because yeah. of his size. Uh, but, yeah, the potential is there. Like, between him and Hal, I think the ceiling is higher on Corral. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, the only thing with Hal, I think Hal has the best deep ball yeah, of all the quarterbacks that, one, yeah. that were in this draft. But Matt Corral, a guy who's a dual threat, he can do it with his legs, as we've seen in the clips. Uh, the only knock I had on Matt Corral is that I don't see many tight window throws, right? Everything is RPO. Uh, but I do love the fact that he hits his guys in stride. And I, I like this pick for Carolina. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's something. <laughs> That's really that. <laughs> yes. You can yes. only get that so, analysis so, so I'll say right this, now. Yeah. No, I'll ask you this. With this pick, Matt Corral going something. to... Uh, Carolina. Yeah. Baker Mayfield is X'd out now. Yeah, I think I think that Baker is not the is not gonna end up there. That was like the leading thought despite the fact that Robbie Anderson said no <laughs> under uh what he said <laughs> no and then he followed it up by saying <laughs> Facts. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> so I, he is probably breathing a breath of relief. I guess he would rather have Matt Corral than Baker Mayfield. But I do wonder what this means for the future that they have there because we all talked about this before saying, like, there's less pressure, there's going to be less attention on the quarterback now. I don't believe that that's true. No. Uh, because these quarterbacks were so high profile and because that situation is in such desperate need of a quarterback – there is going to be calls for him to play just like if he was a first rounder. I don't know that he got the the soft landing, the quiet entry that we thought was a benefit of falling in the draft like this. But and it, he's playing behind a guy right now at the moment that that said that he's seen ghosts mm -hmm. while playing the game of football. I, I still can't get over that to, to this day. Like every time the Falcons play the Carolina Panthers, I bring it up uh, <laughs> in, in in our production meetings and in the pregame show because he's seen ghosts on the football field. I would not have called it that Malik Willis would end up in a better spot than Matt Corral. Yeah. Like, I would mm. not. I thought, like, like there are very few places that Willis could have landed that would have been as good as Tennessee is for him. Mm -hmm. He looked out. Yeah. I, I think, too, it is a little, uh, like, even though we're in the third round, to Dominique's point, Carolina traded the 137th pick and a third rounder next year to move up to 94 to get Matt Corral. So I think that makes, you know, that, that does speak to some of the pressure element that is going to be inevitable here uh, as we continue to break it down. Zachary Carter uh, out of Florida. I will immediately then go. He is now going to be a member of the Bengals. Thoughts good, sir. Oh, yeah. That, that's, that's a dude solid, who... Huh? Yeah, solid. Yeah, this is, this is a value pick here, okay? This is a dude who has great consistent effort, really good at getting into the backfield. Uh, dominated some pretty good players at times, all right? So yeah, this is a spot where like, I think there's a lot of room for him to grow here and somebody who, when he's good, he's real good. Any other thoughts from the table? Anybody else? Who that? Yeah, I mean, we're at the point in the draft where I, I'd be lying to you if I try to give you some analysis on this individual. So I was. Gonna, <laughs> I like that. I, That's the honesty, though. I That's was just, I was gonna let my man Beard cook for a little bit longer because <laughs> I know he knows about Florida particularly. <sighs> All right, so we have another trade, and it's a it's a, again a fairly large trade at this stage. Denver trades out of 96. The Colts are on the clock, and it, the Colts move up. So Denver gets 179 and also gets an extra third round pick in next year's draft. Very comparable value to what we just saw, in fact, as Carolina moved up to get a quarterback. So the Colts have moved up. The question is, for whom have the Colts moved up? Ooh. And the answer is Go Nick Terps. Ross, safety out of Maryland, somebody that you <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's a big physical dude. Um, the draft guards heard me saying how we at the point that I don't know people, so they pulled up my school. Look at that. The team that I've watched a lot that of. Means you live it right, Dom. You live it right, man. You've been so, living right. Yeah. I mean, you guys cover college more consistently, so you could speak to what he means to this team, but I, I've seen he's a big hitter. He's a big guy. He's an NFL level safety, and it does seem like the Colts are not drafting for. It doesn't seem like at this point or at any point in this draft have the Colts gotten anybody that they like are crossing their fingers for or they're going to like wait and develop. Given what I know about 
the holes they have in the roster and the opportunities that are going to be there. Seems like everyone they bring it in, they're going to expect to contribute immediately, including uh, Nick Cross. This Colts team, I, I thought, was huge. They brought over Rodney McLeod, who came from Philly, uh, won a Super Bowl with them, had that Super Bowl experience. Stephon Gilmore, who came over from the yep. Carolina Panthers, but won a Super Bowl with the pa uh, Patriots. Another guy with Super Bowl experience uh, to go with those linebackers. Uh, and on Kerry Kay and Darius Leonard and in Gakwe on that defensive line and Quiddy Pay and DeForest Buckner. I, I, I like this pick because it's another guy that they're trying to sure up that defense. Just in case you have a situation, I don't think it's going to happen because I believe more in Matt Ryan than I do. Um, what's the guy named? Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. More so than Carson Wentz. But this defense is going to be solid. And, and Gus Bradley, all he has to do is not mess it up. Well, Gus Bradley, by the way, got a pretty substantial increase in productivity out of the Raiders defense yes. last year. So uh, kudos to him. And, and just because we know Dominique, uh, the, the one thing we know makes his no-no place to say yes, yes is a little speed. Uh, Nick Cross ran a 4-3-4. Like, when you think about that, of all the safeties in the class, 4-3-4 uh, would put him at the top of said list. So you're getting somebody at 212 pounds, by the Ooh. way, running a 4-3-4. So you're talking That's about incredible. somebody that is a large human being yeah. that also has a ton of speed to get wherever he wants to go, whenever he wants to go, however he wants to go there. And I think there is some effectiveness to that, for especially for Gus, Gus Bradley's defense. It makes a lot of sense. Well, and, you look at how Cam Chancellor and um, – God, I don't know why I'm drawing blanks right now. You Earl we, Thomas. Earl Thomas. Mm -hmm. That's how you know we're getting late in the, in the broadcast. <laughs> you look how he used those two guys, right? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how he's going to do with this defense. Matt Eberfuse, who's no longer there. He's with the Chicago Bears, the head coach over there. Uh, and I just don't think he can mess it up. I don't know how you can mess it up with the guys that you – with your front seven, and then you look at the two guys you brought over – in free agency in the secondary, and then you draft I, this kid? I want to say that I appreciate how you missed the layup of Earl Thomas, but you hit the half-court shot of Matt Eberflus. Yeah. What, yeah. what a yeah. play. That, what that, a comeback. Just, what was that? High variance. High variance. High variance. High variance. High variance. Yeah. Yeah. Eberflus. The crossover. Come in. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, Come my in. God. <laughs> um, yeah, so I... I I'm sorry, you were about to say something. Yeah, I was going to say, don't give him anything too easy. I always appreciate <laughs> I always appreciate when you have a player who, at, at safety in college who you really have to account for. Like, generally, like, when you get into, like, third, fourth round, you go, okay, like, what does this dude about? You had to know where he was on the field because a lot of time in college, you know, safeties aren't quite as polished. Safeties, you know, I've, I have heard verbatim, I've heard offensive coordinators at the college level say, don't worry about the safety. Like, literally, drawing it up, X's yeah. and O's saying, don't worry about the safety. It's not an option with him, yeah. right? So, like, there is real value there. I didn't know his 40 time was uh, that fast, but I know from watching him, I think you uh, described someone earlier as arriving with a bam or something yes. like that. Yeah, I, I feel like that's – I remember that from watching him play. Could you like, could you stand up and give us a demonstration of that bam? <laughs> no, yes, please. Absolutely no. not. Don't <laughs> you give us a bam, bam, big so, low, maybe. No. Show us the, could you show us that bam? No, that, no, no, um, no. There's not room, and frankly, I think that's against any liability insurance <laughs> yeah. I have here. There's plate glass right here, and my body control's not great. <laughs> See, that's a, that's a self-awareness uh, right there, though. That I, I know, yeah, I'm playing uh, the system. <laughs> I do think you made a, a really good point. I, I, I hadn't thought about Gus Bradley and the impact here because what you saw last year, again, because of my Raiders fandom, I watched too much of it, but what you saw last year was a defense that looked totally different from the year before. They still statistically weren't the greatest in some areas. Red zone defense was a bit of a concern. But one thing that Gus Bradley likes, I mean, he's not trying to disguise anything, right? Like, nope. He's just putting guys in, in situations where it's like, hey, they know what's coming. You know what's coming. Now go execute. But, but I love that when guys fly. If you've got the measurables to do that, go do it. Here, here's the luxury of having a guy like Stephon Gilmore. They used to play cover three, but it's mm -hmm. cover three pressed to X. Mm -hmm. Now if you're playing against a team who has a top dog, you can just tell Stephon Gilmore. Tell the world hey, what that means. because like cover, cover three. So you have a, 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 a one high safety, and you have the corners who normally play in deep thirds, right? You have a safety coming down, whether it's three buzz or however you want to play it, three buzz a week. Uh, you but more, now, you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you lost Fitz again. You yeah. lost them. So now, All right, so I so go now, Buzz, just, and then no, no, I go, no, no, where, where's just, Woody? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, found just Buzz, listen. but I haven't found Woody. Just, just listen, just I, listen. He's, okay. he's a snake in your boot. Just listen. <laughs> <laughs> so you have hey, the cover three, right? You have one corner who's going to take the deep <laughs> thirds. He's in off coverage. But when you say press the X, 
Now that guy who's normally on the single receiver, who's normally teams' his top dog, you press him with Stephon Gilmore. That's what you've seen a lot Richard Sherman do. So now you're trying to take away th their top dog and create chaos. That's why that Legion of Boom was so good because you had so many people that can do a variety of different things. And when you can have a corner, you can just say, hey, take that guy out of it. That's a different ball game, man. Getting a run on safeties, by the way. The Lions just took Kerry Joseph safety out of Illinois. So, uh, sorry, Kirby Joseph. Sorry, Kirby. Uh, safety out of Illinois. So, uh, another safety off the board here. And uh, that kind of seems like value. Uh, that's what we're going to see right now. To, your, to the point you guys have both made about safety. That's just oh, what's three buzz. Three buzz is normally down to the strong side. Three buzz weak is to the weak side. Normally, the weak side is opposite of the tight end. The strong side is to the tight end side. You know what a buzz is? Yeah, Buzz Lightyear. Like he's <laughs> yeah. up and away. If I, it, it, is that, that an alert to the flat? Or is that, look at this yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, there safety. you go. Look yep. at him. Yeah, he yeah. know what he's talking about. That's right, yeah. <laughs> that's why he was with us at the club last See, night. This, no, this that's get, why. Yeah. <laughs> you wonder why you didn't get a text. <laughs> that's right. No wonder you didn't get a text. <laughs> they asked me to make a read at the door on the little, <laughs> little iPad. They're it. like, you, yeah, where you, you go? They was concerned with his shirt. They, yeah. they said, three buzz week. He was like, give me a piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> you in. We'll throw that up. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm Jason Fitz. I don't give a damn who any of these people are. It's the NFL draft on Alabama. Alabama what, what are we saying? Who, uh, who was just saying? Robinson. Washington no. Commanders. Oh. taken. Uh, yeah, I, that goes to the Washington Commanders. What do we think? Oh, just a li listen, an out outstanding violent runner who, as a result of, yeah, the depreciation of the value of the running back position in the draft and also because of Alabama's extreme depth uh, and inability this year to really dominate running the ball. At times, Alabama could not take games over running the ball. I think this is somebody who he'll probably be better at the pros. Like, I, I think you could see him. There's real, like, I think there's room to grow, which is not something you usually say out of an Alabama offensive player. You usually go, no, he's pretty good, and he's probably going to continue being pretty good. I don't think they really got everything out of him this year. Yeah, I, be I believe that too. But one of the things he did do a great job of, you look at the SEC championship game where Georgia was blitzing on a lot of those plays. Mm. A guy who stood tall in, in uh, protecting the quarterback, Brian Robinson Jr., picked up a lot of those blitzes and st stoned a lot of defenders from them getting home on Bryce Young. A yeah. couple of offensive weapons now by Washington, right? Like, yep. so they we're going to have Brian Robinson Jr., we're going to add Jahan Dotson. Uh, Fedarius Mathis was their defensive tackle they took, so got a couple of Alabama guys too. But I think when you start looking at this Washington Commanders team, they're just trying to sur surround whatever this version of quarterback is that, that, with some level of talent, right? So uh, it makes sense there and improve all of the things uh, that surround Carson Wentz and hope. Like, that's all you can do. Just cross your fingers and hope. I wonder what it means for, for the future of Antonio Gibson, or if it means anything for the future. Maybe We talked about earlier how you might just need a bunch of running backs, but um, running backs is a position that people tend to not want to pay. And they still have J.D. McKissick. Yeah, they got McKissick yeah. too. Yeah. So, like, it's a position you tend to not want to pay. So, it, it might be. And they got somebody they're going to have to pay in Terry McLaurin, right? Like, uh, yeah, you would, you think, would so. think. I mean, this offense. Well, is, I will hold on now. <clears throat> Excuse me, because they drafted a receiver with their first pick, right? right. Uh, I know, but. Yeah. Ooh, this is interesting. So, like, it. Dangerous. Oh, that's yeah. a receiver I love. David Bell, wide receiver out of Purdue, going to the Browns. And, you know, I, I felt like we, at one point we were laughing early in the college football season. You and I were working yep. together on the college football show digitally. And it was like every week was here's ten plays that David Bell made that you just couldn't stop him. I mean, uh, he, he was capable of getting up over everybody, getting around everybody. Like, we did a lot of rips on David Bell that was really good. I'm going to go with the reason why I think he's a third rounder and not – a guy in the first round, uh, watching tape his route running. It wasn't as, it wasn't polished. It wasn't polished, and then when he ran his 40, his 40 time wasn't good. So I thought he could have been better in that route running, which makes up a big difference. If you're not going to be able to run excellent routes, you better be able to run a damn 4-3 something. Is that coachable? And that wasn't the case. Route running? Yeah. Yeah, it's something I don't think they do a very good job of at the college level. Well, especially but, this, but, this is like a fast break offense that they run at Purdue, yeah, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes yeah. the offensive system dic dictates that as well. So Yeah, and, and you made a great point, by the way. Quick note, he, run, he ran a 4.65.
Yeah. Like, of, of the wide receivers, while a 4.65 is faster than anything I'll ever be able to think of, 4.65 was slow for wide receivers. Yeah, he's not going to be Superman at the next level. Like, that is the one thing he's, like, because he was usually, if he was manned up, he could make a circus catch, right? Um, or he could just push off. He's got elite push off skills, by the way. <laughs> like, I can see Dominic kind of twitch as I say <laughs> that. But he has got elite push off skills. It's, it's a good, it's illegal a move that it's, it's, it's sneaky and it's good. It's a skill. It's like jaywalking. It's, yeah. it's not really illegal. Uh, <laughs> I mean, every, everybody does it. Only a few people get ticketed. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I remember him from being a freshman. Like, he was, he, like, hit the scene hard. And for him to be drafted a third round now, like, feels like a steal. But then when you look at the measurables, which you don't want to get too caught up in, it makes a little bit more sense. And he feels a lot like uh, the best player on your high school football team, where it's like you don't – Wherever you put him, he's going to be good. And then you go to the next level, and he's like a running back kind of playing receiver. Yeah. You know? And then you go to the next level, and you're like, no, nah, you're going to have to – you have to show us something. You have to learn something and prove something. You have to find some some tricks other than the push off to yeah. get you in a good spot. And that makes me nervous for how somebody who's clearly very talented is going to like progress. And as for the 40 time, like, ah, he can't be that slow. I think that there's something to be said for some guys just don't know how to run the 40 and can play fast on the field. Because good point. Four, four six is like tight end speed. He, I mean, he can't, he can't yeah. be. Which would be okay if he was a wide receiver who just happened to be like, you know, yeah. or tight end moonlighting as a wide receiver, right. right? I mean, I played with guys like Anquan Bolden comes to mind as somebody who like. Well, Cooper Cup didn't have a good 40 time. Was yeah. Cooper Cup in But I guess I, I was talking about something different. Like if, if his 40 time is just a result of him not knowing or not being skilled and running a 40, that's one thing. But if he actually is that slow, there are receivers who find a way to be successful in the league when they're, when they're slow. Like, I think Anquan Bolden comes to mind as someone like, he was hell to cover. Yeah. Like he wasn't running past nobody, and everyone knew it, but he got open and made plays. And yeah. I will say this, every time Purdue actually needed a play, and a big play at that, in those big games where Killer. you see them uh, whooping those top five teams, the man showed up. We had him on our show. Um, what was the hmm? late night show we had? Uh, the wrap-up. The wrap-up. We had him on the wrap-up, and – he he just killed Iowa. Yeah. And I don't know how I would went into the game not not doubling them, knowing that he was gonna get the football. Oh, you he was has yelling, killed he was Iowa yelling his all day career. That. Yeah. It, but it bothered me. But that's that's the kind of stuff you gotta deal with in college level <laughs> defense. You have yeah. one guy you know could beat you on the on the offensive side, but you leave him in man coverage and you don't double him. Uh, the Cardinals made a pick, by the way. My Jay Sanders, uh, I, I only wanted to throw that out. Defensive end from Cincinnati. It speaks a little bit to who Cincinnati was. Like, we spent all year waiting for Cincinnati to finally get the recognition they deserved for being a playoff team. They got that recognition and played very well in the playoff game. Uh, but I, I also think this is a reminder that Cincinnati had a lot of talent. Like, this is another guy from that team going off the board. And it's uh, it, th there's something – Luke Fickle has done a really nice job, not just of making this little underdog program successful. He's done a really good job of recruiting talent that's capable of playing in the NFL. So, uh, kudos to, to my J as Only he five goes. five picks left. No, five picks left. Oh. Uh, can I go ahead and tickle your brain with this question? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, hit control F. Search Texas on players selected. Oh. Texas. The University of Texas. No. Wow. You, see, you see anybody? Nah. Wow. wow. You see anyone on there? Oh, my exes live in Texas. <laughs> they probably had to listen to you sing. That's why. <laughs> not one. <laughs> and you wonder why you weren't invited to Dre's. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was nice huh? until While you. While we were there watching Lil Baby, enjoying ourselves. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> You guys were there are you, watching listen, a, are you a, a small child. I, I don't, you know. I, I, it's, are you the dude who, who... I found a baby once. I, are, it's are you the, unchill on, at karaoke? The, the baby and little baby are two yeah. different people now. <laughs> no, I found a baby once. No, he's, making, he's, making, coffee bean. he's making references to the movie again. That's a hell yeah. of oh, okay, I found a baby, baby once. You're not going to be my Doug anymore. I'll be your Doug. Can you say it correctly, though? I'm not going to be your what kind of Doug? He's no, he says first, I'll be your Doug. Oh, gosh. Well, Spencer, Doug you were, were going to say something. I'm sure it was going to be either smart or brilliant. Funny. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> it was yeah. going to be far He's funnier like, yeah. than I was like, this is a dog. So yeah. This is a dog. <laughs> no. Toodaloo, mother. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> the shoulder. <laughs> Give me them traps. We're here. <laughs> I was just looking at a draft guy yeah. to see <laughs> if there were any Texas players mm -hmm. even like oh, that's good in call. the – that are like eligible, or not eligible, any Texas players that are being like 
mocked anywhere or being evaluated, and I can't find any. That's that the way what's nope. happened to that program uh -huh. in the state that got so many good That's football players. Three places that you want to play football, California, Texas, and Florida. Yeah. Go ahead and take uh, a look. Excuse at me. Mm, yeah, Ain't yeah. nobody saying Louisville on that at all. Uh, I mean, I'm from Georgia. He's probably it's six. Oh, okay. He's, he's Why, gonna, you are in the Louisville Hall of Fame. Like, yeah, you know what? I, which just no, shows you that, not many that, people play in Louisville. I'm, I'm, I'm going to admit I'm wrong. A rare thing. You that's correct. Bag, you <laughs> Georgia. You dirtbag, you. <laughs> the Jets. Oh, are go right. ahead. Sorry. You're my sorry, boy, Blue. Blue. The Jets. They're about to kill it again. Somehow. Yeah. Somehow. Oh, there's a cute kid on the stage. There it is. At Randall. Oh, I can't see who it is. Oh, no. You ever think about what a mentally tough human Jeremy being? Rucker. What a mentally tough human being Fireman Ed is. <laughs> his, 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 his soul is Literally. one huge callus. <laughs> Literally. You know how much pain he's been through? <laughs> and he gets up and put us on that. He gets up hat. every day. He goes on the hat. Everything he just stands up in the stadium and he's like, <laughs> No, I'm with, done. With I'm tears done. in his eyes. He's he's like, like, yeah. J E T S. Yes, yes, yes. The sun rises every day and so does Fireman Ed. <laughs> Another dope, another dope pick. How long did CJ um, <clears throat> Uzuma sign for with the Jets? Something I, I, I can Google while you um, filibuster. Yeah, I like this. Uh, what was the question? This pick by uh, by the Jets getting a tight end, Jeremy Rucker. Yeah. Uh, uh, just another pick trying to help out your young quarterback, right? And I thought they did a great job in free agency bringing in CJ Uzuma, who had a great year at Cincinnati last year. So uh, now I, I think we're in a spot where we can say. Zach Wilson should not yeah. have an excuse. I mean, look at that. To not that, be better. That is a Zach Wilson first aid kit right there. <laughs> All of it. And that's what, you, like, this is the, every year I say this, I might as well just, like, print it and redo it. If you believe that you may have the answer at quarterback, you have a responsibility to surround that quarterback right. with as many weapons as possible to find out. And you got to do that quick. So if you're the Jet, like, I, I'll be honest. I don't know if Zach Wilson's going to be the answer. The reason I didn't like the Zach Wilson pick before was I think the leap from BYU to New York is pretty substantial. I think the leap from the, that program to the NFL, the leap from that market to, the, to, to New York, all of that. But if you think that you might have the guy, my God, they've, they've at least put everything around him and said, here's the yellow brick road, good sir, now. Follow it. Yeah, no, that's commitment. And they, they picked well, and they picked – specifically to reinforce and strengthen the quarterback position. I, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. I'm happy for Fireman Ed's calloused, <laughs> worn, maybe, scarred maybe, soul. Maybe he said callous. Scrub a layer of callous off. I so. know. CJ was on my side for three years, 24 million there. Okay, so, so now you yeah. have two two solid guys in the tight yeah. end position. And I mean, I think lots of people, or not lots of people, some people believe that Zach Wilson was not as bad as his number suggests last year, but when he was bad, he was so bad. And there's plenty to point to for why he was bad. That's not on him, but we'll see what happens going was forward. Was it the little headband thing? That <laughs> yeah, the there? headband, mm -hmm. that, that didn't help. Oh, goodness. Maybe it was no. a little baby. It's all a little baby's fault. I, I, look, I want Zach to be great, uh, <laughs> but I, I... Was it that clip? I, I, he looked real uncomfortable. Are you talking about <laughs> I, I want Zach Wilson to be great, but again, as I've oh, said also God. for the last two days, uh, the quarterback market next year looks like it's going to be very good in the draft. So you go all in, you figure it out, and if Zach Wilson isn't it, then cool. So next year, you, 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 you're two years in, you gave him two years, awesome. In today's NFL, that's more than some games. Here's a lot of guys that, that, that are eligible to come out next year. Um, you have Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis, Phil Jikovich, um, Aiden McConnell at Purdue, J.T. Daniels. Uh, who else you have? Keaton Slovis, Spencer Rattler, DJ Uangalale. Those are all the guys that could possibly come out of the quarterback position uh, way different than the quarterback class this year. Yeah, and, and I think that played into part of why the quarterback class has dipped this year. You know, I, I talked to a, a coach buddy of mine several years ago, and his job on the team that he was on at the time, uh, he was sort of just consulting. He was at the end of his career. And his job as a coach was to, court, to scout the next two years' quarterback class. And his whole point was, we're not going to make a decision based on one or the other. We're going to look at both as a whole because we have a long-term plan. So I, I think teams do that obviously more often than we give credit to. And in that process, it, you look at it and say, hey, why not next year? By the way, uh, Channing Tindall was just taken uh, out of Georgia. How would you love to be a third-round pick and realize that all of your teammates were picked way higher than you? Like, that speaks to how great that Georgia defense was. Like you're sitting there, it's like, third round in the NFL is so stinking special, and there's a, a huge gap to, to where the rest of those Georgia players were. That defense, we're going to remember it historically in 10 years. But it says a lot about 
recruiting too and how mm -hmm. recruiting matters. And I get upset with people when they talk about, uh, and I know Georgia won a national championship and Stetson Bennett was their quarterback and I wasn't high on Stetson Bennett and I'm still not. But a lot of people told me, well, you don't really need a five-star quarterback. When you have all these guys on defense, it, it makes up for not having a five-star yeah. quarterback, but you don't want to go into every situation saying we don't need a five-star quarterback when you actually you do because you're not going to have – I don't think Georgia's ever going to have another team like this with the defensive guys uh, getting drafted to this level. I, I, I don't think so. No, recruiting matters. It, yeah. it matters. It matters so much. I know that people are like, you know, you should really measure a player's heart. You should really consider <laughs> those three stars. And I think that is, by and large, true by a percentage, right? You don't want that percentage being higher than to 15% of your roster. You really don't. If you can get four and five stars, go get them and see what happens. Uh, by the way, the Chiefs went out and got another defensive piece. Leo Chanel, the linebacker out of Wisconsin, they came in and aggressively said, hey, we are going to address our defense, which makes sense. We all know that that's been sort of the fatal flaw for the Chiefs over the last couple of years. They get another, at least another crack at it, right? Like, uh, at this point, you're just taking swings. Well, it shows two things, right? Number one, self-awareness, understanding that uh, – Outside of a six or seven game stretch, they were the weakest link. Also self-reflecting and understanding we don't have Tyreek Hill and him and Patrick Mahomes to play junkyard football, and we may need to stop people because we're not going to be able to just have those huge home, home, home run plays that we're accustomed to having. So I think it's self-reflection. It's also to Dominique's point that he made earlier about how he got a hit in the draft. I think you also, when you've paid people, you got to understand where your cost, like opportunity cost is, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, you got to look at the defensive side of the ball and say, look, we got to fix it, and we can't do it in free agency. So we sure as hell better do it in the draft. Like, I, I don't know that the yeah. Chiefs I mean, had a choice. You throw, throw resources at your problem and don't assume that you got the right answer if you have an opportunity to, to bring in multiple answers. So if you're taking a test and the teacher's like, hey, give me your three best answers, you're not only going to put one down, you put nope. three out there, and that's what they're doing. They're, and a guy like this with his athleticism can contribute on special teams. At this point in the draft, if you're going to get on the field, most times it's – or if you're going to get on the active roster and then that'll get on your field, it's – if you can contribute, I'm you can run you down and make tackles. On special teams. You remember our special teams coach in Atlanta? Yeah. He was Keith great. Armstrong, right? Keith Armstrong was outstanding. We used to have second in and, Bucks now. and third round picks, and the first thing – he asked him in the meeting room, what's your job? We had a tight end. He was like, I'm going to catch some balls. He was like, hell no. You know what your job is? You're going to cover a damn kick, yeah. son. Yeah. Your job is, if your, if your middle school teacher asks you what you do for a living, you tell her I get the same level as that ball, <laughs> as that two on kickoff team. <laughs> not, that, not that I catch passes. Yep, don't tell him I yep. play the football. Don't play I play tight end. Tell him I get to the same <laughs> level as that, that ball carrier. I keep it on my inside shoulder. Yep. Yeah, now Keith's a great coach. He's a Same uh, leg, same shoulder. Yeah, he's a uh, special teams coach for the Bucks right now. Yep. On the, the blackest staff in the history of professional football. Is there a Doug? <laughs> <laughs> there might be. Well, that's, uh, hold on. There hold on. <laughs> Time to go to the internet. Okay. <laughs> so as we, come, it might be. <laughs> as we come down to the last couple of picks in the second round, let's get some overall thoughts from you guys and just where we've gotten. I mean, we're two rounds in. Obviously, the Raiders won the draft. We all know that. But other than that, uh, it, what's that like, Dominique? What, what, right. <laughs> what stands out to you, Dominique? Like, what, like, what's your over, immediate reaction? Yeah, I mean, the quarterbacks is going to be the big story. Um, how Malik kind of fell into a great situation behind a starter who is not really under a lot of pressure. No one's asking for um, Tannehill's job. He, well, I guess I'm not in Tennessee. You know better than me. But he's done enough, I would think, even though he ended the season very poorly, to be comfortable that he's going to be started. So, like, Malik Willis, it was sad, but it's a lucky break for him to end up where he was. That's kind of the biggest story for me, quarterbacks in general. I have two. One is that these – I don't think we've seen anybody reach in the first three yeah. rounds, right? That, that's, that's surprising. And my number two is actually what I started with, the Baltimore Ravens. Mm -hmm. You see their two picks today, David Ajabo from Michigan, Travis Jones, defensive tackle from UConn. This organization gets it. They understand it. Um, if it wasn't for a, a lot of two-point conversions for them this year, they actually would have still been in things, yeah. right? I, I, I honestly believe that, but it shows you, man, the foundation of an organization matters and, and how you go about your business and bringing in players, too. I'll push back a little bit. No reaches. We were all pretty surprised last night with the Patriots, right? Yeah, but but yeah. for a guy like Bill Belichick, 
it won't be it won't be questioned by by the greats though. No, that, that that's probably fair. That's, that, probably that's fair. the only reason why I say that because Bill Belichick has six rings. Yeah, no, that and and he certainly gets a benefit the, of the doubt. Spencer, big takeaway. Uh, my big takeaway is this: one, everybody went out, like I said, for groceries. We went out, we got basics, we got milk and bread. Whenever anyone had the choice of default, you went to fundamental players, cornerbacks, guards, etc. Nobody reached for a QB, and I, I think, by the way, the QBs didn't go as badly as I thought they were going to go. You know, you have some hesitation watching these players going. I hope you end up in a good spot. I don't see a whole lot of players who ended up off cut in a spot that won't fit their talents, mm -hmm. which is unique. Also, go Jets. Yeah. Is, that, is that a thing we have to J say? J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. All right, I'm going to give you a, a quick thought before we give our, our big winners through everything. Um, I think the wide receiver position and the way it's being valued has been changing, and I think over the course of this draft it changed forever. What we saw were teams that have absolute superstars at wide receiver that decided, much like baseball, that wins above replacement matters. And you could turn around and say, I'm not going to pay that guy because I believe almost every guy at that position is replaceable. I don't know that that logic is right, but I do think what we've started is an experiment towards that logic. And today, and over the course of the last two days, we'll either decide that you do need to pay wide receivers or it will continue the trend that I think eventually has wide receivers valued much like running backs. And teams will start to replace them every few years with the concept that in modern offenses coming out of college, almost anybody can come in and give you production immediately. Immediately. This is the beginning, not the end, of an experiment. So, with that being said, winners. I, I think the Ravens won this thing. Uh, the Ravens just – I keep looking at Baltimore and, you know, the, the amount of games they lost last year to injury, and you think about how good they were, and then you think about everybody they picked up. Every time they got somebody, I just threw my hands up in the air. I, I'm taking the Ravens as a winner. I Please. got the Jets. You look at who they got, Amar Garner, uh, sauce. Put a little sauce on that barbecue, <laughs> hot sauce. I don't care what it is. Just put honey mustard. Just throw sauce <laughs> that on man it. man an endorsement to Garrett Wilson, Jermaine Johnson the second, uh, Brees Hall, the running back, and then Jeremy Rucker, the tight end. So – uh, the path that they're on is great right now. I really like the Lions, what the Lions did, and I really like surprise. I, I mean, we named some teams that, like the Ravens, we kind of expect to be there. Um, but I was surprised by how impressive I think the Lions draft or their team is coming together and how well they did in the draft. You named the Jets. I also thought the Giants did some smart things. Overall, I think what's been the theme in the last couple of days is – these teams aren't as – there aren't as many dumb teams out there anymore. Like, a lot of people make <laughs> – No, no, no I, I, kept looking, I kept looking for the moron. You know, you keep, you keep looking for the fool. Like, who's the fool at the table? Yeah. I didn't see one. I mean, I, I think the Cardinals jump out to me if, if I'm going to pick one as the fool at the table, <laughs> if we're looking for one. The decisions that they were making, the trade for Marquise Brown – uh, didn't re really make very much sense, and the, the selections that they made at tight end kind of surprised me. So that's a – you asked for winners, but I gave you a loser. Got a winner? Hey, I mean, they had three picks, but I liked all of them. Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think Eagles stole one on the third with N'Kobe Dean. Because mm. he has oh, that – Get your ball. Yeah, that's correct, because, <laughs> again, he has that dog in him. <laughs> um, but also, like, got a good prospect at center in Cameron Jurgens, and also picked up the most prospect you could get – Pound for pound in this draft outside of uh, Falele, which is they got Jordan Davis. So I think it's like that's, a, that's a <laughs> that is the that is the most that is the most. Yeah. Not only did they get the best player, they got the most, most best player, player. <laughs> the best most player, that's right? Like by volume, <laughs> all right. Yeah. A guy who can change up what you yeah. do on defense completely. So yeah. <laughs> All right, those are our winners. I think they've got a little full screen here for us that we're, that we're going to give. Oh. Look at that. Oh, Rick Double. I can do Rick this. Rick Rubin? Yeah, just give <laughs> me a pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, I, th I think there's a, there's, a, there's a dashing similarity to the two of you. Yeah. <laughs> Equally cool. Equally cool. I don't like our comp game. We're falling into the comp trap. All right. <laughs> <laughs> falling into the comp trap. Just, yeah, let, let, me, let me go by my own merits, man. Yes. Don't, yeah. We're, uh, we're not going anywhere where we aren't, but digital is not going anywhere for tomorrow. You can catch every single pick tomorrow as we will do a simulcast with a great crew that's going to be with you from ESPN Radio. In the meantime, for everybody involved in this show, obviously Spencer Hall, Harry Douglas, Dominique Foxworth, Field Yates, Mina Kimes, I'm Jason Fitz, the people behind the scenes that have made this happen. Sid, Presley, Drew, Cologne, I love all of you. It takes a wild village to make this happen. Las Vegas, you've been amazing. Thank you for watching the NFL Draft live stream on ESPN. We appreciate you.